Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Covenant Live on a Monday. We're so happy to have you here. It's your number one talk show for independent tabletop games. Ooh, we're a talk show now. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to try some new taglines. I like it. We're sponsored by Clean Canteen, of course. The only way to travel with your water in safety uh, and making your body happy. So be sure to hydrate your brain uh, with a bottle that won't break whenever you drop it and uh, will not uh, cause any issues from... Uh, microplastics. So, Zach, what's going on with you? That's a that's a broad question. Mm. <laughs> Are you leading me somewhere that I should be going specifically? I'm just curious if any news had dropped. I heard that. I heard oh, that you you, know, there, you told the world some things. I did. You made me tell the world. I didn't make you do anything. Well, I figured we can't have one person on the reveal, but not the other. I feel like you were actually waiting on me. So, uh, <laughs> my wife and I are expecting a baby later this year in July. Is one thing that happened. Yeah, me too. And you know what's weird Would about that? Would you look at that? <laughs> it's, we're both due in July, and it's just the strangest thing, because we did not plan to do it. Not I mean, I planned to do it, but I didn't plan, <laughs> we didn't plan the, the simultaneous release, the schedule. So the release schedule of our children? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the crazy, I, I posted about this on uh, the artist formerly known as Twitter, um, <laughs> X. Um, oh, that, there's other big news for you there, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, I shared a couple of things. So... Uh, not something we were necessarily public about, but back in like 2020, 2021, my wife's going through a lot of health stuff. During that, we found out that the odds of us having a child were incredibly low, like just unfortunately low. So 2022, 2020, really going into 2023 and then into 2024, it was 2022, man. It was a freaking marathon for you, man. Uh, it was crazy. we went through a lot of stuff, uh, highs and lows, just a lot of, you know, I went through stuff, but sh my wife really went through stuff. Um, and then miraculously got pregnant uh and then like truly miraculously yeah, yeah, yeah. like one like, percent <laughs> very odds very low yeah. odds uh got pregnant which we're really excited about and we've been going through that for a long time but it was really funny because like a week before we were really ready to tell people is when you were like hey we're pregnant and we're due and you were like we're due july 18th uh -huh. it's like we're due july 24th like we were about <laughs> to tell you guys this information so it's everybody it was, was jacked it would be unlikely in any universe, but the fact it was just so unlikely that it would happen at all for us, and the fact that that also lined up with yours, yeah, uh, really crazy. It was so, cool. So as I said in the Discord, now accepting all advice, yes, that anybody has. Uh, as far as I can tell, the the advice is uh, you'll feel like you're doing it wrong all the time. 
Uh, you will be you feel like you're out of your depth 24 seven. Uh, you'll learn a lot. I mean, and this just sounds like coming to work. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the past 17 years of my life. <laughs> Have you met my boss? Yeah, man. He's out of his depth. He's out of his depth. Uh, a lot of imposter syndrome, et cetera. But as long as you care enough to know that you feel like you don't know what you're doing, you're going to be okay. Yeah. Well, I, like I'm, a Dunn Kruger thing. Uh, I, I will say this as, it, it's, as complimentary as possible, but my parents made it through. <laughs> And I learned a lot. I, f- I feel this way. I'm a third. I'm a third child, <laughs> and I feel so fortunate because I got to see so many mistakes mm-hmm. without ever having to be the one to make them. Like all sorts of. I mean, because you had three brothers. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I guess all three made mistakes. I learned from, but particularly the two older ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I just learned a lot in terms of how to all kinds of stuff, like finances and college debt and marriage and kids and the whole whole nine yards. But similarly. Now looking back, it's like learning from my parents. And my parents did a stellar job compared to their parents. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm really grateful for that. Even though I have a laundry list of like, here's what I didn't like. Here were the, yeah. Here's the damage you did you to me after I eventually Amazon got to interview. therapy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But knowing what they came from, right, it's like really, truly impressive what they did. Um, and the hope being, for me at least, that I can continue that on in some way and improve yeah. generationally. But uh, Generational ties in, man. It's funny looking back. My... When I was a kid, and I, I assume it's different for different people's parents, but my dad was so confident or presented as so confident. Mm-hmm. And looking back and knowing he was my age now back then and understanding how little he actually knew, but he was putting on this like front of confidence because yeah. he didn't want us to you know, doubt uh, right. for all kinds of reasons. So it's it's different perspective for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, thank you all in the chat. You guys are saying very kind things, all of you. Uh, if there's any uh, cardboard guide, mom of three kids here, it'll be amazing, crazy, heartbreaking, and the best thing ever. Jonathan, what are your thoughts? You have a three. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Another yeah, person that I've been fortunate enough to learn from is he's just a. In personal life, he's a little bit ahead of the curve. Yeah, and John, Jonathan had it had it oh. probably as bad as it can get because he was in like middle of the like the pandemic True. and the childbirth happened at basically yeah. the same time. Unreal. I mean, in some ways, it was great because I got to spend like a whole bunch of time with my child uh, during that spot. There was an article I was reading actually just yesterday, um, and it was talked about the basically it said preparing for a baby is impossible, but psychologically useful. Hmm. Okay. And I thought yeah. it was pretty much encompasses it pretty well. You'll never be able to be prepared, but you should you should try to be prepared to make yourself less anxious. Just make yourself kind of happy, yeah. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, people always said like that first couple of years is like so precious and you don't let it go. And, and I had the opportunity to not have that happen, right? I got to be at home with them. Uh, and that was really awesome. I'm glad that, that happened. Mm-hmm. But it was, there are times when like, <laughs> this is a very silly thing to say. But there's this whole John Mulaney sketch about never being like so sad he had to sing about anything, like talking about like all the little <laughs> slave spirituals and stuff. But like I started singing all the time hmm. because like you're just there with this mass of flesh that can't really communicate with you. Mm-hmm. Like, Sorry, John, human that human you're being basis. compared to a mass Man, of romance. flesh. Yeah, yeah romantic take. But I mean, like you just sing and you and you get through it, and there's something like cool and special about that. And so it's all like you know, very. It's it's a. For me, and I've said this to you plenty of times, but for me, it's like the next stage of what, like the human experience Mm -hmm. and, and for all the goods and bads, like the first time you have a heartbreak, it's like that. The first time that, you know, probably your parent dies, there's all sorts of these like big steps that fundamentally destroy you as as who you are as a person, but give you the opportunity to rebuild yourself, right? Mm -hmm. It becomes a tyrant. So like you can choose to try to be the tyrant or you can choose to... Let yourself be slapped down and, and become the hero again. And I think that's a really cool anytime like those there's a lot of energy, right? There's a lot of energy in any time that, that breakage happens. And so capturing that and, and being there for it and being open to it is a wonderful thing. Would is it more or less profound than Bodril Fire? Equally. It's like the Bodril Fire of the universe. Yes. Right? Yeah. What are yeah. you saying? What's the word there? The Bodril Fire? Uh, basically like starting fire from sticks. Mm. So and the the thing about that is like the very first time that I Steven and I both did We've been pursuing it forever and ever and ever and ever. Mm. But there was a part about it. I was just telling Leah about this. There was something that happened whenever we finally got that fire where, like, all of a sudden I felt this, like, lightning bolt shot connecting me with all of my ancestors throughout time. Because since the beginning, everyone's had to forage. Everyone's had to be able to make fire, like, going Mm -hmm. back to the very beginning. But also everyone's had to reproduce, right? Or you wouldn't be here. 
So it's one of these universal things that everyone in your lineage has experienced. And so that's profound in that way. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, some would say it's the greatest element. Yeah. Fire? Yeah. Or babies. <laughs> You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> According to the witch, I mean, hey, uh, I'm also just very jacked that that it worked out for y'all. I know I've said that a bunch, but yeah. and there's a lot so, of people. So. There's there's people watching that have untold struggles with things well, in this area, and it, it's I feel for all of you because <clears> I saw you guys going through it. I mean, it's just it's just sometimes an impossible situation. It seems like I think it's it's hard to appreciate even while you're in it. Now that we're kind of on the other side, it's I can it's crazy actually mm -hmm. to understand. But Andrew was was coming. Andrew Kuhnman. So this is like a really good, that's a different Andrew, but yeah, oh. uh, you're, you're good, you're good, you're good. That's Andrew Navarro. Hey, Andrew. Um, and I think this is just really healthy perspective because what you're going through, at least for me, um, you see other people who have a much easier time. And mm -hmm. a lot of people who don't even want kids have an easier time. And it's like, yeah. this is injustice. Justice of the universe, right? But this is an example of like, even, you know, and I can't speak for everyone's scenario, but I find myself, anytime I feel uh, like I'm going through something hard, there's almost always someone going through something way worse. So Andrew Kuhnman here saying, like, this is, a, I, I, the, it ends well, spoiler. But he says, just join apologies if you already commented on it all. But I appreciate your post on X. My wife and I have been trying to conceive for two and a half years, and we've had three miscarriages. The house was very heavy. Fab was a big win for me during this time in your streams. Appreciate you sharing that and what you bring to the table to that community, nothing but love. He says, we're expecting our little girl next month to those struggling with the same, love you. Wow, um, congratulations, Andrew. Yeah, and we, we had a like emergency surgery miscarriage situation as well in the middle of all that, and that was probably the, the depth of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't imagine having that happen multiple times. Sorry you had to go through that, but congratulations, that's, that's amazing. Also, I didn't say it earlier, but we're having a girl. We revealed that to our families and friends uh, over the past couple of weeks. I'm revealing but nothing. Steven doesn't want to open the booster pack until the release date. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually I do. I actually, yeah, I love sealed so much that you know, I, I do, I do know, I do know. However, uh, I don't want anybody else to know. It's the it's a spoiler free zone, and the main reason is we just we we have a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of uh, embarrassment of riches of well intentioned people who at a baby shower would be interested in giving us gifts. And very early on, Shannon's like, no matter what we have, no matter, we can know it, but don't say to anybody so that they don't just flood us with, you know, masculine toys or feminine toys or mm -hmm. masculine blankets, feminine blankets, all this kind of stuff. It's like, let's just keep it chill. Don't even give people a reason to go off book on this. Like, it, it just, there are very practical things that we yeah. need. And well, it's not a bunch of bows or a bunch of trucks or whatever. I was definitely buying like black outfits anyway. <laughs> so it didn't matter what, what it was. It's, it's, it's happening. You can wear this for the rest of your life if you do yeah, this right, just, child. <laughs> listen, you, you don't ever have to make listen any other to choice. Unky Zach. <laughs> black hole sun himself. Tell you what I learned about the colors and shirts. <laughs> Zach's uh, been in totality the whole time. <laughs> I was ahead of the curve. Or I guess the sphere. I don't know. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, we we just wanted to share that. Happy, again, happy to chat more in the Discord or uh, really in the Discord. That's where the, the chats are happening. And if we want to start a, a conversation about uh, your parenthood or anything like that, I think it's very helpful to have other people that are, are going through that, have already gone through that, to connect over. We don't do that enough with this phase of human life. It's like... There is kind of a weird uh, don't talk about anything behind the curtain on this, certainly during like kind of the pregnancy and, and early period. So if you want to talk about it, come to the Discord. Yeah. We'll chat about it. I mean, we'll make a thread. We'll, well make a parenthood thread. Yeah. It was also, for us, it was kind of tough. Marvel Snap, Match of the Gathering, parenthood. <clears throat> <laughs> That's right. Uh, but after everything, <laughs> and I know tons of people now, as you go through this, like you end up finding out various people in your life that have gone through things related to this um and like it's one of those situations where because it's so unlikely you don't even want to share or be excited about it yeah until it's really happening and there's just this constant even now you know 26 ish weeks in nervousness about mm -hmm. it but yes. yeah uh it is nice to finally there's a while we weren't telling anybody because it's just like mm -hmm. yeah don't know you never know. know yeah yeah, yeah, you never uh, know. It's tough. Hey, uh, Ricky from Bulk Box is in the chat with us. What's up, What's Ricky? Up, Ricky? Speaking of Bulk Box, you can see a beautiful one back here. Uh, it's good for holding lamps. Uh, you can see behind John. John, give me your camera. Can we see him in the background of your shot? Uh, I moved my oh, shot so I could see Steven. Because I used to be over I here. I see. Yeah, there I it is. I see Steven. But anyways, they're all right here. If you haven't checked out Bulk Box, you should. One, 
uh, Ricky, who's the owner of the company that makes it, great, great person uh, and worth supporting. Ooh. But uh, just, I'm, I, I love seeing comments come through on the Discord and on These are the social media. Thicker. Yeah. About how surprised people are about how much they love this product. That's exactly how I felt when I got them. Yeah. Which is like, it. I would never have expected it out of a product like this. Anyways, Ricky, you did miss something big. We do this stuff because it's nice. So why not put it in a nice box? That's right. Uh, hot, right? Which is that both Stephen and my wife, separate women, uh, <laughs> are expecting in July, which is amazing. Um, <laughs> in case you, you missed the memo on that. Uh, Torres is saying, but what will the first TCG be? Torres 88. So this is actually really interesting for me. It reminds me of my good friend Matt, Matty P, uh, before I started dating my current wife, uh, oh, was asking me if I wanted someone who was like into the hobby. Um, and I told him, it's like, actually, I prefer not for a few reasons. One, uh, given that it's both my hobby and my work, if the third pillar of my life, which is my personal relationship <laughs> with my spouse, is also involved in this, it's too much. That's too much. Um, but similarly with kids, my my whole, we joke a lot about not me not being able to do things as a kid that I wanted to do, including Dungeons and Dragons or playing card mm-hmm. games or whatever. So my whole thing on it is uh, similar with a kid, which is... If they're interested, I'm happy to, to go that direction. But I'm just excited to be into whatever they're into. And mm-hmm. it can be Bluey. It can be Disney princesses. It can be, I don't know. Uh, please, Lord, not softball. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like softball? I, no, it's Dude, not. Dude, all the Pratt girls oh, were I'll like pro you. softball players. Steve was a softball coach. The problem my with softball know. is that you and I yesterday, you came over to get the stuff from my house. And I was outside in the front yard for like 30 minutes. <laughs> Oh, being outside. Lit- literally <laughs> last night when I was laying in bed, Serena like touched my arm. She's like, you're so warm. And I was like, oh, I was outside in the sun. And she was like, it was shady because we were in the backyard at, at the end. And I was like, I was literally standing out for over 30 minutes. You don't, so you don't mean oh, softball. You mean anything involving you're the outdoor. outdoor. Yeah, man. <laughs> Get it out of that here. That is a tremendous no, I'm just kidding. Uh, also, like, just, uh, I, I would do softball. I'm, I'm genu- genuinely excited <laughs> to be into whatever they're into. And I, I would be surprised if it ends up being card games. But I'd be, I'd be fine, too. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'll um, be interested in the thing that you're interested in for a little while. Yeah. Well, and Navarro said they cut the die is cast the moment they come out. Yeah, they are what they are. It's that just makes like, sense. I mean, you can maybe steer steer the river a little bit, but it it's going a direction. I mean, like right off the bat. You I feel just, that way about John? Huh? You feel that way about John? Like it's like I like one years old, two years old. This is like the same. Is there like a kernel of who he was continuum? from the beginning? Yes. Ah, maybe well, the, the thing no. is, like, I don't have it. I don't have anyone to compare him to. So he's just he what is, a kid is. is to me. Yeah. Mm. Um, I imagine mm. if I had another kid, then it would be like, okay, these yeah. are different in this ways, and I can see how that works. Well, Andrew could be wrong. He's wrong about yeah. a lot of things. I mean, I agree all I the think, time. I mean, I think <laughs> it's probably right. Like, I think he will change and you know grow and stuff like that. But yeah, there is things that are like he's you know kind of like a high energy exploration <laughs> kind of dude. And that's yeah. stuck around. My mm-hmm. all of six of my nieces and nephews on my side of the family from the beginning felt very much like they do now Mm -hmm. like the oldest nephew who's now 16 from like the time he could be he was honoring like just pushing people's buttons and breaking things and like he's obviously uh, matured a a significant amount since then but he's still got this like um just like likes to push limits Mm -hmm. and like now it's healthier it's a healthier way of doing it but it's all, and he was really like from, he, he was one and a half, and he would have these tennis rackets and act like he was air guitar, and he'd put U2 on the screen because Daniel liked U2 and stuff. And now he's like all about music. Like he's okay. in a band and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So it's like, and my <clears throat> niece, one of my nieces, from as soon as, I mean, just even in baby, baby form, it's like super sweet and delicate and like, mm-hmm. and still continues to just be one of the like gentlest. Mm-hmm. souls imaginable yeah but that's amazing I'll tell you one thing is John has no interest in art whatsoever yeah I'm not drawing yeah great not anything alright so he's gonna have <laughs> oh, money man. dude that's really good for you he's gonna have oh. money <laughs> and skills <laughs> hey speaking of speaking of you know what this is a this is a, a I don't know if it's too intimate of a take it's probably not more than we've already covered but what's crazy about this obviously the millennial thing like we're having kids when we're older yep. it's taking longer many people in the, the live chat are the reason that this was able to happen at all 
because covenant like success being financially successful at all is how i'm getting the money that i felt like i needed to have a foundation so that i felt comfortable yeah. making that decision it's like that could easily not have happened yeah, well like we were on the line uh, shannon and i have like because eh, <laughs> she's therapist right and it's like the therapy doesn't i saw uh, the another i watched another podcast of, by your guy your diary of a ceo oh uh, yeah and it's, it's good content. I know it's really good. And the it's like two hour videos. The point of it was like speaking the language of money. Mm. Like there's a specific language to finance and money that exists. Yep. And uh, there are many dramatically important things that people do as careers in our society that do not speak the language of money. They they don't make those things are not connecting. Yep. So you know therapy being one of those, it's just not a super lucrative career it's not in that same pocket as a lot of other careers that are very much in the yeah. speaking the language of money kind of things well it's not lucrative and it's also hard to like advance there there's no up no you yeah just do the job and like with so many so many things it's where you're teaching, unfortunately you're serving people who are not uh able to pay a lot of money for the service that you're offering no matter what the value of it is yeah. the resources to pay for it is not there so uh you know, that, that monetary security was only com going to come from one place. And uh, last couple of years, it's been a lot better than it had. So we're making the jump. Yeah. To be fair. And uh, thank you to all of you, because <clears throat> literally, we don't talk about this enough. This is what human beings do for each other. Like, we, the resources are going important places. Like, this is why this happened. I'm having a child in many ways because Andrew Navarro exists. Look at that. Butterfly effect. Isn't that weird? It's real, though. I mean, I know. well, particularly we were, we were sort of talking about this this morning in our meeting, but I think that gets lost when you have, and this has happened in the past couple hundred years particularly, but these like giant corporations, it's very different. Like you buy a pair of shoes from Nike mm -hmm. and it's hard to connect the dots on anything other than the utility you get out of that pair of shoes. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> not how it goes back into the society or yeah. that you're a part of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, many times it doesn't, and that's one of the big problems. Yeah, and I'm reading a, um, a book right now called The Good Great Place, or The Great Good Place. Anyways, it's... Uh, I love it's that a, <clears throat> that TV series as well. The Good Place? Is that with <laughs> Kristen Bell? Kristen yeah. Bell? Oh, yeah, Kristen yeah. Bell. Um, yeah. But it's kind of about the urbanization of America and this move away from, like, neighborhoods and local communities and the pub down the street and downtown America and all man. that kind of stuff and how important these third places are where people gather to have community and how important it is for cultures and like mm -hmm. like really really critical um so <clears throat> as things get big it's just impossible like your human brain can't compute so we're dealing with a small uh in our case a lot of we work with small publishers we're a very small company it's a very different uh I hope it's a very different feeling uh it's really even commercially, to me. yeah. Or it's, yeah. It's, it's just very human. It's like <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a one-to-one -one connection. <laughs> like this is not uh, some you know. There's not 200 shareholders that get a small percentage of your transaction, right? It's like mm -hmm. we're just a group of. Hey, yeah. What's up? Speaking of, so this is a, a today we're talking about publisher communication. Before mm. you go, that's a fantastic segue. I just there was one thing from way earlier. I want to make sure it gets addressed. Here. He's pumping the brakes. I'm he's, just saying the every, captain now. all, all businesses should go public with the intimate details of their, of their personal life. That's what we're saying today oh, yeah, on for sure. the show, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, you know, basically if you stop buying from us, my kid will not eat. <laughs> <laughs> and you should be I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> That's exactly what I was yeah, saying. Yeah. Thank you for uh, Let's just lean into that guilt. So let's say guilt commerce. <laughs> That's what we're going to call it. Uh, bloated Noodle saying, my boyfriend Mark is a huge fan. Please give him a shout out. You guys are amazing. What's uh, up, boyfriend Mark? Hi, boyfriend Mark. I uh, hope you're doing well, and uh, thanks for your support. Yeah. There it be, is. Be a great boyfriend. There. See, you did it. So Be a great boyfriend. Your, uh, Stephen, your sure wife you out of the way. suggested a new book to me, The Anxious Generation. Mm -hmm. Just made it through the intro, and it is fantastic. Does it, does it dunk on social media? Yes. Yes, great. Then I'm in. Yeah. I'll read it. Yeah, the, the first thing, great we need to talk society. more about this in general, but you know, we're always trying to clarify, like, why it's important to be face to face and like we know it is, but like, can you quantify it? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, he quantified, he has basically four things that make real life, real life and four things that make virtual life, virtual life. 
And the four things are like bodily presence. So mm -hmm. can you see me and see the things that I'm doing and, and the, my minor, you know, uh, adjustments and stuff like that? We also know there's microbiology. Does he talk about that? No, like, he hasn't talked about literally that. Literally things we're, leading we're my skin. And, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, that's cool. They that's really cool. are. There's a universe energy going on. Yeah. <clears throat> so you know, with mid chlorians. Yeah. Right. Well, that, that's what he <laughs> was right. <laughs> Even the, the book I'm reading is talking about how critical just like routine, unplanned, face-to-face -face interaction with people. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm just, all the bells are going off. It's like, the, this is tabletop. It's because yeah. the biome. Yeah, what else? so you got that. So you got that. <laughs> this You've is got, uh, these are the two things I think, because these are the things that ran me out of Facebook, which is <laughs> asynchronous um, my responses. Parents. So mm -hmm. and typing and stuff. So it's like you're typing when someone else is typing, but you're not like looking at the other person. Like, are you done talking? Is it my turn to talk? All these sort of subtle things that make an actual conversation flow, but instead it's just like piling on effect. Secondarily and exacerbated by the other point he has, which is in real life, it's mostly one to one or one to few conversations in small groups. In the internet, it's one to everybody in the world mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, it's so it's like, like asynchronous, all the time communication. Like everyone is the like fire hose communication. <laughs> uh, and so, like, that is, and you can see basically where he starts off is like you can see that. There's the introduction of the smartphone. There is a huge noticeable jump in the self-reporting of anxiety and depression mm -hmm. in children. Mm -hmm. And like, okay, like what's going on? Let's mm -hmm. see if we can figure this out. You know, what I think, Jonathan, I think the answer to this is if we keep staring into the phone, it will eventually give us the answer to your question. Yeah. I think it will finally tell us we'll how to be ahead. happy. Yeah. Well, yeah, it'll give us that. Here, here's the great irony. <laughs> Past the sadness. Is, is that as we sit here live on YouTube, uh -huh. how many people watching are staring into a phone screen? But they're not scrolling. That's right. It's different. It requires attention. Mm -hmm. I swear that is the biggest thing. The well, moment that you give your attention to 10 second snippets. Yeah. And you, man, dopamine loves it. And once you get on the mm -hmm. dopamine Dude, that addiction, is one thing that I learned about parenting is like the fight so in my brain between being with my phone and being with my kid. It's like dopamine versus oxytocin, I think, is the bonding chemical. And mm -hmm. like that was one of the profound like realizations. Because like mm. I kept reaching for dopamine. But there's this more profound connective chemical that's trying to be made. But like all the time, it's like, oh, what's, uh, what's going yeah. on here? Yeah, I just started hugging my phone. That that solved it <laughs> for me. Hugging your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hugged it while I scrolled, and that way I got both. Yeah, well, there you go. I love the phone, and I love the dopamine. Uh, speaking of publisher communication, um, yeah, right on track. <laughs> you had another big announcement about Fab, right? Yep, I did. Yeah, I'm it's... glad because I didn't actually know if you'd announce anything there. But... <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, so what it's, is such it's, a it's sort of sort of intertwined for me, um, which is, like I said earlier, in 2020, 2021 is when my wife's having some health issues, and during that's when we found out pregnancy would be very challenging. 2020 is also when the pandemic was happening. 2020 is also when we discovered Fab, and the first like year of Fab pandemic was going on. You know, we were just doing like sealed or Blitz on stream. Mm -hmm. Fab came also right at a time when entering 2020, I had previously been four years into Star Wars Destiny heavily, competing, going to tournaments and stuff. And I had planned on the kind of end of Destiny being my, like, I need a break from competitive. And the pandemic yeah. happened. It's like, well, that's good timing. <laughs> good break. <clears throat> and, and, you know, I, I didn't know if I would ever get back into it because I, I think being truly competitive at card games takes a lot. A lot of time and energy. And I, I don't have... I know myself well enough that I can't dabble. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> if mm -hmm. I'm now, now, it's been really refreshing to have a game like Sorcery, where I I do feel like I can dabble. But if I'm playing a game that is a competitive game with organized play and the whole nine yards, like I can't just kind of do it. Yeah. It's so much so that we got into Fab, and then we were having uh, difficulty having a kid. And at that point, it's like statistically not super likely. So. Now there's a very different window opening where it's yeah. like, well, and that was one of the struggles for us for so long. It's like, <clears throat> we just don't know. So are we going to or not? And life decision, like I've been waiting to, to upgrade my car, which I did. Uh, I what just, was it? You had like a 97 Civic or I something? I had a 2002 Toyota Camry. That's right. That I bought in 2011. And I've been driving that till now. Um, but kind of waiting to see if we have a kid or not. Because the kind of car you might want to get, depending. Right. Kind of changes. I know all about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it kind of changes. So I've been waiting on that decision for like two and a half years. It's like, I'm just waiting. <laughs> like, I guess we're just going to wait. So all that uh, gets me back around to when Fab kind of came back online in 2021. I shared my, basically uh, announced that we were pregnant and then was like, hey, I'm stepping back from Fab. 
retiring. Um, and then I shared a highlights of everything that happened for the past four years, which is crazy. Going mm-hmm. back through all it's of pretty, it. It had to be emotional, right? Like, quite, Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, um, that's longer than like college. And like is that four years? Yeah. About four years? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. And like I, like I said, going into Fab, I was not looking for a competitive game. And when we first started playing, it was just us in the pandemic and it was not, I mean, it's competitive, but not the same. Mm-hmm. And we didn't know what organized play for Fab would look like. This yeah. is a tiny game from a tiny publisher who's barely making it into a pandemic where like things are crazy. Had that Discord Armory League. Yep. That was a good time. Um, but like I said, I, I can't, it's hard for me just to dabble. So Fab starts coming with organized play. I'm not sure we're going to have kids. I'm, I've am i been almost two years without competing or going to, you know, that's like a huge part of my life. And then all of a sudden it's back. So we went to all those callings. That, yeah. was, that was all in there. But Fab did organized play on a level I've never seen. Like mm-hmm. in all of our FFG days, as an example, or back when we were kids. So I went hard <laughs> at Fab, both playing it, but then like also building the wolf pack, which is like, I can't just play Fab. I built a 20 person team mm-hmm. of Fab players. Who did, um, who did it start with? So it started. When was the very beginning? This is part of tracing it back in that story, but it started with we went to those Collins and then Brandon asked me to join the Arsenal Pass. Uh, how did he call it? Testing group. Oh in, my in gosh, hindsight. I had forgotten about yeah, all yeah, of the it, drama. Yeah, so th- when I joined that, that was the first time I'd ever gotten that intense because it was we were meeting at 6.30 a.m. every day from Monday through Friday and then on the weekends to test. And that was with him and Dante wow. and Hayden and Dr. Uh, I, I yeah. hope Dante's doing well. Yeah. Um, so joined that and then it was like in March of 2022, so like two years ago, Um when that team dissolved and that whole thing uh, Mm -hmm. panned out. And then the Wolfpack was born, which was me, Ian, Tim, Matt Coles, and then Dante and Prism Mike. Oh, yeah. uh, Going into Pro Tour 1, which was in May of 2022. And then at Pro Tour 1, and the thread has a lot of this in it, but that's where I ran into, like, Andrew Rothermel again for the first time. He was the final Star Wars Destiny World Champion, and we were friends through that. That's where I ran into someone else. Oh, that's where I met Michael Hamilton in person yeah, for the first time. Yeah. So then soon after that, Michael and Roger joined, and then we added Andrew. And then Andrew was like, hey, I have this friend John. Mm-hmm. And then John's brother, Luke. And then all of a sudden, it's like we just are ex- mm-hmm. expanding. And then later that year, we met, like, uh, spent some time with Michael Fong at uh, Pro Tour in France. And he didn't have a group. He's a great, great dude. And he's just a great dude. Same with like Brody Spurlock. Um, I, he's from Texas, so we've been to a lot of like pro quests and road to Nats together. And he didn't have a team. And then he, you know, just culturally was a really good fit. So anyways, this whole thing kind of ex- became something more. Um, and then we finally got pregnant. And then the recognition for me is the commitment and time it takes to be competitive a game. And also... Uh, orchestrate the Wolfpack and also <laughs> run a business uh, is a lot. Like it's just yeah. a, it's an intense. And I knew that I would not even just having a kid. I was going to be away for a while. And then on top of that, it's like I don't know honestly if I will have the energy or will or desire to to be at this level anymore. And so instead of <clears throat> trying to be like, hey, I'm going to be gone for a year ish and I'll whatever, I just kind of made the decision personally to step away um and not not under the auspice of like someday i'll be back it's like if you guys want to keep competing as a wolf pack you need to figure that out yeah <laughs> like, I, got, I, I need to not be involved in this so since then you know some things have happened and like the the og wolves as i call it which is ian matt tim and i uh it was like hey we're still gonna it's undeniable we'll keep playing games together and mm-hmm. compete in some fashion and so uh, how that all is going to roll, I don't know. Switching to Star Wars Unlimited. I yeah, can see yeah. it written, written right here in the stars. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's what, like, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm just planning on July of this year to next year being like yeah, out. I'll play Earthborn. I'll play Sorcery. I'll play the like low-key, chill dad games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, like, but like I can't, Dude, you know? It's the new classification. Yeah. That's um, the business now, dad games. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You just, I just, it, I'm not going to have it. I know I'm not going to have yeah. it. Um, and so I'd rather, if I can't be excellent, I don't want to do it. Um, and it's nothing against, like, I, I love the Wolfpack. I love everyone on it. It was really sad. Going into the Pro Tour as well, I knew I, knew I was done. I was telling them. Mm-hmm. We had a Saturday team dinner at all the major events. And it was like a private, just the, the you know, the group. <clears throat> and we always do like a 
go around the table and do a shout out and a highlight mm-hmm. from the weekend. And most time I'll, I end up going last. Like it starts, I start it and then I start them going. And I knew I was telling them like, <laughs> but it was really weird going into an event kind of knowing it was the end. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing was just a very different kind of experience. Yeah. Wild. All right. Well, heck of a run. That was fun. you never really done that before. Yeah. Well, the other team you started was Team Covenant. That's right. Which is kind of funny. <laughs> and here we are today. So if the Wolf Wolfpack Incorporated starts to compete with us. <laughs> like, well, that, that was definitely <laughs> like from the start with the Wolfpack, it was like these are players. This is not a money-making mm-hmm. thing. So we're not going to have a Patreon. We're not going to sell anything. Like this is. Not going to split winnings. There's no split winnings. There's no pressure to play certain decks. It's like this is people that love the game that want to be good, as good as they can be at it, but also like understand what. What actually matters here? Yeah, great group of people, um, and I think they'll continue continue on doing their thing, but they'll figure that out for themselves. Cool. Well, uh, that's that's I guess all the personal updates. Let's talk about the publisher communication side of this real quick. This stemmed from Jonathan. You you kind of brought this topic up. There's been some, I guess, most notably, Sorcery announced the they're doing some more beta on the release of Arthurian Legends, primarily in regions that were underserved. Uh, during the initial launch, of which there seem to have been many, um, and then some more to LGSs here in the States. It looks like that's going to be tied primarily to whoever's using the Sorcery Play Network and kind of doing the thing. Remember when we were selling, what in the world were we selling? D&D? We were trying to get the WPN points so we could get books. Mm, they had the Do you alt remember covers. that? Mm-hmm. We had an alternate art cover subscription, and then it was an absolute disaster because they, they couldn't guarantee yeah. anything and logistics were all awful well, as usual. It started by saying, yeah, as long as you get your numbers to us by here, we can get it for you. Mm-hmm. And then that didn't pan out at all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was time, yeah, what is, yeah, yeah, insert yeah, publisher that name here, right? <laughs> uh, so it's kind of like a WPN thing, right? That's trying to be... Ha- the, the, this, this all stems from... I wish I had a whiteboard. I told you we need to get a whiteboard in here or, or something that we can sketch on or something like Dude, that. Can finance we get a teleprompter already signed off on it. Or we, can get, yeah, we, we, we talk can, about the iPad. We can draw that on the works. screen. IPad, yeah. We got it. We got to get that going. And then we could just like do that and you could have your whiteboard. Yeah, because then I'd be like, because essentially what's happening, the grand secret of the industry that everybody knows is that as much as you want all of your product to go to the excited, willing uh, supporters and marketers of your game at the local environments that want to support the communities uh, for sorcery, for instance, the vast majority of products doesn't go to those places. It's not the system is not built to allow that to happen. So if I send you know X thousand boxes to this warehouse over here, also known as a distributor. Those are going to get ordered by that distributor's clients. Those clients are primarily their larger volume sellers. So that's going to be like your miniature markets, et cetera. Uh, Travis over there at Millennium, all these guys that are moving a ton of volume, they typically are prioritized because they have the most amount of sales with that distributor. And so while tiny shops around the country might have a distinct passion for supporting a game like Sorcery, the distributor has no incentive to get boxes to them explicitly and specifically at the expense of their easier, larger clients uh, that they want to reward for loyalty. So because of that, publishers try to develop ways to figure out how to get product to the people who are actually doing the work of community building, uh, which is typically a minority of LGSs in the available pool of people that might be buying your product. Some of them are going to flip it on TCG Player, eBay, et cetera. Some of them are going to put six boxes in the store. They're not going to sell. Then they're going to move them out at, you know, 90 bucks, 80 bucks, 70 bucks, whatever it is. And then some of them are going to say, I'm going to help make this game successful, make this game grow. I want to introduce it to my audience. I have a good relationship with my community. I'm going to run demo days. I'm going to run events and I'm going to help. And Sorcery, that's very difficult, obviously, <clears throat> because those boxes of distribution ran out pretty quick. Distribution did not order enough or, or, you know, however the inner workings of that were. And so you have certain LGSs are trying to support the game and are having difficulty buying product to do it. And whether or not that's actually needed and all this, that, that's a totally different conversation that Zach and I have all of the time and have for the past five years <laughs> and why we're building a store that we hope will be very different from what's out there. However, in the meantime, uh, Sorcery is trying to identify the stores that are actually helping them. And so I think the reprint of beta is designed to try to go to those stores, to target those stores. How they're going to pull that off, I yeah. don't know. Well, in, in the announcement video, which is 
we're talking about publisher communication, so mm-hmm. that's interesting. But in the now we're zoomed in a little. In the announcement video, they were talking about uh, there are a couple of regions that were like very underserved, and mm-hmm. I, they used some language that was really nice for saying that. But <laughs> essentially, there are a couple like I think Europe and Asia specifically were just like a Europe was just nothing. Yeah, UK um, and like. You know how much of that is? Uh, I I saw a lot of people because we were, we had beta for a minute, and like, it was felt that it was very undersupplied, specifically in Europe. I heard it from a lot of people saying like, it can't get it here. Um, but for one reason or another, those were under, underserved. So it seems like from the video, the majority of supply is going to go to those regions, mm-hmm. and then because the reprinting for those regions that have just been drastically underserved. Portions of it are going to the United States uh, mm-hmm. specifically, and then the way they're allocating that to retail, which is like it's it's worth just zooming in on that for one second. It's a very interesting and clever way to do that. I haven't seen a publisher. I guess the Wizards does it because they have their own system to do that in terms of allocation. The old but WPN. Notably, Wizards has uh, leverage specifically over distribution in that that is the biggest game in tabletop gaming whereas smaller companies and sorcery is still very much a small company um and I, I i don't know the full magic numbers or sorcery numbers but i would assume sorcery even with all the success is like pales in comparison oh to yeah magic. and magic is like in pokemon a product every month and like it's just this crazy thing so kind of the it's i think it's important a lot of the like fr- frustrations that i see coming out fail to have the context of the actual position the publisher is in where they don't have, they can't dictate a lot to distribution or retail. <laughs> like that's yeah. just, you can't just like be like, hey, distribution, send product only to the stores we tell you to send it to. They're not just going to do that for everybody. Mm-hmm. But it's not, that's not the business they are in. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> that, the, the dynamics of that are the opposite. They are telling you exactly how it's going to be. We don't want to receive product to this state. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. So the fact they're pulling this off at all is impressive to me. Yeah. Um, and directly uh, using that reprint to, to get additional product to stores specifically doing the things that they want. Um, that is a puzzle that, if you could solve it at scale, would be remarkable. But most small publishers, one, don't have a system to track that. Two, mm-hmm. don't have enough success or leverage to actually get anyone to do that for them. Right. Like, that is an incredible thing right. to pull off. So with that in mind... Let's talk about the communication side of that, because that's kind of where at least it got our attention. And we, we see this all the time. And in this, I mean, we can't for fantasy flight games, for goodness sakes. I mean, the the topic of conversation around so many of these games was more they're not saying anything. We're confused. Mm-hmm. We don't understand. Is this game continuing? Is the new, next set going to come out? Is the next set delayed? Retailers are saying they're not getting it. We don't know where things are. And I think I think there's a really important line to draw and to set this this up appropriately. And I would love to hear from all of you out there. I think a lot of people out there are fantasy flight game. Uh, you know, like uh, what would you call people who have played fantasy flight games in the past? Uh, refugees. Refugees. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, the wrong kind one. of. I mean, kind of. Yeah, we're close enough. We're well, close like enough. I, I picture, uh, I picture those old Thrones refugees. Yeah, is is where that came from. Where it's like zero cost two two. Yeah, man. So every, good. Every day. Discard at the end. Uh, here's the thing: in in the majority of tabletop gaming, in terms of releases, uh, like your board game, uh, your Catans, your mm. Ticket to mm-hmm. Rise, etc. Uh, the communication there is not, it doesn't need to be anything. No, yeah. Nobody cares if Catan is coming out in the next month or two months or three months, really. It doesn't affect anybody. What is fascinating, though, about this very particular slice of the universe that we happen to be in with expandable card games, confidence in the game continuing and being successful is a very important factor with whether or not it does well now. Mm-hmm. So the TCG publishers are in a totally different world when it comes to communication because they need to communicate enough that everybody who's currently playing the game feels comfortable continuing to play and don't feel like that their cards are going to be worthless and they're wasting their time. But they also don't want to reveal so much that if they're wrong about a number of unknown things, that it sinks confidence in their competence And so now players are saying, this publisher doesn't know what they're doing. I'm going to bail. So you have to ride like, again, it's like the impossible equation. I mean, I guess the reward is is good at the other side. But you look at all these razors, edges that publishers, especially indie publishers of these kinds of games are on. 
If you over communicate and you're wrong, and this is the thing, there's so many things that you just cannot predict that you just don't know. The, the boat was delayed, the, the you know things, the printing error happened, there was lines through this card, the print sheets were cut wrong, the collation was incorrect. Those things, if it randomly happens, you look like you were wrong by three months. Yeah. And you're wrong by three months because you're incompetent because this is the internet and there's only speculation and rumor. And so then as a publisher, you say, well, I can dispel the speculation and rumor by communicating. And then you communicate something and everyone's like, okay, cool, cool, everything's cool. And then the thing you just said doesn't turn out panning out because some new variable has come into the equation. And then everyone's like, oh my gosh, this mm -hmm. is crazy. And then eventually it's like, these people don't know what they're doing. They're gonna run this game into the ground uh, and on and on it goes. So how do you find the right balance? I mean, that's really the question. When, when have you guys seen publishers do it right? That's a great question for everybody out there. What, what, even in specific instances of when you feel like communication was correct and or theories about the way that it should be. Because um, I don't know that I've seen anybody. I don't think, like, we've not even nailed it for our own business. It, it, there are times when you're like, I should have communicated better here. Or yeah. I'm, it, it's helpful for us, at least, that we currently have a, at least a weekly live stream. Mm -hmm. There's a lot in the Discord channel and the text channel, yeah. and there's a lot of communication going on. And the marketing but, department is brilliant. Yeah, of course. Which, Just, of course, genius marketing. I mean, that helps, and that's really a lot of the communication. Um, but also, like, we're okay. in a very, uh, in some ways, fortunate position in that we we aren't like we're not publishing a product that we have to ship from china and like communicate all the details yeah. on like it's a very different uh situation that we're in and i feel like our communication capacity is so much higher than the average you know publisher we have it on our schedule every week we can communicate something yeah, like, yeah. all <laughs> the news yeah all the like updates, we can literally like, cover it yeah. all let alone yeah. produce content and all that but i think you know one of the the other pieces of this puzzle that's, that's notable for me is publishers that use kickstarter or crowdfunding, and John's like, oh, this seems a different direction. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Which is, the I think when you crowdfund, there's an expectation and an understanding of what, like you're gonna communicate a lot more. Mm -hmm. And the people backing it feel owed a certain amount of communication yeah. about behind the scenes and what's going on and you know how everything's working and then how everything's going in the meantime until it fulfills. And then, the, the weird part that, and you know, TCGs have not had this problem historically because until much more recently, a lot of TCGs weren't kickstarting. That was not a normal thing. Yeah. But I also think there's this weird pattern uh, that, we, that, that you have to bridge the gap of, of like sorcery communicating as an example or Alpha Clash or whoever during an Earthworm Kickstarter versus post is very different. So should it be though? I mean, why? Because so, Kickstarter, you're essentially a seed investor, right? You're you're a, you're a massive scale investor, but you can't pull out your investment. Part of why it's different is because I give you money and I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. But with the next chapter, the next pack of Marvel Champions, most people aren't buying it until it's on the shelf. Mm -hmm. So, outside of the fact that it's here, you know, and you know, with like an expandable game, let's say Fab. They are communicating ahead of time about what's coming and when it's coming and how it's going to go. And here's a, and part of what's really important about that is it then allows players and, and retailers and all their partners to schedule. Like we've known for a month and a half, the release date, the pre-release date weekend for the next set of five. And it was not always like that. That took <laughs> three years to get to, I think. Yeah. Um, and the... But versus like when you, know, you back Sorcery and you do alpha boxes and you're doing this whole thing... There's a tension and a nervousness. It's like, am I ever going to get this? Mm -hmm. Like, because this is not a known quantity at all. Uh, but there is a routine. Like, I remember in the Star Wars Destiny days, there were multiple times where something would not happen as expected. Like, a, a, something would get delayed and we would never hear about it. Yeah. It would just be three months late, no words. And then I remember one time, the week before the 4th of July, and they're like, hey, we're shipping now. And it's coming out July 5th on a Friday, the day after 4th of July. And it's like, what do you mean? And like logistically, post office is closed the day before. Our staff is on taking vacations and stuff. And it's like, we've got to deal with this. And we can't yeah. schedule it. And we can't have a release weekend event. Like you're killing so much momentum mm -hmm. by doing this. But going back to the land of reality with small publishers <laughs> is that sometimes they don't have a choice. And I learned more about this more recently when I found out there was a scenario where a publisher was wanting to... Like, had products showing up early so they could hit the release date. 
And one of the distributors was saying, we don't want it. We, until, we will not accept it. We will not accept it unless, and if you give it to us, we are shipping it to sell. So like if you have a street date, it's going to happen. It's like, what is a tiny publisher supposed to do about that? Like, yeah. It's not like they have a warehouse where they can just sit on it for a month. But unless you just time it from China, the perfect week, you've got nowhere to go with all your product. Like it's a crazy thing to bounce. Well, and I, yeah. I don't know how much that was going on with FFG. I think that, that was a different issue. But... Point remains, I think the there can kind of be this bad expectation set of even right now with Arthurian Legends and Sorcerer, I can feel it where people are like, why don't we have more information yet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like it's just not how this works, and they, I mean, they want to know like how many boxes did you print? Because because so, in Kickstarter it was like we printed thirty thousand boxes mm -hmm. or whatever it was, and we're only printing because they promised we're only printing alpha as part of this. Mm -hmm. So then people are like, and then now it's like, well, what do you mean you're not telling us how many beta boxes you printed? And they're like, what? They're like, they don't believe it helps. What? Here's here's what? Why? What? Why would that ever be the right thing to do? Fab, Fab committed to releasing their print numbers, which they've stopped doing, and it tanked them order. because like this is all like you need enough. It's just the strangest world. That's, you, yeah, that's but you don't. What I wanted to get to is like can you lean forward a little. Yeah, like off there's like. Transparency for the sake of transparency, but nothing else that some people want, like the publishing numbers. And finding that balance, I think, is super tricky because you want to say, like, just be transparent, just communicate. If the players ask you something, answer it. Mm -hmm. But you got to hold some cards for a variety of reasons. Those are the reasons that are re they get really strange. Yeah. And I don't want to get into the collectible conversation, but like. Well, but, it seems only downside to release any information that deep into the like process yeah. of the sausage getting made. Well, and you also you have you have scenarios where um, there are more delicate things that you wouldn't want to be transparent about, not because you're unwilling to be transparent, but also because you don't want heat going the wrong direction. Mm. As an example, if a small publisher said, "Hey, the reason this thing happened is because a distributor refused to accept this." And that's one of their two distributors that's really important to them. Yeah, they can't just publicly say this is this distributor's fault. Mm -hmm. Like that's not great because then distributor it, says, "Well, go elsewhere with every yeah. future but that set." Then creates a scenario where because they don't, then there's never any heat on distribution to change these patterns. Mm -hmm. But also, like, anyways, it, there's those dynamics too. Same that's with true. like that's true. As an example, if certain regions are undersupplied of a product, is so it like, did you not print enough? Did you make this choice? Mm -hmm. Was distribution not ordered enough? Did retail in that region not want to order it at all? Because right. that reminds me of the Star Wars Destiny. It's a perfect example. From August to October, that game got crapped on mm -hmm. by retailers and distributors heavily. And it was like dead on arrival mentality. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then the pre-release happened, and then release happened, and things went crazy, and then there are so many retailers and distributors suddenly complaining they can't get more product. Do you remember? Do you remember that period of yeah? And dude, of course, it, we were responsible. You were for the, the villain of that game. On, on the Facebook, yeah, with group. the little fan of cards. Yeah, and it was like it was all the like <sighs> Kansas uh, store. There was a, a community up there, uh, and they they uh, I'll never forget. One of the guys was like, "Your guys' business is going to fail in a year." It didn't. <laughs> so uh, we got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but it, there was like this weird, we were taking so much heat because we bet so big on Destiny. And then other stores and certainly distributors were like, we don't want to touch it. Yeah. And I mean, then it's like, oh, hey, now it's really successful and it's easy to sell. Where is ours? Yeah. Well, and that's a perfect example because I remember um, at Gamma, um, <laughs> I, I I am just it's it's we have a I don't know it's been enough time I'm just gonna say it uh, at Gamma I remember watching Horvath talk about because um, people were complaining because they couldn't get Destiny and allocation and all that stuff um, and then you know we had a lot of for like a week and a half or two weeks we had inventory or whatever mm -hmm. it was I don't even remember um, but we had committed months in advance to the biggest order of product we'd ever committed to it was all in like. Mm -hmm. That could if have Destiny had tanked, I think we would not be here. We, we could have, the business could have ended at that point because we so fundamentally believed this game was great. It deserved the spotlight and it would be successful. And then we were right. And we had inventory because we bought it. But that's a good example of what he's not going to go up on stage and say is that you retailers and you distributors had so little faith in this game 
that's why this happened. They're the problem. Mm -hmm. Like they were unwilling to like, but he's not going to say that. Because so, th that's you, their partners, right? Do you think so? Is there a doubt? Like, it, what if he had gone to that room and said that? So we're talking about commu publisher communication. What if he had done that? I mean, is that ultimately would that have changed anything? Would that have just made him feel better? Would it have have made the situation better or worse if he had been honest I, about what had gone on? I think most publishers don't have the luxury of pointing running guns the experiment, that way. basically. Like, if you're because at that point, FFG is pretty successful right and they're i think in the middle of the asmodee merger or p right post um so they're in a little bit different of a position but like if you're an indie publisher it you're you just can't point the guns at distribution yeah. or retail right even and though, like i said you can't run the experiment yeah, even if so, it might be the right thing to do you can't can't try it and and even then it's like at that moment pointing just doing that i don't know what it, it adds right mm -hmm. but realistically it's like of course, the people who committed to ordering months in advance when no one else was ordering. And then the thing he revealed at that talk was that there was one retailer who ordered more than any other distributor and they were a retailer buying it. It was us. Yeah. Like the spoiler. <laughs> For some reason, we're ordering more than Europe. Yeah. Like all of the European. It's crazy. Like it's, yeah. it blows my. Like, anyways, I'll get off my yeah. high horse. But yeah. the point is, in terms of public, public publisher communication, you know, I think uh, another one, Jamie with Stonemeyer, mm -hmm. he's hyper transparent. Mm -hmm. Like he does his annual shareholder report, and it's like here's this, and he, there's certain things he doesn't share, but it's like he's it's it's very revealing, exceptionally yeah. transparent. Um, and every every publisher is going to have different uh, layers on this, but there there's a thousand different reasons why they would or wouldn't communicate certain pieces of information. I see you smiling at chat, so I'm curious. To see what that is. <laughs> but but I think something that gets lost is. There's an assumption that publishers have more power in the relationship than they do and that they can control anything. And then there's also a secondary thing, which is like there's restrictions on what they're going to be willing to say. Because right now... That's really a good point. If, you know, and, and this is just... Th that example is like if no distributors in Europe order Destiny and then all the European players and retailers are upset that they can't get Destiny, who's that on? Like I know should, who takes the heat. Should FFG have printed so much they could have it sitting there so that when Europe finally came around to the fact that it's successful, they could send it? Mm -hmm. No. No, but they'll take the heat. No, 100% take the heat. because FFG you know, failed at distribution. They logistics. And yeah. like, this is their problem, and they didn't yeah. print enough. And That's amazing. All that kind of stuff. Uh, I want to catch up with the chat here. Uh, Andrew, since I see you, and I just love that you're here all the time. It's my favorite. Um, you obviously you have a crazy amount of experience. What have you learned about publisher communication going from FFG to Earthborn? Anything changed on that? I'd be curious to know from you. Um, I like dysphoria going all the way to the top here. It's not you see, you see this big Hank come on. Sorry, go ahead. Earthborn games would be pretty good. I mean, they made a podcast and talked about everything every time. And honestly, that's a probably a key part of this is you just have to give yourself a platform like that forces you to engage every week or so it's not as much of an effort it's like, it's yeah. like check in time yeah but yeah to be That's fair is, basically. earthborn both times has been on crowdfunding mm -hmm. so i think there's also a a need explicit need for them to be able to communicate regularly for people that want that kind of engagement it's also a small studio yep. dedicated mm -hmm. to one game yep. yep that they can actually take the time to care enough to and, communicate about this one thing and you also have the uh, accessibility because they're small. It's like they have a Discord channel and mm -hmm. they're active in it. They're active in our Discord channel. Andrew's on our live chat. Mm -hmm. Like you can ask Earthworm questions to Andrew on our stream. <laughs> and he probably gets an answer, Andrew. And if we and say something wrong, he's going to text us. They about did it. their first. I think their first live stream, right? Andrew said they did a live stream the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they were doing live of the podcast, right? It was yeah. amazing. It was he, crazy. He told me they almost got through without a scratch, and then at the very end, it, like five minutes left, it failed. Just, them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's always a ghost of the machine on the live stream. Andrew's keep, coming fresh. He's trying to beat keep, us. Keep up Luke's comment. I just have to answer this. Uh, right. Which Luke, one? Luke Jones saying, I wonder if there needs to be some type of training for distributors and retailers about the quality of games, like local stores thinking a game is bad, then wanting to sell it seemed like a knowledge gap. My... my Problem with that is that what are they doing? <laughs> like, what? It, are, do we have Go to spoon on. feed it so much? Like, if you aren't like someone who does this tremendously, who is what I would consider kind of the peak of uh, the traditional game store models, Travis with mm -hmm. Millennium Games and James Sapphire, hundred uh, percent Sapphire Parlor, like, Emerald Parlor. James, what is your Sapphire City? Sapphire City Gaming Parlor, I believe, is what it is. Like, in my mind. 
of all the things, and I get it. And Jesse, winning agenda. I get the fact that running a local game store is hard. It's not lucrative. It takes a lot of time and energy. But also, like if if you're a retailer who's not merchandising your product and figuring out what the games are that are worth selling, that's fine. But don't complain about it on the back end. Mm, like that mm-hmm. that's the friction with Destiny for me. It's fine if you don't want to put the effort in. You only want to commit to a sure thing. But also, you can't complain when you don't get it a month after it's success. Mm-hmm. Same with Sorcery. I, I don't know who it was, but in Discord they were saying, I went a month before release and was asking if they were going to stock it. They couldn't care less. Went a month after, and they're complaining they couldn't get Sorcery. And you... <laughs> <laughs> draw, draw the line. Like, connect the dots. Barry you know Sanders I mean? in the, in the yeah, chat. It's just like, <laughs> it, it's right there in front of you, which is... Same thing with sorcery, right? Like, I know there was a lot of people, uh, I don't want to say, maybe they were frustrated, upset, that we had beta after no one else could get it. And it's like, there's a reason that happened. Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) there's there's a reason this happened. And there's a lot of stores a month before release that could not care less. The only time they care about it is when they know they can buy it and immediately sell it. Mm -hmm. But the other thing about that is, I think it depends on your perspective on retail at all local retail i think given our experiences growing up in local retail environments local game stores we had i guess i mean realistically we have a very pessimistic view about the model and about the relevance of it and we're children of the internet you know we're enlightened uh, beings who have seen the buying patterns and and everything shift millennial is the word for that and so we started the 1.0 the store that we did start with it it was very different it was totally different in fact it made that one warhammer 40k player very mad and he was in a trench coat and i was a little worried um, Where's the 40k? Very strange. Very what strange you mean interaction. You don't have it? <laughs> very strange interaction. He was That's annoyed that we weren't selling 40k to a degree that I felt like I was about to get beat up. <laughs> weird. By a man in a trench coat. That's weird, right? Like that's not can't possibly be normal. Uh, but so 1.0 is very different, etc. And 3.0 I think is going to be very different. Uh, we're just going to go wild on it. But if you view the local retail store as a essentially kind of a speculative retailer who's attempting to maximize profit by finding the best games for their audience and bringing them into the store however they can do that and then selling them for a healthy profit. Uh, that They're in the business of basically like buying and selling. I think Travis sees himself this way. By Millennium Games, but like I'm trying to find games on Kickstarter early. I'm trying to, yeah. I'm trying to get these in because I think they're going to be hits, and then I'm going to sell them, and that's how I'm going to make money. That's one way to view what local retail is about, it, but that also kind of removes the local element of it. The second way to view local retail is publishers need a way for their products to diffuse across a large geographic space. And the best way for that to happen is to put it on a shelf in every store in the country so that whenever people walk in, they will find out about sorcery for the first time by seeing it on the shelf in the same way that I might go at, well, I'd never go into a retail store. But if I went into a retail store, uh, I might see, well, if I went into research, for instance, the grocery store here or, or Trader Joe's, I might, Trader Joe's is a bad example. It's all their own stuff. Uh, if I went into research, I might find out about a local honey that I would otherwise never have known about because it's on their shelf and I'm walking by it. And I'm like, ah, that's good packaging. I might check that out. So like there's that part of it too where the local retail model is seen as very important, not for their ability to predict what's going to be successful and to then make themselves financially uh, succeed, but as a service to the publisher to gain visibility and awareness for their game. And so if you're from that perspective, you might think that if I can't get the game on a shelf, the publisher is losing because they're not getting the visibility that I can offer them. And so I'm going to stick with anything that I can reliably get on my shelf without having to hunt it down months ahead of time and put a big amount of cash on the table that if I'm wrong would absolutely devastate my company because these are undercapitalized places. We have lived the undercapitalized life (laughs) <laughs> Taking a big bet isn't possible. You don't even have chips to push. Yeah. Um, or so, you have like five chips and you have to push them. <laughs> you, have to, you have to try to turn five into six and over the next year turn six yeah, into seven. Yeah, it's impossible. But then eventually, 
if you get to 100, then you can take 50 of them and bet on destiny, right? And if that pays off, then now maybe you have 150 chips or 200, and so now you can make bigger bets. And if you keep doing that well, you can succeed. But I think that's unrealistic also to think that the average local retail store of even twice the scale of what I would consider average here in Tulsa would be able to, to go to Fantasy Flight two months ahead of time and say, I want to bet big on destiny, because it would be like, two cases yeah, and that's not going to get anybody's attention. Um, so it's kind of a weird, you know, you got to, it's a pincer there where yeah. like, how do you win ultimately if you can't bet big early to guarantee the supply, but then the people who did bet big can, and then that means there's none for you at the end of that chain. Yeah. Well, and I think sorcery in part of that communication is handling the situation very well, which is my whole point with that illustration slash story was it's impossible for publishers to, navigate that in a way where no one's going to be upset mm -hmm. because inevitably um, because this most stores a month out don't care about or aren't interested and then they do care at the other point i think the only thing you can do and in this case right like they, they've sold out of the first print run congratulations yeah. like Congrats. that's a massive success so at least what they did was somewhat successful yeah if not totally <laughs> successful uh, but then you have a ton of retailers who at some point along the way, it wanted to restock or wanted to order more product or wanted to whatever. They couldn't. And so then you take that victory and you you up improve your process as best you can going into set two. And mm -hmm. fortunately, they have a year between these two sets. So they have yeah. some time to, to navigate this where hopefully now you have retailers and distributors interested in committing to things earlier so that you have a better sense of how to serve them appropriately. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's the first set that's really tough. It's I mean, you're printing into a void. Across have, the board. You have across no, the board. no idea what's going on. So, but that is not going to, uh, the main thing for me is I, in that scenario where you get a month out and now you're upset that you don't can't get any more product. It's like everyone wishes they get more product right now when it's guaranteed to sell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one piece. That's Arcana. That's yeah. anything. You can, <laughs> of yeah. course. If I could turn it around for a thousand percent profit yeah. margin, and that's what happens. See, that's the other piece of this. Is if it's really hot, it's it's being sold for untold amounts on TCG Player eBay. Yeah. It's unlikely that it's going specifically to the local community at MSRP or less. Yeah. That's even people are speculating about the reprint, where it's going to stores that are engaging with the, the play network, right? And it's like speculation that that's going to get. No, almost none of that's going to end up actually local. Mm. If, if it's a limited enough reprint that the inclination, logically it makes sense because there's no way to control what actually happens once the product shows up. Yeah, You have no idea where these are actually going to get sold or what price they're going to get sold at. So right now, boxes of beta are $300 online. Let's say they're $500 by the time this moment arrives. It's really hard to be a retailer and be like, I'm going to sell this for $150. And we even had this. I remember the uh, Monarch for Fab. Mm -hmm. Our subscriptions we stayed at msrp and we knew like they're pre-selling for four or five hundred dollars a box everybody who was subscribed could just resell it for 500 and, and make i know the money. there's a number of people that did <laughs> right and like the just the reality of that where we we stuck to it but at the end of the day you have that same dynamic at play but across a thousand different retailers and if you're a retailer that only gets as you said you have five chips and you bought your 12 boxes of this game that was part of the monarch thing to me it's like i mean local retail could use a win like, mm -hmm. yeah, you only get 20 boxes of fab, but if you can sell them each for 500, like, that's game changing for a lot yeah. of stores. Yeah, like, that's that a is, lot of chips. That is a ground shaking moment for them. So, all that to say, you have all these issues that happen and publish your communication, how much to communicate and what to communicate. And with collectibles, it's, it's twice as complicated. Yeah. Because you say, limited reprint of beta, and it's like, you have no idea what that's going to do to You're just managing confidence. To the market. Yeah. And like, you, what you don't want is, a year from now, beta box is at fifty dollars. Because then, when Arthurian Legends comes out, you don't want people saying, "I'm just going to wait; it's going to be half price in six months." Mm -hmm. Or just like sometimes they just stop playing the game. Because a lot of the interest in beta and alpha is under the auspices that we're going to get six, eight, ten sets from now. People are going to love sorcery, and that this early stuff that you have is going to be more and more valuable, like we've seen with the Charizards and on the Black Lotuses and all of that. Uh, and the moment that that's not even possible anymore, like a Meta Zoo. Uh, that stuff is all just fire sold and it's like, mm -hmm. okay. And that, that's the thing I've just had to appreciate with all of this is that they're getting the investor class roped in, class, getting the investors roped in to a collectible game is part of the reason that it works. 
And I hate to say that. Let's go to the chat. They're suffering way early. I'm day. going. I'm going all the way back. All the way. John Gardner, congrats on baby. To um, who? Alex Becker, for the record, I hope my box is a monarch and was rewarded with a fabled. Congratulations, thanks for the purchase. Congrats. Gunther Fett, Zach, it has been an absolute pleasure getting to know you through Fab. I still remember playing in the top eight of the first TC ProQuest. Wow. We'll be sad to have one less person to check in on at bigger events. Gunther Fett. Our first ProQuest, was that? It's Boba's brother, if you didn't know. What, were you on Viscera? <laughs> Nothing. Just, Sorry, I was, I was, I was just, in memory like a, lane. It's like I held it, and it just dropped. It's like a, it's like a balloon that just slowly... <laughs> Did you say Boba's brother? Yeah, it's fine. So, dude, it's this, fine. This, you don't this, need to manage my it, disappointment. This weekend, I was... <laughs> so, <laughs> this weekend, it's related. That's where my brother Sam, a huge Boba Fett fan. Uh -huh. His wife Hannah were at our house. Yeah, also a huge Boba Fett fan. Yeah, of course. And we were standing in the kitchen, and... Uh, I mentioned like we're, we've been testing Alpha Clash for the Vegas mm -hmm. event I'm going to in a couple weeks, and one of the characters is Twerk, mm -hmm. and he thought I said Twerk, <laughs> and so then he made a Twerk joke and then Twerked, <laughs> but the, I was the only one watching. That and, wasn't the joke. <laughs> and I was I was mid sentence, and so I didn't laugh and I just kept going because I was like mid thought, and then uh -huh. afterwards I acknowledged the joke and laughed, uh, and as I started laughing they were like, "What happened?" I was like, "Tim just twerked." <laughs> And uh, he wouldn't show them the, the twerk. So it was a very, very funny moment where I, I had this ability. I can't do two things at once. So like I could acknowledge it. I, Tim was twerking in front of me, but I was I was in my lane, so I had to had to stay on it. Ice cold, man. Uh, See, anyways, uh, thank you for the kind words, Gunther. Honestly, we're we're Mr. very. Fred. We talked about this. Jonathan and I talked about this last week, week ago, two weeks ago. We're very bad live streamers. We're supposed to be engaging with the audience more. And then we just start talking to each other, and then it's an hour later, and we're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, you guys are supposed to be, we're supposed to be engaging, you know, like the the Twitch people." We're not. No. It would be easier if there's only one of us. It would be. I've been saying that for years. <laughs> Brad Chance. I'm retiring from the stream. <laughs> it's not just FFG that struggles with communication. Renegade has been horrible about communication. Organized player on Vampire Rivals. This is systemic across the industry. I'll say this. I think it may be systemic across all of humankind. Yeah, as you're building your house. As I'm building my freaking and house. Your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> dealing as a verb there is incredible. That's more revealing about you than it is me, my friend. No, no, my, my marriage is great. <laughs> I'm not dealing with my marriage. Yeah, just something to be managed. Uh, Big Hank, even a simple, hey, we're working on it. We don't have an ETA, but we'll let you know when we have it. You know what? Andrew probably answers this later. Are customers owed that? Well, another, here's my wife speaking of. Another hey, part of that. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> Just <laughs> on the yeah. money, on stream. Yes, you're that's on, right. You're on stream, Shannon. Zach just said that <laughs> I was dealing with my relationship. <laughs> Can you believe he just said that? Live. As if, yeah. as if our relationship is just dealing with each hey, other. Hey, listen, we had, a, we had a long conversation yesterday, <laughs> and... I, I'm, I'm trying to hear what she's saying. <laughs> I, I think... Uh, yeah, we're on stream right now. Hey, yeah, those boxes, if, grocery boxes. If anything, it's it's Shannon and I that are dealing with the relationship. So I'm just, I'm just saying, we're, we're okay. talking about decision-making uh -huh. and how, like, okay. Steven and Serena are the kind of people well, that do, like, Bryce 10 days of research mm -hmm. and just, mm -hmm. to, like, make a decision. Okay, and I would have made the decision in 10 minutes. Right. Yeah. And right, that if, like, Shannon and I would make very quick decisions together. Right. We would get into a lot of... Yeah. Trouble and my you and me of, and Shannon are all on the same. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah just it Isn't would be it easy. Weird? I mean, this is we. Stephen and I have talked about this plenty. See, we're back to not engaging with the audience. Again. So we're bad well, at yeah, this. Well, they'll, you they'll took a phone call. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe that was my fault. Lie. <laughs> 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 Whose fault is this? <laughs> maybe it was a bit mine. I'll own Isn't that. Isn't weird how those those two types often seem to be the ones that get together? Yeah, it's the it's the the planners mm -hmm. and the and then the that's the only way the world goes around, man. People. That's right, all the time. Every like every long term relationship you see, I, it's almost always those two. It's character the, types. It's that eternal energy of dealing with each other that it's spins the wheel. It's like a it's like a water <laughs> Anyways, hydropower. She's bringing your sorcery deck, right? Uh huh. Prince Oz says Fab has become my favorite game and a huge part of my life. Team Covenant had a huge role in my getting into it. Thanks, and I appreciate you, Prince Odd. Appreciate you as well. Awesome here. Also, uh, there were a ton of people who said incredibly nice things about 
Covenant and me in response to this, right? So thank you for mm -hmm. anyone that takes time to respond uh, publicly. Appreciate that. Awesome. You guys want to feel some emotions real quick? Ugh. I don't have those. I don't know. I think I need to save that for the baby. <laughs> I only have so much emotion to give over the next yeah, 30 years. Um, Daniel, uh, up earlier, this is just, I just, just the world needs to send him good thoughts on this. I just think it's beautiful. And, and Daniel Lanizak. My two sons, two years old and 3.5 years old, are going through chemo and stem cell transplant right now, eight weeks in an isolation cabin with mom and dad. Your podcast is giving me the joy and distraction I need. Daniel, uh, my heart absolutely goes out to you. Uh, that is something that nobody should have to deal with on this planet Earth. And I'm, I'm sad for you. And I hope it all, I hope it all works out. Said I brought Earthborn Rangers with me to play in the late evening. I learned a lot about this because of you guys. Thanks a lot. Daniel, yeah, heart goes out to you, that's, Daniel. That's Daniel, can you stuff. can you if you're hearing this, can you just reach out to me in some way? It can be Discord, Discord or X or Instagram. Don't do X. Go, go to the Discord. You might be and, an X user and mess. <laughs> no one's an X user. But seriously, that is. I'm an uh, X X user. Can you just reach out to me? I'd love to uh, engage with you. <clears throat> that's uh, horribly. Can you terrible. imagine? No, it's like there's there's a, a phrase that um, I use all the time now since I heard it, but the only way out is through. And it's just mm -hmm. like when you're in the middle of it, just all you have to keep saying to, say to yourself. It's like, yeah, just man, I, I wish you guys nothing but the best. That is terrible. OK, let's get back. Uh, the recent example, here's Obsidian uh, talking about bringing it back to sorcery. Yeah. The video and, we were talking about. Yeah, the video we can and, and I the, love this. You can disagree with the decision, but they communicated right and as the discourse was about to boil over and read the fever pitch. That's so much of it. I do feel like publishing, and this is, you just learned this from being a human being on the planet, of course, and, and having a relationship, long term relationship. So much of communication is not even about the decision, it's just about acknowledging that there's a void that needs to be filled and then saying, here's what we're doing, even here's why we're doing it. If you disagree with that, that's fine. But that does help just to to understand that I see y'all out there that have these questions and that are concerned about things. Here's what we're going to do, just so you know. And now moving on, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you can't move on until you fill that void with something. Well, I think another thing they did really well with their communication have done so far is disagree or not. They're they're clearly thinking things through and very thoughtful about it. So while you might disagree, and again, they don't, you don't. In my mind, I don't think a, I don't think a tech publisher technically owes anything. Um, if they make a phenomenal product and people want to engage with it, that's that's the the bar. I think it behooves publishers to communicate. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's to their advantage to an extent. Uh, but having the uh, clarity of vision and the maturity to approach it uh, as though you are talking with adults of you know, hey, you may disagree with this, but here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. And here's what we believe in. Mm -hmm. Is this is is are other industries doing you know doing this, talking a lot to their customers? Not really. I mean, like the bigger ones are going to have like a conference every year or twice a year where they actively bring press in and they tell them the news, like a press yeah. release, and then they go. I mean, it's it's so did, tough because did social change the dynamic on that. The expectation of instant communication. Well. I think you see a lot of companies who are trying to be um, like their leadership or their CEO or their founder are publicly communicating via social media or mm -hmm. whatever, or YouTube, or they have a YouTube channel. But I think the tough part is inherently tabletop, it depends. Do you, do you land on the side of tabletop games or products? In which case, if you compare them to a pair of Nike shoes, like they're not communicating. They'll just say like next drop in... 20 I mean, they, days. They're doing ad campaigns or they're paying athletes to wear their stuff, but they're not like, you know, here's our design team and here was our thinking behind, like, that stuff's not happening. But I, I, I like a blog or something. I kind of land Maybe more on the viewing tabletop um, as like art form, media, content being, so like more akin to TV shows or movies or um, even art, straight up art. Um, so you see, studios will do their press circuits and the directors and the interviews and they're going on all this thing and all that kind of stuff but even uh, you know kind of an indie studio house i think about a24 name anyone involved in a24 mm -hmm. yeah like, mm -hmm. what are they doing besides making films in a certain 
like pocket. Like there's an mm-hmm. identity to the films that are different, but like, or it's, like an indie record, like a record label. Like when do you, when do you hear from a record label? And see, that's why it's that's why it's a little different because it's not really a commodity. You're, you're buying into a some a hobby that, if managed well, will be able to continue, and if not, will not. You know, and so there's this kind of trepidation of. I don't want, it's almost like, um, you know, read the reviews of, I got these new speakers for uh, Jonathan over there. If all the reviews said it's going to to die in six months, every Mm -hmm. time I buy these speakers, they die six months later, I'm not going to buy them, even if they're great for six months. But if you're, if you have a Toyota reputation, for instance, I'm going to buy that Tacoma and know that it's going to get me the next 50 years. And so I think what people are trying to suss out is like, can I play sorcery reliably and continue to enjoy the game and get new cards and get a community going? Because it takes a lot of effort and energy. You have to push in to get that rock moving. And if it's not going to be here in six months, I'll just wait for the next one that yeah. I can start pushing on. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of strange because like board games to me hit more like a movie. Yeah. Where you don't have this need for ongoing it's like we market it, we release it, we talked about it for a while, and then it is. Like wingspan is wingspan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't necessarily need to go on about it. But uh, Tweak87, comparing it to video game companies, that's probably the most yeah. directly comparable. But even video game companies, it's different because you buy you know, Call of Duty or whatever it is, and then you own it. Mm-hmm. And then, then you play. Difference in World of Warcraft. That's right. MMOs, right? That's because more like they're, expandable. They're game. also managing community because they will succeed more the longer everybody keeps playing. Yeah. And so they have to continually build confidence within that player base to say, continue to invest your time in this. It's going to keep paying out for you. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. By the way, we've we've been yeah, on the other side of that. that Eventually, it, it doesn't. But they want to convince you that it will continue to uh, do so. Yeah. And I think all these expandable games have to do that as well. Buy the next chapter back. Buy the next data back. Even if you don't necessarily need the cards in it, you want to keep that collection going because they're going to be relevant. Yeah. A year and from now, a year and a half from now. I think that, uh, you know, earlier talking about the direct connection between your purchase and their ongoing ability to do it, right? And we see this with Ashes and like our PDP model getting very direct in terms of if enough people are signed up to do this, it will continue getting mm-hmm. made. And so, yes, you might not be as excited about the next expansion as you were the one before that or the one after that or whatever. But there's a literal direct connection of if people don't continue buying this thing, none of it's all gonna stop getting made yeah completely and for expandable games they're like a very delicate it's it, it it's probably it's so weird more akin to like uh a tv show which is like if enough people aren't watching this they're not gonna green light a season yeah. two or a season three I'm not gonna make more and so there's this other piece of continued engagement it, it it's it's very tricky and it's also most of these publishers are very small and they're having to in A24's example, they're having to play the role of make the, the art in the movie, market the thing, which mm-hmm. is normally, you know, that's, and then produce the thing, manufacture the thing, distribute the thing, get it to the right places, create the pre release content for the local. Like the amount of stuff being asked for them to do is tremendous, especially when the volume and margin on this stuff uh, for small publishers is just so. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, it's crazy. You know, but the weird thing is, too, like, there's so much more identity built into playing a certain expandable game. Mm-hmm. Like, like being a Game of Thrones watcher mm-hmm. is, is hardly something to base your... Well, some and, people do, I guess, base I your life around, but... Game of Thrones had a little uh, interview with the directors at the end of every episode. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that was the closest we really got. And they told us in Season 5 they were taking it off the cliff. Did you guys miss that interview? <laughs> they said, we, honestly, thing. guys, we have no idea what we're doing. We're, we're about to just make no, a huge They're like, mistake. hey, we just signed this deal to make some Star Wars movies, <laughs> so we do not care. But, like, being a sorcery player is different than watching Euphoria. 100%. Yeah. There's a certain, there's a, such a deep investment. Yeah, tabletops are very unique. The closest, I think, the, and we've mentioned this plenty of time, but back in the early days of Dig, when they were, they were doing a Dig podcast, right? Or mm-hmm. what amounts to a podcast now, but they would do a, a recurring show where they talked to the founder and then they would chat about stuff. Mm-hmm. But like that's even in tech, like I guess Facebook probably maybe put out blogs or something, but it's not like a thing. That the the touch. Zuckerberg yeah. AI yeah. machine yeah. <laughs> goes ahead and opens his mouth. And says, Billy Ray's barbecue. <laughs> what was it? What was it? Billy Ray's? Sweet Billy Ray. What was he saying? <laughs> 
<laughs> sweet baby, sweet baby rays. Sweet baby rays, man. The greatest video on the internet. <laughs> sweet baby rays. But yeah, it's. Oh, you know what? Actually, you know what has the most a similar amount of communication based on what I know from watching videos on YouTube, NFTs. Mm. So take that because it's an it's an investment vehicle. Right? No, no. <laughs> well, I, to be an neither vehicle. NFTs nor but it has the card same games are investment like, vehicles. Like yeah, angst yeah. around the communication from the publisher. Well, I, is this a real thing? Constantly being asked. Uh huh. Um, yeah, I, I, I can at least hold a card though. I, I think I think the angst, at least in tabletop, a lot of times comes though from this um, increased feeling of ownership. Like you're right in terms of your identity being like you, you don't just play sorcery, right? You're a sorcery player. Mm, fab, you're a fab player, like, you're a magic player, and you're a Pokemon player. There's an ownership in it, and there's also this like almost responsibility. Like, I'm a part of this local community, and if I don't show up, no one gets to play. Mm-hmm. And I'm responsible. Like, And if someone new shows up, there's this, like... I think players, and I've said this a thousand times on the stream, but the number of communities right now that if players stopped actively organizing, even for fab, where mm-hmm. it's organized play and it's success... The amount of work being put in by players is insane. Yeah. And that's part of why Legend Story Studios has a certain amount of, uh, owes a certain amount of communication or scheduling because if not, you're making it way harder for those players to do that thing. Mm-hmm. Like schedule, like Destiny. That was even, you know, we were a little more proactive, a lot more proactive with our event scheduling and promotion and community building and stuff. And we, we tried to take that burden from players. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you don't tell us something's releasing until two weeks beforehand, it's impossible. Yeah. We can't get it on the calendar. People can't plan for it. Like, we just can't. So, mm-hmm. the, in terms of, like, what it, should they be doing? But I, I think there's this, uh, there's a lot of hidden little truths that are known. But it's like, if players weren't actively participating in this, mm-hmm. uh, which you don't need for a movie, right? Right. It's like right. people talk about it because it's, it's a, you know, it's what's going on and people are excited about it. They saw it that weekend or whatever. Like, if, like nobody can watch the movie unless a hundred people showed up to the theater. Yeah. Now that would get interesting. Why don't we do that? That'd be a hilarious idea for well, us. That's, yeah, because theaters aren't that's are a doing little well. Bit like, <laughs> anyway, so. Dune, but it, where it's like everyone goes see the first one so they can make a second one. Yeah. And go second one, second. So there's a little bit of that. It's, it I feels, think you're right. As you see more of the business being outsourced to individuals consumers the the communication with the consumer i think must increase has to increase well it's also like inherently outside of, engaging of, me, the chat, of me just going to watch a movie to and I, I i definitely do that right i'm trying to watch movie movies from studios or directors or you go to watch movies oh yeah what is the 80s like you know when dune came out i went to i gotta see ghost i dune. did actually as well but like there's a that's it that's the end of it I went and saw Dune. Mm-hmm. I supported the effort. Yeah, great. Please make more. Mm-hmm. With sorcery or any expandable card game, it's just different. It's, it's so like a different. different level of support that's required from you as part of this thing, which is part of what's so appealing about it. There is this community that you're a part of, and you are a part of something bigger, and you mm-hmm. do get to contribute. But yeah, so because in in. This is the the heart of the the meta game because this isn't necessarily true for the cooperatives. It's because the movie gets better the more people that are watching it for a, mm-hmm. for a collectible game. Mm-hmm. Like it's not really- just that the next set gets made; it's that this set is more fun if a hundred people are building decks instead of two. Hundred percent. And that's not true for movies and TV shows, right? It might mean the next thing gets made, but it doesn't increase your enjoyment of the current episode. Yeah, it literally, just outside the two to four people I might want to talk to about this movie or this TV show. I don't need a thousand people on Reddit telling me mm-hmm. their opinions on Last Jedi. Right. right. But you'll get it. I will get it. <laughs> you will get it whether you want it or not, Zach. Yeah. Russell House says, I think FFT has been doing a great job with communication when it comes to SWU, which I have understood stands for Star Wars Unlimited. It does. Swoo. Uh, yeah, they impressively, and to their credit, learned a lot in yeah. the past decade and it's a half. And they, everything they did wrong with Destiny, they seem to not be doing wrong with Unlimited. So hats off to them for doing that. Dobby's saying, 100% agree. They're still cagey about announcing a reprint, but as discussed, things can go wrong and announcing early can backfire. So you got to be careful. Jeff, Paul, my old buddy from Belgium, arg late to the Monday party. I could hear that in your voice, Jasper. I'm glad you're here nonetheless. Uh, tweak 87, good comments back here. Something has to be said about consumers self-regulating expectations and not letting their hopes overhype past reality. What's the role of the consumer in uh, relaxing? 
<laughs> well, I, I think that's uh, one thing I really appreciate about the source you experience. From the outset, they just kind of forced the issue. Well, that doesn't mean people are relaxing, dude. Have you been? Th- have you been in the sorcery uh, yeah. discourse? <laughs> the, the loud people are always loud. Like yeah. that's another thing I wanted to mention too. No matter w- in the the reception to the sorcery video that went up about the reprint was notably positive. But the internet, one of the unfortunate realities in social media, you guys were mentioning that earlier. The problems is it does not matter what you do, someone is going to be upset, mm-hmm. and they're going to talk about it, and like it just. Because people used to be upset, and then they would be like, I'm upset, and then that was the end of it. They would move on. And then they would like, yeah. go outside and you know, smell a flower or whatever. But now, they don't do that. if you're upset, that's something now that is content that you can make. Yep. And so... Well, and you know, the most uh, viewable content is going to be short and very far extreme one direction or another. This is yep. the greatest movie of all time. This is the worst movie of all time. And here's why it's garbage. And this director should never make a movie again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, even sorcery, as small as it is... The Discord communities around that are big enough that no matter what you do, someone, some percentage of those people, if it, if you made 90% of people very happy, yeah. that would be awesome. Be considered a huge but one. But 10% might also be very frustrated, and they will always be talking. And it might uh, be different 10% every time. Oh, they're so that's, loud. That's the same with, like, the... I was talking about retailers who didn't care and then suddenly were complaining. That's not all retailers, right? Um, but the reality is, no matter what you do, some amount of retailers are going to be upset. Mm-hmm. There's no, you print too much, the price is cheap, I'm not going to buy the next set. Like, mm-hmm. whatever. Idiots. You, you print too little, I can't get any product. Like, Idiots. I can't sell it. Idiots. <laughs> it's like, what do you want me to do? Print the perfect amount on no knowledge? Well, yeah. And yeah. then send it through a system that doesn't work. <laughs> it, but it works suddenly. <laughs> Nail it. Just <laughs> nailed it. Okay. I'm going to get to... You got a lot of the good ones off the top. And I think the rest of them are having them down there. Down there. Yeah, take it. Yeah, that's where we are. We're dadding it up. Cheers to that. Uh, I didn't Andrew do you say something? Uh, so there was a, actually yeah, there was a great question from Floating Skull. Let me turn my mic on. The Floating Skull. Andrew said the only thing he he would not be comfortable revealing uh, is precisely how much everything costs for multiple reasons, but that's pretty much it. What are those reasons? There's a lot. Well, I mean, I think I think there's. I can think of a few immediately, which is if I'm working with a manufacturer and they give me a certain price based on what's going on, ah. and I reveal that information, then that's something that my partner, who I work with, may not want to be public. And so you're going to keep that yeah. in the same way that like when people are working with us or uh, down the chain, right? So it's there's a level of propriety. Yeah, a lot of the weird communication stuff in this industry and forever is like a desire to protect the partner. Yeah. And sometimes that's correct and sometimes that's misguided. Like we were talking about earlier, sometimes it'd be better to say, hey, no, these guys are the problems. Yeah. But then you start a whole dominoes set of falling that you might not have. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, yet. let's say you're using a factory and they're the thing that screwed it up. They printed something wrong and now you have to reprint it. Now you're waiting. But they're the your factory. It's like, but they're your factory. So like, are you going to throw them out of the bus? You know what? I, is a real problem is all these CEOs getting paid too much? I know ours is. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> tell me more about that. Yeah, what is what is that vehicle? By the way, I didn't even see. Is it a Honda? It's a Toyota Crown. Ooh. What is that? Is that a fancy one? Uh, it's not oh, that fancy. It's a Toyota. Hold on, hold on. Let me. What, is it new or is it used? It's new. So, car. Let <laughs> <laughs> him go. The car market is crazy right now. Check this out. I, I got an MBA in finance, right, from my college days a long time ago. That's actually reasonable for cars these days. The, 35, 40 grand? Yeah. The, Isn't that so sad? I used to not think I should spend more than $5,000 on a car. Well, I spent... And that used to be possible. I spent 7000 on a car in 2011 and drove it for 13 years. I so I think... Uh, so <laughs> I started looking. I love Toyota. That's a, that's a longer story. Dude, they call it the world's greatest luxury car on the drive. So here's the thing. Dude, Jonathan, we have to do something about the CEO page. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, yeah. Dealer yeah. Tag. <laughs> that, uh, that one car he bought across 17 years is, is a sign <laughs> that things have been too good. He's got a yeah. golden parachute over here. Yeah, yeah. Well, just making up for that first decade of <laughs> negative pay. Uh, zero. Uh, zero so tell uh, me about the crown. In. What is this Anyways. About? Um, so I started looking at uh, Camrys because that's what I drove forever and it's love good, Toyota. It's a good looking car. You know, having a kid, safety, etc. Um, and as I was looking, like 
forever the the knowledge the the common working knowledge was you buy a three to five year old car. Mm -hmm. It's like the best time to buy because a lot of the depreciation has happened and it depreciates a lot slower after that point. Um, so I started there, but then the, the difference between a three, four year old Camry and a brand new one was minuscule. Yeah. It's like crazy. Mm -hmm. So then I was looking at Camrys and then I stumbled on a video cause I was looking at three to four years old. So I was looking at the like 2020, 2019 Camrys. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, last year was the first year they put out the crown which is what I ended up with. But there was a video that was comparing that in a Camry. Nice. Toyota also owns a company called Lexus. Um, I did not know that. <clears throat> really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same, same. That's their luxury brand. So uh, the Crown is basically like uh, somewhere between a sedan, four-door car, and an SUV. Mm -hmm. Kind of. I'm so, looking at it right now. Yeah, yeah. So it just like sits higher. It's got bigger wheels. Um, and it wasn't that much more expensive than a Camry, but it has a lot of the features that like Lexus has, both in terms of safety and just like technology and stuff. Um, so that's what I ended up buying. But it's it's mm. incredible. <laughs> you get you get forty one on highway, forty one yeah. miles per gallon. Yep. And it's not. Is it a hybrid? It is a hybrid. Heck yeah. Yeah. Dude, the dislikes from this review are oddball styling. So that fits. My one of my favorite the shape and look of the car, like the front particularly, I love. It's not sporty, and it has mediocre acceleration with base engine. Yeah, I did not care. Yeah. So <laughs> You're we, dadding around now, we, man. Yeah, we went and test drove Camrys, <laughs> and then test drove that immediately after. And I was like, is it worth, you know, five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 more for this car? And got in, and like five seconds in, I was like, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's un unbelievable. Cool. Uh, but it sets up higher, and the wheels are bigger, and it's four-wheel dri all, all drive. It is all way. You can come visit me finally. That's what I know. I needed to be able to get to your house. So here we go. <laughs> but that was another thing for us that was pretty high priority because my wife's vehicle is too doesn't have four-wheel drive. And so again, if it's gonna be icy and you're gonna have a kid, like you're starting to do different math. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I just handle it's like so smooth. And I've been driving two thousand two Camry, so Yeah. It's you could get insane. in a you can get in a bass boat and it would feel smooth. It is crazy. It's so quiet <laughs> and it's so just like yeah, it's just very, very, it's, it's awesome. It's amazing. The tires are really important, by the way, if you're actually looking for, like, traction, et cetera. The, it's, like, the number one thing. Dude. Tires. Yeah. <laughs> tires. See, I got the the new Tacoma I got is a 2014. You have to go back, like, 10 years to start seeing, actually, a reasonable price drop for what you're doing. But you have to. You also have to know what you're doing. You can get bamboozled back there. Yeah. Uh, Alex Becker saying he best. You can guess the color. Guess the color. Let me, I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Don't tell him. You basically have two options. I, I think there's multiple. I, there were three colors I was actually down to. Taylor said all games are MMOs now, so even something like Call of Duty is live service. Are they calling them live service games? What does yeah, that mean? Yeah, they call them live service games. What does that mean? That means that you can't play them by yourself. I don't know. I'm way out of the, You can't play them by yourself? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like you have to be online to play them. And ah. Then you have to you have like pay a sub subscription fee. It's like uh, what Adobe does. Where Oh, hey, my camera. Adobe? Adobe. Does uh, <laughs> with their stuff where you're, just, you're buying a normal program, but instead of buying it, you have to rent it. From you're it renting for it for life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I That's think a lot of games are doing that because they get more money. Good move. Uh, Alex Becker guessing black. It's actually white, but it does have black. Uh, I don't even know stuff on it. Kind of looks like a stormtrooper. I told my wife that, and she was she was like, "I don't like the car anymore." <laughs> Disappointed. But the reason is white is infinitely easier to keep clean. Than black. Mm -hmm. I've heard that black vehicles are very difficult to keep clean. Steve told me that. He said, "Don't get don't get a black truck." And yeah, I didn't care. Yeah, it, everything's hard. To it keep was clean. whatever was cheap when enough. Your and, made of dust. So yeah, that like yeah, the definitely. there's a uh, whatever you call the front of the car. It's not a fender. It's like the the grill, kind of the grill. Anyways, Bumper. It's it's black, and you can see why black is black. Just shows all like any sort of dust or like it rained immediately the next day that after I bought it. And like, there's just spots on it and stuff. Hmm. Like black is impossibly hard to keep clean. That's interesting. Totally random saying, I don't know if this is actually true. It's a good way to start. That's how we start every live stream. <laughs> but it's generally been feeling like video games have been releasing earlier than expected, while tabletop games seem to be delayed more often than not. Well, the, that's because you can release a video game before it's ready. And early you, just, access. you just click the file button. Dude, I learned about early access the other day. It's like, we're going to let you pay us early to get access to the beta and test it. Mm -hmm. Then we'll release it. That's, That's pretty point. cool. Yeah, love that. But you also can release it as soon as it's done. Yeah, and tabletop, well, you don't need to move physical products, so like it's it's easy. Uh, it's a lot easier. When the you physical don't have thing is the problem. Limited copies of a real thing. Why don't we just make tabletop games digital? 
Done. Uh, can you bring that last comment back up? I, this is an important note. Totally Random Studio says, smashing the like button was the first thing I did when I got here. Oh, my god. Totally gosh. Random, you're the best. And if you're out there watching and you haven't done it yet, smash that like button. We uh, use uh, the, that way our kids can eat. We use the like button to determine how good of a job Jonathan is doing with the stream. That's okay, correct. so smash the like button so Jonathan's kid can eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. I already got a kid. Yeah. Tony he's Snyder hungry. saying, whoa, dig. Tony's Tony's like a, he's he's totally in the pocket of somebody yeah. that I would like. I do like him. I mean, I, I was going to say, haven't, haven't we met Tony? But like, no, like, but he's like one of these guys who's playing sorcerer. He's not going to, he's not going to say a peep about, <laughs> yeah, any, he's about anything. Enjoy it he's just and, enjoying and move game. on. Uh, look that! Look at that picture. He's he's definitely the guy that's going to just enjoy it and say nothing. Yeah, he hasn't said it. He, he's, he's having a good time. Barely talking to us. Um, and they can also patch video games, so that does help. Yeah, yeah. All right. See, look at me. I'm engaging with everybody. Uh, You're doing a great you got, job. You got Chris on there. I think with identity. Yes, I've got it. I think with identity, it's just the level of one's commitment slash immersion. It's difficult to be a passive sorcery player. It requires some level of passion, unlike watching a TV show. It's not yeah. just fed to you. You have to actively engage with yeah. it and get other people to engage with it, or you can't engage with it. It's really good. It's like really one of the few things <laughs> that's left like that. Like back in the day, if you wanted to listen to music, you had to play it. But still, like still, yeah, if you want to play a tabletop game, you have to have another person to play it with. You got to have yeah. another one. But you can well, listen to a record now or a CD. Or you can't just like sit down and hit a button. You have to like physically put a deck together. Mm -hmm. And you got to like mm -hmm. do all this stuff. Hey, Craig's saying, uh, dang, I'll be honest, I usually lurk, but I smashed the like button for Jonathan. Oh, my gosh, Craig. Craig, my man. Alex Becker, Death oh, no, Elise. the new TC tagline, buy our stuff so our kids can eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's What did you call it? Dad, uh, not dad, what was it? The Not competitive or casual, but it's dad Dad mode. Dad something. I don't even know something. what I said. It was very clever. Yeah. Torres 88 is saying, the house market also sucks right now. My wife and I are in the thick of it, and it sucks. Hey, let me tell you this, Torres. Here's a crazy story about how houses get built. This is weird. Yeah. So we obviously, we we I'm built a little, yeah, built a tiny house um, for, with cash because wow. it was very cheap, and that's why we did it. And we had to move out of our rent house, and we've been in there for three and a half years, and now we're actually building... Uh, what we think is going to be a real house uh, for real people. Like it has like a guest bedroom and room for a child to be and those kinds of things. And you have 12 months to build the thing and your, your, your interest rate, you pay only interest on what you, what money you use to build the thing. So like the foundation is poured. I pay the invoice for the foundation with the construction loan. And then that goes to my, my loan balance. And then I pay interest on whatever this loan balance is as things go in. So over the course of construction, that loan balance gets higher and then your interest payments get higher, but you're only paying interest. You're not paying anything on the principal. And that rate uh, gets locked in at the beginning of the construction loan. Like it's not great right now. Well, it's great in the history of the states, but it's not great compared to like the 0.8% it used to be. So at the end of that 12 month period, once the house is built, you refinance that loan into a 30 year mortgage and you have no idea what the interest rate is going to be when that happens. Oh, so it's just whatever it is when, the, when yeah. the ball stops rolling. So what's weird about it is like if you could afford a certain house size at a 6% interest rate and maybe you start there, if it's 8% by the time that your house is done, you maybe can't even pay it. And if you can't pay it because you're no longer qualified because the financials don't work for an 8% at this rate from the bank, they just repossess the house. You spend all that time and money building it, and it's like, oops. And they just take it. Dang. Yoink. So if the interest rate, like, it's yeah. cold. If the interest rate got up to like 10%, we'd be like. So like the people probably got wrecked by the pandemic then. Everybody got wrecked, and that's like housing crash, the inflated values, that kind of stuff. It, it all oh, what is a bad. bummer. And but you can't get that money back, obviously. That you put in. No, that's not how the system works. No, they get the house. They get the house and all the money. And the, and they got the money. Wow. They, so you're just you're, you're watching the interest rates like a hawk, not man. able to do anything. Even though there's nothing it. I can do about it. That's been my that's been my greatest quality of life improvement is to stop watching things I can't do anything about. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, it's great whenever you have a pending. I don't know how much a monthly payment on my house is going to cost with a child on the way. That's, That's a, we call that a lot of uh, stability. Mm -hmm. So smash that like button, <laughs> so sma so smash that Meanwhile, like button, buy, product, and buy, and buy everything. I got exceptionally lucky in my house. Yes, you did. Just pff, crazy. Yeah. Also, you're mentioning, uh, you know, my overpayment. I, I meant to mention this. 
Uh, you know, I could see it really you know had an impact. You know Somebody's a little guilty. No, you know what's crazy? Like. Uh, the vast majority of that purchase was fueled by uh, selling a lot of fab cards. <laughs> As I'm retiring, I kept wow. I, that is dad mode. I, I kept my rune blade and guardian stuff, uh-huh. and my cold golds and all that. But I guess I'm never playing Bolton again. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, yeah. And with Zach's cashing out, I will never uh, yeah. be playing Flesh but and Blood it, again. As well. we, we talk about all the time with TCGs. That is uh, notable. <laughs> is like unlike every LCG I've ever played. They they can be more expensive to collect, of course, but they tend to hold value mm-hmm. and you it may not be as much as you paid for it maybe more but like i had crazy i mean it's weird stuff like well we were like super early yeah yeah like it was like you know cold foil mage master boots it's like randomly several hundred dollars now it's like mm-hmm. that was a common cold foil back then yeah it's like i don't know this is whatever and you had some real stuff because you were like crazy about it you were nuts <laughs> you were crazy about it man yeah i was i uh, i was i had uh, there's a lot of really just crazy stuff that I had for sure. Live service means software as a service. Ugh. Gross. Mm-hmm. So monthly payment basically. Um let's get to the news. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do we got hold there. on, I do have to run to the bathroom because we've been talking for like six years. <laughs> it's because we go off for a week and then it's just like well, there's been a lot of big news today. Yeah. I went to Zach's house and talked to him yesterday. Gross. Yeah, weird. <laughs> Actually engaging with Steven in a personal way. I don't know. Yeah, too much for me. Hi, I'm on the other side now. I was over there a second ago, just <laughs> filling in. What's going on, dog? Man, nothing. How's uh? Would you come to a conclusion on um, communication? No, I don't think there's a conclusion. I think that every game, every publisher, every scenario is very different. Um, also, the medium, because mm-hmm. even when you were talking about like having stuff on uh, grocery store shelves, they the the companies pay the grocery store a fee to shelve their product. At least that's how it was back when LeVar Burton told me about it. Crazy. Yeah. Which is an interesting concept potentially in tabletop, but like then you would just have magic to people that could the big three anyway. Yeah. They're just doing it through a more circuitous route. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also I imagine Target's the same way. It it's it's sort of like uh the depending on who's behind who you have on your team and who you are, like some people could not go on a video or a live stream. Right, right. Like uh, right. the source of video, Simon, he's very good at talking. Yeah. So you might Most not have CEOs that person. are not good at talking, by the way. <laughs> yeah, ours included. <laughs> I mean, yeah. well, you start yeah, out Joker. like that, right? Oh, like, yeah, totally. I tell everybody else I work with, like if it's a CEO, it's like, look, because you have so much on your head, like say this perfectly, don't say mm-hmm. this. You're keeping all your you know partners safe and all this stuff. That, like you, it's okay if people know, but if you say it in the wrong way, it's going to get spun out of control and you see it all right. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah, I'm still learning. I, I think the... A lot of times, uh, it depends on the level of company and stuff. You know, like corporate CEOs are a different breed. But for us, at least, and I think a lot of smaller companies, um, like I, I never would have picked being on camera. Right. At eighteen. It says that all the time on camera. <laughs> yeah, but like, <laughs> I I wouldn't have even like going to a tournament and like people, any number of people already there knowing who you are. Um, as an introvert and someone that was very shy growing up, that's like. That's terrifying. I'm I'm happy, I'm comfortable with it now. But you made it. Uh, you're talking about communication. So I was saying, like, part of this is also who's on the team and the capabilities you have. Where, like, I think Simon with sorcery is very good at talking. Not every publisher or team has that benefit, and not every designer or founder has that benefit. I think something else you can learn from Simon, and this can be taken a number of different ways. But he's also like. He's very direct, and he is willing to push back against yeah. sentiments that are being like, "Well, you're wrong," or you didn't. And it's like, "No, we're not." Yeah. Like well, you know, the, there's that element of it too that I think can be really beneficial. I think sorcery not just be a punching bag. Eric's curiosa that's in the DNA. Like the whole concept of the game is, in spite of common wisdom, yeah, or common knowledge, common, yeah, what common. Would you call that? There's a wisdom version of that. Yeah, um, where they, you know, we're going to do one set a year. We're going to hand paint it art. It's like yeah. everyone in the world, even now after they're successful, it's like we got to do three sets a year. Like you just can't survive on Well, the loud year. percentage at least. Yeah, is, so they, yeah. they have to have, it's part of their cultural DNA. To, and I think that's that comes from a place of we have a very clear vision of what we want to create and we're going to create it and we hope people enjoy it instead of the spreadsheet says we should do this. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can you can feel that difference. All right, over the news. Let's do it. We're gonna run through it. That was a that was a heck of a uh, discussion. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, Escape G saying, "Were you guys looking at the Warlords TCG?" Yes, I love that game. <laughs> I'll let Mark and you figure that one out. But yeah, of course, uh, no no doubt. Uh, they're launching the Kickstarter next week, right? Mm-hmm. For those who, what's, why are you looking away? Oh, check this out. This is a fun. I thought you were trying to like hide and be sheepish about it. Mm. Oh, that's cool. It, you know what's cool about this? It looks like that old box that launched the company. Mm. The box that launched the company. Uh oh. This, this is some stuff from. Uh, what they give us this at Gen Con? Uh huh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, we've got our eyes on. Over to the new conventional wisdom. There it is. Over to the news. Uh, first up, Alpha Clash. They launched a Kickstarter for the comic book, which funded very quickly. Seems to be doing very well. Twerk the United or whatever. <laughs> Twerk. Uh, what is it? Twerk the. Uh, is it Torque Therapy? Torque, Torque therapy. therapy. Yeah. Torque Therapy. Torque Therapy. Great name. Is um, Wade King drawing that? I don't know. There's a bunch of guys it's doing alter- alternate so. coverage. It looks great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a normal comic book thing to have like. Let's look at all covers for the for the same issue, but um, it, even they need to make th- things. Cool this is part of the. I mean, it, Alpha Clash is on doing some different stuff, man. It's really cool to see. There, they did a novel, they did a Kickstarter for the novel, mm-hmm. um, and they're really trying to lay down this indie superhero uh, IP slash uh, universe. And obviously, comic books should be a part of that if they're going to do it. Thirty grand of the thousand. That they needed, but they probably needed like 10, 15, really. I mean, I based on what they've shown so far, I think they are ready to go. So mm-hmm. like with their first Kickstarter, um, like interestingly, the first time I engaged with it, they focused really heavily on the collectability of the game, which made me kind of bounce off of it. It wasn't mm-hmm. until later in person talking with Ridge and learning a little bit more about what they had going on that it started to, to fire for me. But um, they delivered the Kickstarter for the TCG like six months after it finished because they were ready to hit print as soon as it was done. Yeah. So I assume with the comic book it's similar. Like they've already invest they believe in this, they've already invested in it. They're ready to hit print. So they they maybe would have just done it even at a thousand dollars of funding uh immediately. But that's really cool to see. Let me read you this. After the clash thrusts readers into the turbulent aftermath of the awakening novel, readers will follow the infamous Oliver Simmons, known as Torque, on a riveting quest for vengeance across thirty-eight vividly illustrated pages. Delve into Torque's journey as he navigates the underworld, confronts his inner demons, and clashes with the formidable alpha hunters in a pulse-pounding saga of retribution. You can expect a gripping blend of originality, humor, and breathtaking visuals, crafting an immersive experience. It'll spotlight cherished characters like Warcry, Torque, Shadowlight, Weber, and Paul. It introduces a dynamic newcomer hailing from the Philippines, Cherry Bomb. I hear that song in my head instantly. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. Suitable for audience age 13 plus, AG Light and the Rising Empire Studios team present another thrilling adventure, complemented by stunning interior artwork from the talented Kyle Petchock, lettering by Reed Hinkley Barnes, and five different cover art variants to collect. Nice. That's yeah, really cool. Just fundies, man. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I assume not Wade. But Wade's probably knee deep in That's true. card art. He's got stuff. In there. Yeah, he's got some stuff. All, all this stuff looks good, dude. Yeah, uh, that looks great. So they got the comic book going on now. Mm-hmm. They have spoiler season for the next set, which is coming out uh, in late May. Um, and we're doing a, doing a big recap. Big recap, spoiler recap, May third. I think we may be able to sneak it in after you get back from Vegas, so you can have some on hand. Experience. I hope so. Great. Yeah, yeah. Cause, so Vegas is uh, the weekend of April 28th. That's their first big Clash Ground event, um, big tournament that uh, out at the Level Up Expo. And on Saturday, the world premiere sealed, I think, of the next set, um, which would be really cool. And Sunday is the constructed event. <clears throat> so it's been funny Ooh. preparing for that event because there's not a meta. Like, there's no other big tournaments. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's the best time. And it's like trying to build a gauntlet to test against. It's like... You got to figure out all the decks, and then the deck to beat all the decks. That's a lot. Yeah, but That's fortunately for decks. me, yeah, I don't. Uh, I've got Michael Hamilton and Ian on my side. You got Hamilton and huh? Michael Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> it's like bringing in the I, ringer, I, dude. I would, I would put Hamilton at like no pressure, Michael. Um, I don't know, fifty-six percent chance to win the tournament. Where does he scale? Uh, 
on the Zwerno meter, where is he? Ten is, or five is Jeremy Zwerno level. Five. What? What's the scale? A five is Jeremy Zwerno level. Four would be not quite as good as Jeremy Zwerno. One would be like me, and then ten would be like would beat Zwerno every time. So he reminds me a lot of Zwerno. Zwerno is like a different level of mathematical calculation. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a lot of that, but he, it's, it's less, I don't even know how to explain it. It's less in that lane. It is, in, it is that direction, but there's a, uh, he's the best player I've ever seen at keeping his eye on the macro strategy of a game mm -hmm. as is happening. So even if he's never tested the matchup, he'll have his deck and you'll get into the first turn. And like, he can assess, he can, he can actually form a strategy and not just play moment to moment. Like based on what I've seen, this is what this deck's probably trying to do, and now here's what I should and do my differently. Way, my way to win is probably this strategy. That's so good. And building to it. And he does so that. good. And I, I pointed that out to him in, in our fab testing, where it's like getting the macro overview from you during a game and or a draft of a set or whatever it is, or a meta, I don't think he understands how naturally he comes by that. Yeah, that's so awesome. And, and his ability to communicate it. That's so awesome. Is <laughs> That's <laughs> what would take me to the next level in yeah. this hobby. Yeah, well, uh, just put Hamilton on your team and it's 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 crazy. Like yeah. even even if, like when we're testing a certain matchup, it's like, can you explain to me your macro level strategy mm -hmm. in this matchup so I understand it? And then can you explain to me what you think mine should be? So, so incredible. That'd be so helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Like I told you about the the video of the uh, chess uh, chess player and her mom, who's a grandmaster, and she's like an aspiring grandmaster and her mom's grandmaster, and they'll play out the same game against a computer, and they'll see where they made different moves and why. And she always says that her mom is always thinking about position, and she's always thinking about tactics. Mm. Yeah. And it's like the exact same thing. Her mom's setting up a long-term board that isn't necessarily this. It's not because this is the great move right now that puts pressure on that piece. It's that I want this bishop to cover this rank because yeah. I know that over the long term of the game, it's going to be to my benefit. That's exactly it. It's so good. Yeah, and ah, that's what makes chess players so good. Too. Good <laughs> chess players are like that as well. Yeah. So we're testing for that event. I'm excited to see how that goes. Uh, it's been cool to dive into a game, a new game, and a wide open meta. And it also has highlighted for me that in sorcery, like preparing for sorcery con and playing in the sorcery event. Um, honestly, how mathy Fab is, yeah, which is it's Fab's greatest strength, and uh, in some ways, its greatest weakness. Right? It's always that way. Like you're you're min maxing on the variable, so here's your max. It's also your you're, you're not min. putting points on that the opposite side of that. But just how quickly in both of those games, like a sorcery, a good example of that would be like an incinerate. Sometimes that's I trade one card for one card. Sometimes that's I trade one card for eight cards. Mm -hmm. So I can't look at that and say, what's the value of this card? Yeah. And Fab, spoiler happens, what's the value of this card? Mm -hmm. Straight up. Um, so Alpha Clash is the same. We're, we're kind of going through all these cards. We, we'll do a session, testing decks, and then we go through all the cards. And then it's like, well, you're trying to construct in this situation that seems pretty common, this would be worth what? Yeah. But it's not always worth that. Sometimes it's not even playable. It's and then just, it's a resource. Yeah, and it's like, oh, <laughs> wait a second. So the range on value here is immense. Yeah, and it it it's it's fun to be playing that again. Yeah, that that's I think that's when when these kinds of games are for some groups of people like me at their best, because it just gives you a lot of variation in skill to to basically there's not as obvious a winner every time mm -hmm. because sometimes. The very skilled player puts themselves in a situation that is the right situation to put yourself in, but the other guy, me or Jonathan, who has dodge roll in their deck for no reason, <laughs> that card suddenly is worth a million cards of yeah. value, and then you're like, ah, and you won one of ten games. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's nice yeah. to be in that space. So, uh, other news for Alf Clash, uh, they have made the decision that their iconic art cards are now playable, mm -hmm. uh, which these are the uh, full art cards that have no text so sometimes just have a signature yep and these are like the box toppers that we put in with, mm -hmm. or the case toppers that we put into random subscriber because normally a case is 12. yeah bryce yeah yeah, yeah bring it on i'll take it okay 
Yeah. Oh, this. Thank you so much. You can get on camera. Thank you. Right? Yes, can you Cheers. Hey, okay. Bryce is back, UBS, baby. UBS game. Yep. Yeah, I good. like that shirt. Awesome. Yeah, it looks it's nice. Nice shirt. Black hat. Got a good look to you. Um. So, what was I? Oh, the iconic art card. So, uh, case of Alpha Clash that one and two is twelve boxes, and it comes with a case topper. There's these beautiful full art cards, um, and you can read about it on the website. But you can play it. You just have to have it's a copy a with the text available uh, for your opponent to read <laughs> that they can see, which I think is really cool. Yeah, that's an easy way to do I it. I think right? that was a, a cool thing for them to do. Hey, hey, I want to get you worked up a little bit because this is a this is a great. Alejandro Gonzalez Lara says, "I'm sorry, Jared Kelsey. Jared, I, I've seen oh. Jared in the news all the time in our uh, in our chat." Maybe a publisher should send marketing materials and demo decks to retailers to try to educate them about how this game works and what you as a publisher will be doing to build an audience. Do you want me to get you a bulk box for you? No, see, this is where this is where I think my shoes coming on the table. You, you have to have very it, there's a there's a different perspective. There's a, a few different perspectives on what the role of the local retailer is, and I think I think we've always thought that. If the publisher is asking the local re or saying to the local retailer, "Here's how I'm going to generate sales for you," mm -hmm. then they don't need the retailer. But if the retailer is saying to the publisher, "Here's how I'm going to generate sales for you," because I'm going to educate the audience, I'm going to do the marketing for you, I'm going to be the center of your community, I'm going to reach out to my customers and tell them that I think your game is worth buying, then that to me feels like actually what retail is supposed to be doing. But the moment the publisher is like. All you have to do is buy it and sell it. Then they can do that online. Mm -hmm. like, that's the whole game. They can do well, that online. It's important on that to add to that. The way various publishers view and or plan to utilize local retail is dramatically different. Yeah. Specifically, as an example, Fab's whole strategy is around local retail mm -hmm. being a place where you can play and compete at this game. Not necessarily buy, which is funny. Yeah. Now, presumably. It would make sense that they would want you to buy it there. In the current um, model of LGSs, they would need to have product to sell, yes. Yeah, but their their view would be dramatically different than someone like Earthborn, which mm -hmm. is, I I would assume, and, and Andrew, if you're out there, you don't let me put words in your mouth, but the reality of like a cooperative, expandable game that comes out once every year or two with something, probably the most valuable thing they get at retail is just being on the shelf and awareness from people that would otherwise never see it, kind of like a board game. A lot of people play cooperative games to play at home. They have the two or three people they're going to play mm -hmm. with, or they're playing solo. It's a very different kind of experience that they what they need retail for is very different than Fab, if but at yeah, all. All these retailers are selling very different kinds of products, right? And different retailers different will specialize stores, in different yeah. sort of things. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Alpha Clash. That was the that was the end of that. Apparently, free booster box for every competitor at the did Vegas event. Did you see that? I did not see that, but that's What's crazy. What's happening? They're giving a booster box to everybody? Everybody in Vegas who plays a constructed. Oh, I thought you were going to say everybody in Vegas. It's like, now that's <laughs> a strategy. <laughs> yeah, ever, you come to level up, you get a booster box. Boom. Roasted. <laughs> just go down to MGM and just start passing them out? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you want... <laughs> Are you going to uh, gamble when you're there? Oh, I'm just going to Vegas where you're already gambling. We'll see mm -hmm. how the experience goes. Are you going to go to that bar that we went to that was like I'm, the local bar with the so, like the beer and the and the low stakes craps table? Uh, Ellis Island? Was it Ellis? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> $5 craps table. That's the best. I'll play 30 bucks for five hours and drink three old fashions and call it a day. Yeah. The, my favorite thing about craps is it's... Everyone at the table wins and loses together. Yeah. So when you get 12 people together, winning or it doesn't matter if you win or lose, actually. It's the shared winning or losing. Oh, uh, yeah, I like that. Like, yeah, we all had a bad run, right? We all also boomer busted. And that was one of the greatest experiences of my life. Was, I wasn't making money on that. That should never have But happened. Robert, Matt's friend, made a lot of money on me rolling boomer It was bust. so and, crazy. Yeah, talking about miracles. Anyways, um, probably. But I'm a very... I, I... It's sort of like competing at card games like i understand i can't resist going all in same here it's like i'm very risk not what's the opposite of risk adverse risk happy like i'm i'm, I'm not afraid of risk yeah he's risk i also inclined i like to to win it's kind of scary I like to compete <laughs> so like i have to have strong restrictions on myself going to somewhere like vegas yeah it's like you you cannot there's a 0% chance I ever go to an ATM in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I'm going with X amount of cash that I'm going to probably not come home with. And that's it. Like you, I, I, And you're not taking the title to that new crown. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like Batman's killing rule. It's like there's a line. I'm just not 
That's a good line. Not going to cross. Yeah, because once um, online gets crossed, all hell breaks But yeah, sense. for me, you know, it's like 20, 30 bucks, and it's like whatever. Yeah. And if I walk away with a grand, cool. That would be awesome. Yeah. I had a slot machine once, and it was great. And then I spent it all on steak. Yeah, I thought you said I had a slot machine. I, I hit one, yeah. It's <laughs> like suddenly a hundred, couple hundred dollars. Sweet. What's more, next? More news. Arkham Horror. Uh, Arkham Ooh. lore book available mid-April from FFG. Did you see that? I did not. This there's is news a, to me. There's a lore book. Like yeah, a World of Android kind of thing. Welcome to Arkham, an illustrated guide for visitors to the historic town of Arkham, Massachusetts, and environs including Dunwich, Innsmouth, and Kingsport. That's yeah. the highfalutin long name. Got you. 176 pages contain descriptions of popular locations in the Arkham mythos, as well as hints to the original book owner's mysterious fate. That was a cool thing they did, where it's like, this is... There's we a didn't mystery write to be this. solved. We found this, and mm-hmm. we don't know how it ended up where it ended up. But by reading it, you can kind of figure it out. Lovecraftian, some would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it looks a lot like World of Earthborn. It's like that style. <sighs> I wonder if they were inspired. I don't know. It, was that maybe that project was spinning? Could have been spinning for years, man. That kind of stuff could take yeah. forever. The uh, Arkham Arkham's one of the greatest card games of all time. Yeah. That 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 game is cooking. Yeah. Period. Yeah. All right. That, that's it for Arkham. Over to Ashes. Have a ton of previews for Siege of Lords Wall. Yeah. So this is the, this is gonna be a fun. Is uh, this like the Odette Demona one? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's uh there's a couple of cards that are notable. Can you show that mount? Yeah, I can. Can I? Are you a mountain guy? It depends. Are they dragons or horses? Yes. Got the... They're dragons. Oh, yes, I'm a mountain guy. Uh, is there the dragon one around? Isn't oh, there yeah. a dragon? There's a dragon mount. Dragon mm-hmm. mount. Let me see. Do you know the name of it other than dragon mount? Uh, I'm going to guess silver shining stag mount or shining stag mount. Those would be horses, right? Maybe That's right. I, I could have sworn I saw somebody uh, on a dragon. Hetra herder. Somebody's on a dragon, right? Did I just make that up? I, drew no, I, saw, I saw what you saw, but I don't know if it's a mount. What about a silver paladin? Or a glory aspirant. Start popping them, dude. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll get there. It was the most recent preview. It was number four. All right. I had that stuff. Number three. Tell the random saying Demona has a dragon. Demona has a dragon. Mm, yeah. Demona and Odette are two of my favorite Phoenix born as well. So, yeah. We like that. What We're going to have to play that one. What is it out. about? What is it about? Shining dragons? stag mount. So that's, that's a stag, clearly. Yeah, well, that would follow. Looks great. Let me, let me when it comes into up. play, you may choose a divine die in your exhausted pool, resolve its dice power without paying its cost. We're seeing a lot of these effects. I'm super stoked that they went into the dice power stuff. Yeah, it makes sense. And then, obviously, when it's destroyed, I place any allies underneath it into the hand, and it's a 2 2. And we haven't uh, looked at what it gotcha, costs to sell. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Here you go. Barbie Dragons. Hey, first of all, let's see what it takes to get it up there. Summon that's Shining the, That's a Shining mount. Stag, yeah. Just okay. one, and you got to use the Divine, so then you exhaust it, you put it back in. Ah! A Divinity Mount? It looks awesome. Is that a Lightning Dragon? A divine Dragon. It's a signature, too. That's right, right, signature, right. dude. Three attack, three life, three recover. Lightning bre- Breath 1. When this unit is declared as an attacker, you may deal the damage to all units that target opposing opponent controls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Queen Rider. When this unit yep. is destroyed, place three wound tokens on your Phoenix Born. Welcome. So she's the one riding the dragon. Welcome to paradise, dude. Mm, Risk that's reward. Great. That's great. I love it. Two, uh-huh. two, I see you out there, Nick. And this is great. More dragons. Uh huh. <laughs> that's awesome. It looks incredible. I love the design of that card. Yeah. You can always just make it hurt you yeah. when it's removed. So I, I thought the playmats were one and done, but I'm starting to see things that might need to go <laughs> on a playmat. Uh, speaking of which, we're almost out of this. There's only a couple. I can't left. believe we still have. We only had yeah. a few of each. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone was like, oh, I guess they're not available anymore. They, well, we they had a couple. They probably saw this art and they were like, well, they're eventually going to have to put this <laughs> on a mat. So I guess I'll, I'll be waiting. Uh, so previews happening, uh, that means that it'll be shipping at some point in the not-so-distant future. Can you pull an Armor of Valor, John? Yes, I can. You'll really like this card. I had to get. I had to find out what the kids were saying. It's called AOV if you're an Ashes mm, player. Of. So after the dealt damage while guarding, or remember uh, Odette's ability? Mm-hmm. It does two to her, and yeah. it does it back, or does two, and then does their attack back. So you put on armor of valor, and are there multiple? I wonder if there's multiple copies. There's, I mean, it's got to be three copies, right? Is it three copies? It doesn't say you need. It's really. a signature card. It's but would you run three? I don't know if you run three, but you put three on there, and you can you can wall up a three attack thing and take no damage. We like it. I really like that. And you guard and you take no damage, which yeah. is sick. Like, that's just such a good design for that character. Yeah. It's also a side action, which is nice. 
Yeah. Yeah. They're really Whoa, wait, go, wait, go back, go back, go back. Oh. Ooh. I do like that, but go back. I want to see something. Wait a second. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It attaches and it permanently happens. Mm-hmm. I it's thought, forever. In my mind, it, I was like, I don't know if it's that good because it's just a one-time No, thing. dude, it's armor. That is insanity. <laughs> <laughs> that just went from yeah, zero to stonks <laughs> immediately. <laughs> That is crazy. Yeah, you play three of those and it's... And then you just guard and take... No, like, that is a devastatingly good effect. Yeah, use your ability, take no damage, guard. Yeah, excellent. Two thumbs up. But you got to put it on. <laughs> you can start with one, though. Take to the skies. That's how you get the dragon up. If your Phoenix Morn is exhausted, place a Divinity Mount Conjuration onto your battlefield. Okay, as a side action, hot dog bar. <laughs> 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 it used to be hot sauce bar, but hot dog bar, man. Wow. That's so good. Can you bring that divinity map back up real quick? Uh-huh. Ah, I'm not even good at ashes, but I know this is great. Hot dog bar. So side action basic, you get a 3-3 three, three with a recover 3 that when you attack does 1 to every... So you side action to put into play and you attack for it's 3. It's un- Everything unreal, takes one. actually, how good but that is. when at least play, you take 3 damage. When it's destroyed, notably. Ooh, even better. We'll yeah. find ways to bounce this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, man, that is, so you also have situations where you're like, side action this in and then upgrade it with something to protect it and make it big, like the massive Root armor or, or massive growth or something. Yeah, gr- gross. Goodness gracious, that is disgusting. I'm very excited about this. Fork lightning. Look at that. <laughs> What is that? Side action as well. Side With the divine eye. Choose two angel. target units and opponent controls. If you do deal one damage to each of them, so you th- you attack with the mount, do one everything, you chain fork lightning two other things, you kill two two health things. Yeah, I'm gonna like this character a lot. Yeah, this is crazy. this is just like direct damage nobody, aggro. Nobody asked for this. Yeah, and and she looks awesome. Nobody asked for this. It's like a warrior queen. Two uh-huh. thumbs up. Uh-huh. Two thumbs up. Awesome. Well, Ashes, so join the subscription if you want to get uh, the next release. Yeah, it is a PVE game and a PVP game. Both of them are great. And uh, if you subscribe, you help the game get made. So this is the PDP model. That's how it works. Oh, look at that. You got the box on there and everything. All Ashes subscribers that started in the pandemic when we launched this PDP subscription have created effectively the PDE mode of the game and four now releases as well as what Jericho and I think one other one, uh, Tristan and all of them before we got to the PDE side of things. Wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, I think so, it was. I think it was just the. Wasn't it just the time one? That was the final die that didn't. But exist what happened us. to me, like Tristan Darkwater? The <laughs> I think that was just an expansion. But what happened to me? I mean, you know what? <laughs> look at our release history. F- Bun. Funnily enough, I can just look because some big brain marketing guy built this into the website. Uh huh. But the big brain marketing, I did not count on people not using it. All right. So it's an upgrade kit, then break our fate, and then it was just. Pairs of expansions. Goran Rock Messenger, Queen of Lightning, mm-hmm. Artist of Dreams. So Tristan came out with uh, the Scythe. Brennan. Is that Brennan? No. That's, uh, I forget the name. Scholar of Ruin. You don't remember? Didn't you like that character a lot? I mean, I like it. Because it looks like you. Uh, wait, the, that was the joke we made at the time. Are you, are you backpedaling? Then, then? then Red Reigns came out. Yeah. And then Frostwild. But look at all those White. releases that the Ashes community essentially That's funded. It's crazy. Through PDP. This, this, these cards would not exist. Yeah, crazy. That's amazing. What's crazy is that this August we announced it coming back four years ago. Wow. Which I think I think now Ashes Reborn has a longer run than Ashes did. Dude, we should do something That's in August. Cool. I Let's think we do should do something. We should do something in August because school's out. Well, we'll probably both have one month olds. Yeah. So. So we can bring we them can, in like Simba we, style. You know what we should do? We should have no. We, Oh, uh, no? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, guess I mean, I don't know. Oh, have okay. you guys had the, are we going to have our kid pictures anywhere conversation? Pictures Some anywhere? Some people are like, I'm not posting pictures of my baby online or on the internet. Because there's this weird, like... Because then the AI will grab them. Well, I don't it's post like pictures of anything system. online, so I guess yeah, I'm... Yeah, but your I'm, wife does. Well, that I, I mean, I she not, can do whatever she wants. You honestly. are also on camera. You were just talking about having your baby on <laughs> the stream. <laughs> that's my not a picture. Was, that's, that's a series of We frames. can have a stream in which we... Um, have Swap champagne them. to celebrate the 40th anniversary of, and, uh, and the fact that hopefully we had two uh, healthy babies and everything went well. And, and we reveal our children to the world. Is it that? Is that the That'd thing that we're talking about? I don't know. If I can't remember. <laughs> one month olds, and just the fact that we're we'll probably not be streaming for a minute. Oh right. Presumably, but at some point we'll be streaming again, and it'll be around the time Ashes is four. So I'll hmm. let you guys figure that out. Maybe we'll come back to Ashes. Ashes in August. 
August <laughs> Ashes. August Ashes. Uh, that's that's what we got going on for Ashes. More previews to come, of course. Uh, moving over to Flesh and Blood, the TCG. Smash that like button. Yeah. There you go. Anyone subscribed? To YouTube? Sound off in the chat if you're subscribed to the Team Covenant channel. Uh, ProQuest season happening now. This is uh, for qualifying for ProQuest Amsterdam. Uh, we talked about my retirement already. Uh, can I? The notes asking if I can ex explain what Transcend does. I'm going to do my best. You Correct. know, Amsterdam used to be the place to go to get drugs. But then everybody started being the place to get drugs. <laughs> so, so it's then. not even special anymore. I mean, it's basically legal in Oklahoma. Mm hmm. When we went to Amsterdam in Europe, it was like, oh, it's the place you can smoke weed and, and eat brownies and stuff. Turns out uh, you can do that everywhere in Europe. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I so, bet you can still do it in Amsterdam, that's too. That's what everybody around me was doing, at and least. What you can also do is play fab. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's and July. If, <laughs> and if drugs weren't fun enough, you can play flesh and blood at the same time. Uh, pro quests are happening. I'm retiring. Transcend. So this is a new uh, keyword or ability in Fab. Uh, it's two-sided cards. Basically, when the card transcends, you flip it over, presumably in the sleeve. Or if you're like any Dromai player, Dromai also live in, hit Living Legend this weekend. Yeah, and they that. have the now weekly check. So not legal starting mm -hmm. now. Uh, but basically, a card transcends, it flips over, and it's a blue pitch special kind of energy. Um, a lot of hero abilities trigger off of that being pitched specifically, but it pitches and goes back into your deck like normal. Um, and a lot of these are like you can only have one copy in your deck. Does it pitch, and when you draw it again, does it is it the flipped it's version? The, it's the resource now. So it's not a forever So resource. you get a one-time... So you transform a card in your it, deck... It transcends. ...permanently so yep. to a special resource. That's yep. a cool idea. Yep. Uh, the flipping and, is always a little weird, but and that's cool. that's the whole thing. I presume people will have the alternate version over here so they play it like the and the art is insane on these things mm -hmm. and they yeah, have the marvel version this is celebrating the release in japan as well right that's right so, so the first set releasing in japan in japanese cool. the world premiere uh etc happened in may it's a, a whole I got thing. The stories too. do you happen and i know you don't know this but are they doing anything with like famous japanese artists for this yes i thought they might be yeah, this guy, they have, he has a whole series. Stir the pot. That's kind of a Miyazaki it level thing. Yeah, it's a whole vibe. Who's the artist on that? Can you see that? Uh, no, it's in Japanese. Can you say it? Uh, no, actually, because it's in kanji. Hiro Suda. I'll do it. How <laughs> close and personal. Nailed it. Uh, Danny, good night. Asking, what am I going to miss most about playing Fab? Uh, uh, I think there's there's nothing I've experienced. That is on the same level as the like lead up and pre preparation for a major fab event with the, the wolf bag. Like, there's a level of just in the trenches that is hard to explain. And then getting to all come together in person and compete and then celebrate the people that do well. It's just a really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, it's crazy that life worked out in a way where I could do that, honestly. I'm glad to know how critical I was in your flesh and blood journey, Zach. Yeah. Well, you're part of that earlier. A lot. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah. Like I, I, one of the pictures I posted in the highlights was you almost top eighting that Dallas calling. <laughs> I have that picture of you playing against Tarek. Tarek on the I, stream. I, I texted you this. If I had known anything about Flesh and Blood, I would have easily won that game. Yeah, he may feel the same now too, though. I had the better hammer. Y your macro strategy was should have been better. My macro strategy was yeah. non-existent. Hamilton would not have lost that game. No. That, There's that's, no way. That's My hammer gives you a frostbite. Your hammer doesn't. Yeah. And if my frostbite hits, you can't swing your hammer with one card. It's devastating. It's the, the easiest thing yeah. in the world to do. I actually went back and watched that game because I was putting the highlights together. Yeah. And I linked to that video on that thing. Mm -hmm. um, and watching it is wild mm -hmm. because one, I know so much more about Fab now. Yeah. And you guys are playing and you're right. You should you should absolutely have won that game mm -hmm. if you had known what you were doing. But then also it was like um, uh, DM Armada and um, Tannen were doing commentary. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know Tark at the time, DM Armada, or Tannen, and I now am very familiar with all of them. And it was just such a blast from the past. Yeah. And then we knew so little about the game, how to play it well, what was coming in the future. Like, that was early days. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it was really wild to just witness, yeah. witness that I could have won the whole thing. I just drafted Winner's Will. It was like, yeah. I could have just fatigued the world. And another uh, similar to, to preparing uh, with the pack was, like, I hosted a lot of what I would call jam sessions at my house. Yeah, those were we, fun. We get together at like 10 a.m. on a Saturday and go to like 2 in the morning. Um, and those routinely were like peak. Yeah. Peak highlights. I remember trying to get that Azalea deck ready. 
Yeah. I feel like it was as ready as it could have been. I, that was I would, the first column we went to, right? You're yeah. I would really do so much different. I, w- I wouldn't change the deck at all. I think I could have played out of so many of those games if I had well, just you, you been had better. A, you forgot to use your snaps. I forgot, yeah. I remember that devastatingly yeah. good. That was our first game. Uh, yes. Yeah. Speaking of Azalea, uh, Brody is one of my favorite fab players. Um he recently won a column with Azalea. Yeah. But it was his first like major he's he he has, I think, literally twenty three PTIs. So <sighs> someone on the Wolfpack was joking the other day. He's top eight so many battle hardens and like yeah. top eight pro but uh he, he has more PTIs than he's had birthdays. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> Which that's is in, he, incredible. But uh anyways, Azalea is good now apparently. Yeah, yeah, there's so, a different Azalea back then. I was yeah. having her on like Nimble Strike and, yeah. and Raven's Travel and that kind of stuff. Well, I she's probably still running Raven's Travel, but my best arrow was like hamstring shot. Endless arrow. Well, depends on who you ask. <laughs> According to Alex Becker, that's true. There he is. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Uh, all right. Let's see, Stephen. Did you see what Stir the Pot did? I just like it. I just they made a card. That just... The effect. Yeah. Shuffle. That's it. If you played another blue card this turn, transcend. So play a blue card and then stir the pot to transcend that card. That's a bad turn. Well, the thing is, it's an instant that shuffles and then it just becomes a transcended resource. Mm-hmm. So then if your hero ability is like, you need to pitch three transcended to do something special. Because it stays in your hand as a blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you cool. play it and then it goes back into your hand as a resource. Are they trying to remove pitch stacking as an element of the game? I Because I feel like some heroes are shufflers and some are not. Yeah, and man, now I, this kind of card. I've been playing Viscerai since the start who had become the Arc Knight. And it, I, it, you don't pitch stack. <laughs> yeah. And Sonata. And it's just like, oh. Bolton's the same. Yeah. You search with Beacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, moving on. Earthborn. Also, I, I just want to call this out. There are three people who said they're subscribed. To YouTube? Ouch11, Elicio, RVR, Thomas Morton. Totally random. That's four. Bloated Noodles is five. And that's it. Five people subscribed, Jonathan. They're not enough. Your job is in jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> I've nobody care, nobody old, cares guys. about YouTube subscriptions anymore. It's a it's a dumb, it's a non-existent metric. Nobody subscribe. I don't subscribe to anything I watch. It's just an algorithm. I watch stuff and then it gives me more from those people. Yeah. And then also random stuff that sometimes is great and most of the time is very very much not what I want to watch. But it helps the channel get to the algorithm. I guess, it's but I don't robots talking I don't to think robots. it does cuz we don't have ads or anything, so it doesn't matter. I don't know, man. Just watch it. Like it. We're gonna if move we on. get to a hundred thousand, we get a plaque. We're halfway there. A hundred thousand subscribers, we get a plaque. Mm-hmm. We're for real, yeah, it's we've the been golden at, YouTube button. We've been at fifty-seven thousand for like eight years. I know it's crazy. It's <laughs> actually astounding. It just how hasn't moved. Plateaued it is. It's amazing. It just hasn't moved. We found our audience. Yeah, and half of them are probably still X-wing players. They're like, what? Is it got, they probably just unbelled us <laughs> and stayed subscribed, you know? Like, I've been yeah, there. It's definitely not 57,000 people. I've, getting Obsidian Roost. I've been subscribed since 2019. Sweet. Yeah, because Obsidian came in a little bit later. All right. Earthborn. Yeah. yeah. Earthborn recently celebrated. They posted their 50th podcast episode. That was a live one. That's amazing. Because definitely going to pass us. I know so many podcasts that never make it to like 20. Mm-hmm. First, first five or 10 are easy. The real ones. That's <laughs> after that, though, man. It's uh, it's it's tough. Um, also, Earthworm made another top ten list, and I, I saw this saying uh, the top. The game took four spot in Efka's top ten games of all time, which we're going to post a link uh, in the channel. That's right. You see hey, Efka's stuff? Pause. Content, real quick. You probably recognize it. I saw it when uh, Earthworm was talked about. Uh, oh, look, no, it doesn't no, have YouTube Premium. No, look at you staring at us. No it pun is. included. Look at this on the screen. I've been here since the spoils days. Whoa! I've never seen Norgal Probe's name in the chat. Yeah, that's before. That's, that's, that's an OG real one right there. That's real. That's that's back when we were doing the tutorial with the black screen in the background. Yeah, I have that picture of you like legs crossed under yeah, this my table. old apartment. Yeah. I was jacked. I was a power lifter at the time. I was like, I was massive. Just a yeah. Slice of you beef. were like three or four inches taller, and your biceps were three or four inches bigger. <laughs> was you huge know? back <laughs> then. Crazy. Man. It was weird. I was like very, yeah. very. Fit. This started shrinking. Oh, you mm-hmm. were just active all the time. Well, it's and only young. Gotten, it's only gotten worse. You were in. You were in your youth. I was. Yeah, but aren't I still there? I can still hang with the kids, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Cool. That's Someone. Sure. This is a quick aside. I was watching a video last night. Someone was talking about like that how to train your dragon video. Mm-hmm. It was like part of their youth and a long time ago. 
they described it that way. How to Long train, time ago, how to train the your cartoon? dragon? When, yeah, the, was it like a few years movie. ago. It's like a no. year ago. No, I mean it was probably like twenty I, years ago. Well, the nineties. Yeah, I like think old, it was like two thousand eight or something. Yeah, it's like the movie Elf was two thousand one, I think, or two thousand two. The passage of time is real. Yeah, we're getting old. <laughs> Lee, I've been here since at least two thirty. <laughs> 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 Uh, like is that a, Lee Price? Maybe. I, don't, I don't know if it's the Lee. Maybe Lee it's P? Lee P. Could be. Uh, that, that's that's it for Earthborn. Earthborn's still in their um, uh, late pledge stage. Uh, expecting uh, at some point in the next 12 months the reprint to show up. We'll have that in stock again at some some point I'm down sure the road. I'm sure will. I'm sure will. Moving on, because we, we're... It's, 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 we're, we're so, not playing anything yeah, amazing. It's, it's no, di- no, it died okay. somewhere. Okay, well then I can go a little slower. Uh, Marvel, don't tell Shannon, though, because she went out of her way to get me these decks. You guys can still play. Well, luckily for you, <laughs> Shannon and I don't routinely find ourselves engaging, <laughs> particularly on the topic of sorcery. Yeah, uh, as you can imagine. Only Anyways, once a week. Marvel Champions, uh, Iceman releasing in May. Uh, now, notably, talk about publisher communication, and you know they may well have talked about this. I have not seen it, uh, which is first time in a long time they're releasing a single hero pack. You know what? But the communication from Champ, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah what, what does it matter? As long as it keeps keeps rolling. If you want Iceman, buy it when it comes out. They don't have to manage a community, really. I like this. All. Brent saying having kids will give you more milestones to start. I completely time. agree with this. Yeah, it's it's like, the first thing that slowed down my life. Yeah. Because, like, you know. Maybe they, I like the fast lane, John. It's like they can hold their own head up. I they know what's on they, the other side. They like are know. almost crawling. Or if you're hanging out with them, this is like they're just watching butterflies. And you don't get to do that when you're old. Now, speak for yourself, man. Speaking of Amsterdam. We're about to be living it. Hey, is this the water deck I lent you? Yes. Great. This is your card. Don't sell out of sorcery, please, because I love playing. (laughs) You have your own sorcery, though, for the first time. I do, but not enough of it. I don't have, like, like, the good cards (laughs) yet. Yeah, I don't have any intent of selling out of sorcery. I do need to change this deck a little bit, though, because I want to test something else. And Jesse can watch and realize how right I am about everything that I've said. Yeah, man. I don't know. I'm a little dubious of the stones myself. But we'll, we'll get back. He let's, won't stop loving this. Let's, let's come back man. to the stones. I, okay. I'll talk to so we, We're not to the so sorcery thing. So Iceman. Uh, let's pull up the Iceman hero. This is going to be something Steven likes. Just looks. Zach, how many times do I have to tell you about ice versus water? Dude, it's still close. When Iceman makes a basic attack or defense against an enemy, attach a frostbite to that enemy. Oh, doing a little Rin, huh? A little Rin situation. Frostbite permanent. Attached enemy gets minus one, minus one. After the enemy activates or leaves play, set this card aside. All right, so you can frost somebody up, which is actually just really good. Snow clone. Snow clone takes minus one consequential after it attacks an enemy with frostbite attached. Oh, that's good. Mm. I really like this a lot. (laughs) <laughs> so if they're frozen, you don't take consequential. I really actually do like this a lot. I told you, Steve. You like were it. completely right. Yeah. But is this a leadership hero? Ooh, look at Bobby. The, so he, he looked like me during the spoils tutorial. He, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what you looked like. Six pack, eight pack, and all. So uh, what you said something just Six set aside? What did you say before that? Um, I don't know. I'm reading the, I'm reading the card. Right. I said something about Ren Northfell, and then I, I said an other clever things that are on who knows. Yeah. Cool off. After you change this form, shuffle one ice card from your discard pile into your deck for each copy of Frostbite in play. Oh, heroes don't That's have good. an aspect. He isn't, he's not a leadership. Right, enemy. but it's just a joke because the blue the cards are blue. I see that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just in case someone's out there. Perhaps it, maybe it wasn't funny, <laughs> but it was a joke. Shuffle one ice card. So do you have any spoilers, Jonathan, of, of like I've an ice card? I want sorts of spoilers. Sports. Give me like an event I want to play over and over Let's again. Let's see. Ah. That definitely, uh, or re- double resources. This ice? Ice side. Plus one. It is plus one. Side. Plus one. Aerial. After you change the alter ego, shuffle it into your deck. That's a very well designed card. Dude, plus one, plus one, plus one, and aerial. Yeah. It's great. But you only get it as long as you're cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that a nice joke? I guess it was. Oh, here's one. Here's one that's pretty cool. All right, take a tag. Okay, this is one you shuffle back in. Deal four to an enemy and attach Frostbite to it, mm-hmm. or deal six to somebody with Frostbite. Great. Nice. Two for six. <laughs> yeah, you love to see it. Oh, look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Broken <laughs> old perception. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> After you resolve your freeze, exhaust this card, draw a card. If that card has the ice trait, ready, ice man. Oh, so you have to reveal the card that you draw to prove to the table that it has the ice trait. I love it. Anyone remember when it used to throw snowballs at Magneto? 
<laughs> I thought you were just making that up. I was no, like, that's, that's real. I don't know what you're getting that from. That's awesome. That was pretty, uh, pretty. Hey, Dragon Ball Z. that's a frozen juggernaut. Attach max one. When attach wood, discard instead. Then attach frostbite. That's just good, man. You remember who had that? Spider Man had the web up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good stuff. That's I told you you like it. I knew it. I don't know. Maybe you should maybe you should play more champion. I, I kind of really. I don't know. After our little tango you last time, like it? I don't know. I could kind of get. I can get back into this. I take it a little more seriously. I've, I've said it a few times now, but playing a campaign once every like two months has been the perfect like a source or a champions experience for me. Okay. Like I'm, I'm, I look forward to it every time. I enjoy it, and then I look forward to it again. Yeah, we were That's playing good. a lot for a long time. Yeah, we took it deep though. Yeah, we went to the well. <laughs> we did on that one. We uh, we sure did. Anyways, Iceman coming up. If you're not subscribed, you still can. And I automatically get that, of course, in future releases. And then last but not least, Sorcery TCG announces the beta reprint, which we've been talking about all stream. Limited reprint uh, being heavily allocated to regions that were underserved. I think Europe and Asia specifically. Uh, some coming to the U.S. largely based on participation in the Play Network system that they have. So trying to get a restock of products seemingly timed with Arthurian Legends. Boom. Uh, the second set coming Q4. Uh, some amount of beta happening there. Uh, Bizkata asking, speaking of sorcery, will it be available in most LEGS in quarter four? So in terms of beta, I don't, I don't, it seems very limited. It does not feel like a, there's going to be infinite amount of this available for people at that point. But even still, the vast majority of beta cards are available online as singles. Like it's not prohibitive in terms of cost. Some of the stuff, like the cores and stuff, more a little more expensive, but not not even like fab levels on it's you know, not like, that bad. Like tunic. It's re it's reasonable collectible game stuff. And with one set a year, it's also it's just not it's just not that bad. So uh TTS mod has been updated. I, I was impressed. I was in some oh, testing really for cool. Sorcery Con. That mod is pretty slick yeah. as mods go. There's people that are good at that. Uh, cleaned up interface apparently updated the cards to most of their current versions so like text have changed and stuff. Um, I thought this was cool. Says that, the multiplayer thing? Yeah, again, they're just pitching it to the community. Multiplayer mode. Currently no official multiplayer mode has been released. Goal is to encourage community experimentation and enjoyment in this uh, area. So there's not like a format. Officially. David already did it. It's done. Uh, it's right here. It's I the agree. orb. It's the outland. It's yeah, it's done. Can, you can show the, the koi card on screen. Yeah, Where's my, hold on. So we have uh, we have very limited Arthurian Legends uh, cards, but this uh, from Lindsay Cromet, the artist, got revealed. Um, and when you think Arthurian Legends, this is not where I thought it was going, but uh, it's not where I thought this was going either. It's done. This is the multiplayer <laughs> map that David put together. Yeah. Beautiful. Do the thing where I drop it in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love like those that. videos when they run into a wall or something here's, instead. Here's, here's, here. Can you go overhead, John? Yeah. Sorry, microphone. Here's the thing about these four-player mats. You, you got to make them chill. Don't make them too busy. Right? So, like, this is, it's the void. It's not a, it's the void. It's not a location. It's the void. Yeah, the locations will show up. It's really actually quite muted. The camera brings out the colors a bit more. <laughs> they, it's quite muted. Bloating skull. You love to see it. Like you can see all the you can see all the sorcery stuff happening. You don't want to yeah. make it so busy you can't see the stuff. We had this conversation over and over again with our tokens forever, mm -hmm. which is like you want to you don't want to be competing for attention from the the game. Yeah, the game's the like cards. bright and, and wild. Yeah. Um, but pull pull that card back up. Yeah. So this is I'm really uh, it, I cannot express how excited I am for Arthurian Legends as a theme to be explored. Mm -hmm. uh, but the it makes sense given the game and sorcery and the way it's functioned, but like going into the like all the weirdest mystical, like cr this is creepy, it's beautiful art. Uh, anyways, I just I love to see it. And I think Steven likes the ability, if An I'm correct. An exceptional yeah, merfolk of comely yeah. appearance. They figured out how to do it. I mean, like the water takes a little experimentation because the, the roof concept is excellent, right? But you can this one can drown people, right? Water's supposed to be weird and, and weird. So and submerge. Let's just look. Once per turn, Koinixi may force target nearby enemy to take a step towards her. Tap that enemy if it is untapped. Like tremendous improvement over Gaius Hirons, which is start of your turn, force a nearby. And the problem with that is nearby does not transcend region. Mm -hmm. So if I'm underwater, nearby is only underwater nearby. Is that right? Yes. 
Uh, not so over water nearby. So away. I can't even pull them onto the surface of my location with that ability. It's also at the start of turn, which makes it very difficult to use. As opposed to Koinixi, you move in, trigger the ability, pull something in, tap it if it's on tap. Mm. That, that ability is unbelievable. Yeah. And so we're gonna, I think we're seeing with Wave Shaper and with yep. Koinixi, the tapping down your opponent's stuff in like doing tempo stuff rather than long-term control stuff, I think is the way at least one water deck is gonna play, and that is so my style, Zach. Yeah. Dude, and this is just- I love it. It's such a good looking card. Yeah, it's great. The so template, it's just, it's very good. Lindsey Kramit, doing it again. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the end of the news, Wait, man. is that the, yeah, we've seen that logo. Uh, Sorcery cores, you wanna get up on a bolt box real quick? Cores? You know, are they good, are they bad? I don't know, man, I mean, it reminds me of an Alpha Clash. There's a Haven that when you play it, you can put an extra resource down. So mm -hmm. people splash blue to get that. But when you see it early, it's great. This just went off. I don't know if that's a problem, John. Oh, uh, the monitor. The screen's the, black. Yeah. The actual thing. Oh, yeah, that is a problem. I don't know if it's the camera on the stream or not. Is the camera on? No, none of the cameras would be no. on. Or is it the monitor? There it is. It's back. Um, I don't know if that was the stream. That's strange. But it's basically oh, like I see what happened. Yeah, okay, if if you see it early, it's great, and then otherwise, it's really bad. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of this like, are you willing to give up consistency in order to sometimes spike the ball? And do you need to spike the ball? So like with with the cores, of course, the earlier in the game you see it, the better. Mm -hmm. And there are certain plays you can't do without them in right. terms of uh, reach and stuff. But and it's it's sort of like an off clash is the same way where. Because it's constructed, you put enough card draw in that you have plenty of cards throughout the game. So uh, the ability to kind of get to a certain resource threshold without having to have a site and having played a site is relevant. It is relevant. Like if you get to five without having to have an extra site, because you start with three in your hand, right? And then every turn you tap to play. So mm -hmm. it depends on your avatar too. But like where I've I've felt it the most is I was playing Avatar of Earth, and so the sooner you can not be having to tap to play a resource, yeah. The better, but well, that's also, the same with Wave Shaper too. Yeah, but so late game, yes, it, it or later game, it is a bummer. It's it's almost like the more card draw you have, the more you can afford the risk. Yeah, but if this is your one for a turn and you need anything that's yeah. a unit if or you have a seven spell, resources, and that's the card you draw. Yeah, or five. But the question you have to ask yourself is, how many games do you win that you wouldn't have won by drawing these early? Yeah. Versus how many games would do you lose because you drew this? But would any card that you drew here have shifted the game enough to offset this being so good early? Yeah, but it's like if you you start with three locations, and so every one of these you have down is another card you could have drawn from your deck instead. Yeah. So it replaces itself in that way because yeah. you had to use a card to have this down in the first place. Right. Um, and it's yet another situation where you don't have to tap to play a location. It accelerates that curve. And we know the four and five cost stuff. Yeah. You play monumentally You better. play Amazon Warriors uh, sometimes two turns early. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pirate Ship on turn like two or three is super good. Yeah. And you have a finite amount of health in this game. It's very low. It's 20 for most of these, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, an extra turn of swinging four or five your opponent can't do anything about. Yeah. It's gigantic. That's right. But, so I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to run them. But if I were going to cut any of the any of the cores, it would be the one of my main faction. I would keep the one that is my splasher, and I would keep the ph Philosopher's Stone. Philosopher's Stone is a different It can kind just of... be two resources a yeah. turn, and that, that's pretty busted. But the Aquamarine is actually the worst if you're just heavy water. Yeah. Now, the reality, though, is that I don't know. Somewhere between 80 and 90% of why you would run these cards is because they're just They're just beautiful. gorgeous. <laughs> that's that's what eventually got me for Sorcerer Guys. Like, so you know what? Good looking. I'm gonna leave these in because I just like seeing them. Look, look at that. that Ocarina's thing. got yeah. to be the best card. I'm not even a water printed. guy, but look at that. It's the best of the cores. Like with like bar none. You don't even have to care about the element. It's, and if you do care about the element like me, like this is the best card I have yeah, ever it's, owned it's, in any it's, game. It's something else. It really is. And I've got an alpha one. An alpha core. Is this alpha? No, this yeah. is yours. I have an alpha one. <laughs> this, this is your like peasant beta one. Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't give me an alpha card if I I don't know if held that's your true. hand. What is this alpha beta? Um, what I'm going to do, Zach, I'm going to make some swaps and then we should play a game. Are you okay with that? 
We don't need to pop anything. Yeah. I why, don't you, why don't you just get on out of here? I'm out. I'm already gone. He's basically gone. I'm happy to play a game. You want to play one? Because like there's this is an old. I can see why the deck did did okay at Sorcerer Con. Well, what are you planning to do to your deck? Change it. Do you have the cards? I, I, yeah, it's like I was trying to convince him to proxy in the Cornix, the Cornixie today. Mm, nah, no, I didn't. You know what I'm kind of this dumb combo, Jesse. This. It's the pneumatic manuscript and the Plague of Frogs. Pneumatic right? manuscript. Okay, so when is it good? I get some water. You, you, you do your when is it good? What cards do I need to put down? Turtles. Turtles. The turtles are so bad, Jonathan. I've come around. How are they bad? They don't die. What do they do? Not die. They block. Block it all. It's just a two power unit. A two power unit for three is just tough. I know that you can't remove it from the board, and that's fine. But also, what are you doing? Because the problem is, water has like five turns until they're losing. Oh, yeah. You got to go fast. All the wave shaper has to go, go fast. If yeah. I was playing sorcerer water with floods, I could go slower. But you can't get to late game against Death Speaker, against Sorcerer. Yeah. You have to win soon. And Turtles is not a win soon card. Yeah, Iconic is not a win soon card. Not known for their speed. Not <laughs> <laughs> That's just good design. That's just good design. <laughs> no, like the thing is, like the core, the same problem we're talking about with the cores is the same problem you talk about with Narcotic. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's like if you draw this card on your fifth turn and you don't have literally any of the other two cards that make it busted, then it's just dead in your hand. Yeah. You pay two to put it on your avatar and then take like five damage, draw on it, and you undie. No, like, nah, man. The so thing about these on. cards, th this card is just always good, so of course I'm going to run that. But the thing about these cards is that if the deck can do what it's supposed to do consistently enough, it doesn't need them. Mm-hmm. And if it only wins if you draw these things, then it's not a good deck. That's right. So where do they live? If they're not enhancing your already strong strategy... You can put that uh, on Mega Beaver. Pretty easy. I mean, you can put it on anything. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to... You got turtles, you got frogs, you got Mega Beaver. Potentially... Why, why am I putting hydra. this on Mega Beaver? Why does that matter? It doesn't hurt it. I mean, it does hurt you it. You mean the Hydra? No, no, the Mega Beaver should be bad enough uh, by that point. Oh, in in fantasy world where the <laughs> Mega Beaver lasts for more than one turn, yes, you are correct. Unbelievable. <laughs> they live in fun, says David. Okay. I'm going to devote this game to Jesse of the winning agenda. <laughs> Leave us open for a second so we can yeah, get one. Just calling Jesse out from downtown. We talk about this all of the time. We argue about it constantly. Literally constantly. I'm glad I have that Adept Illusionist. I will actually probably need that. You can put it on Adept Illusionist. Jonathan, you can put it on anything. <laughs> but you just kill Spoiler. them. It's time Bring and money. Back. Time and money. Zach, I'm going to write down the cards that are not yours. Hey, are they... Okay. <laughs> I don't think it matters. I like this is this is a good vibe on the on the live stream today. Does everyone agree? Are we? Or is everyone having fun out there? Hey, like and subscribe. Oh, I thought fun. you were gonna pull up a comment. Uh, just the vibe yeah, today is the vibe. I think ever since Steven yeah, took that call live, on, man. on screen, we've this been is the that this broke is the, it open. No, this is when this is where the stream dies. This is for the hardcore fans. No, like half the audience drops off instantly. That's true. But the I other know. half loves it. That's right. So you gotta decide. I. uh... Usually, when you're doing something that some amount of people will very much love, a similar number of people will hate it. Like in my bulk box. I'm actually using it. See? It's real. It's not just marketing. Uh, also, okay. one of my favorite... This is this is the, the real thing. It's not... The sign is not whether or not someone's buying a car. The sign is... We built a custom studio where we could get air conditioning in here, where it's actually colder in the studio it's with the lights cold. on than it is in the office. We have arrived. It's actually now too cold. We have heat and air. That's right. Too much heat and too much air. The kids call that HVAC, by the way, if you ever hear that. The kids? I, I use that all the time. The <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Not, not the kids. The kids have never heard that in their <laughs> the, lives. The construction people and the landlords. Uh-huh. Yeah. Ooh, Which stands for? Jam, we got an HVAC problem. Oh, man. I used to know what it stood for. Heating, ventilation, air conditioning. Yeah, because there's another one too. Like, 
I if I would have known it. Uh, yeah, HVAC. Well, there's HVAC and there's another V. There's another VAC. There's two letters that they interchange. Hmm. I just Maybe. know it's HVAC. No, no, man. Because I had to do it because I had an old, like some old system in my house that I had to take out, and it wasn't an HVAC. Hmm. It wasn't an HVAC. It is an HVAC. There's like there's a different kind. I'm gonna I'm gonna find it. I'm not gonna say anything until there's I like find the vent with the fan HVAC situ him? situation. There's the you can have the you didn't wood fire stove older, for heat. Definitely do now. Okay, I've got a deck saved on Curiosa.io, one that I officially recommend. Your deck or the site? The site. I do not recommend my deck whatsoever. Agreed. Okay, what do I need? I'm just gonna put this. I need a Highland Princess. Now the cores get better, because Highland Princess... Dude, she's one of the best cards in the game. ...gets them. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? I think I have... You have one? I think I have an alpha. Those are worth $1,000 now. No, they're not. It's foil, too. No. Yeah, foil, alpha, no, Highland Princess. No, I want that card. And a foil Grim Reaper, boy! You want to trade me that alpha foil? I'm going to play it. Instead of so I have I have a king and a crown. What are these worth? I tell don't, me. You don't you don't want to know. Tell me, Zach. It's got a house to build. All right. I'll sell it to you right now for that price plus twenty percent. Why would I ever do that? As long as I can still use it today. Highland Princess. I don't want to. I'm not going to record me touching this. So how much some, do you think? How much do you think it is? Uh, five hundred. Last sold. Five hundred. Oh, I nailed it. See, I've got brains. I'll give it to you for 700. Nope. Look, I'll even double, it's double sleeved, dude. Oh, no, <laughs> I can't do that. It's double sleeved. How many sleeves do you want it in? I mean, look at this, though. I know. Jonathan, give me that overhead. Look at that, though. Come on, y'all. Yeah. I just realized, Jonathan, you bamboozled me. I'm probably oh. never selling You were like, anything. can I permanently mount your laptop charger in the studio and I was like yes I'll buy a new one so you can have it uh -huh. so then I got here and I was like oh my charger's here so I plugged it in this whole time is that plugged it's not plugged in <laughs> you got the, look at this I could have been using it the whole time it's not mounted to nothing <laughs> I went weeks without one at home because it was just stuck here here's that alpha Ruby core and Cerebrus and chains do you need that one mm -mm. I have a alpha foil Cerebrus and chains good boy had to have it roots in there what, roots with the fur? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. My laptop's doing yeah. fine, but... Let's see if it, I think I was going to put it in the ceiling, but the ladder wasn't tall enough. That's exactly what I was going to uh, So you're, now it's back on my problem because we need a ladder. Yeah. Although yeah, I, 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 it's your problem. I, it's not my problem. I didn't see a budget request come uh, through. So. It's back to my problem. Yeah, not my... <laughs> <laughs> oh, quickly the tides <laughs> turn. <laughs> I'm gonna play this Avatar Earth deck. That's perfect. So I'm not gonna have to change anything. Look at this. Dang, do I really have the best one foil? Give is? me the top down. Look at this thing. Oh. I should have bought more when we had is these that promos. An alt art? That's the Lightning Bolt Covenant promo. You had to be a real old OG to get this. Is the RRS next uh, subscription gonna have a promo? It is. <gasps> Yep. I better sign up now. Actually, I'm already signed up. I'm signed yeah, up. Yeah, you better sign up because. Leverage. Hey, hint, if you're watching right now, you're not going to be able to sign up for very much longer. Wow. This is not FOMO either. This is just life. That's raw fact. That is real. true. Like, I didn't know if I should say that or not, you know? <laughs> I, I guess it's, it's okay. It's going to be. <laughs> this is gonna, they're going to be weeping and gnashing their teeth. <laughs> I saw some the other day. I was like, I didn't realize you could run out. I said, like, Yeah, we don't have infinite <laughs> supply and promos. Well, anyways, uh, do you have an adept illusionist anywhere? Yeah, I carry around blue cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, you let the hate flow Ouch. through. You, I, I, you know what? I do. I do have it somewhere. It's just not here. Okay. Good. 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 Loaded noodles. Can I get a link to bulk box? So we'll already it already have them. Boom. Boom. Now, if you're in the UK or yeah, there it is. We got them yeah. on the page. It's we got right there, there on the page. And there's the link. Right there Go the to lobby. Ricky. Do you have any uh, observatories in the house? At my house, yeah, of course. In the house, this house. This I don't have it here. No, it's very my house. collections at home. I know that I have one adaptive lesionist somewhere, and I'm gonna find it. Okay. 
because you kind of need to, to be honest with you. Am I, I mean, right? You need to. Dysphoria, right? the scorn. Should I run Jarry Hippogriffs? Scorn. You like Jarry Hippogriffs? Gaia? Do they have airborne? Mm-hmm. Do they have it? Uh, what's the keyword that lets them attack immediately? Yeah, charge. Charge? Mm-hmm. Seems good. I'm running Whirling Blades in this new one. You'd love to see it. I've got a whole idea. i got a special spot for that in my heart. I've got a whole that. idea. This is an idea-heavy deck. You want an idea-heavy deck? I've still got my dodge deck <laughs> Dude, ready to go. <laughs> you have too many ideas in that deck for me to handle. <laughs> I can't possibly understand it. I was I was uh, describing you yesterday, Jonathan, as the the vanguard of life. <laughs> I, for me. I'm very happy to be described as that. Yeah, which... Uh, for good and ill, mm -hmm. it's like you're exploring bounds of things that I appreciate you, you doing. <laughs> well, as thank much. you. Yeah. That's awfully nice. Yeah, Jesse runs that dumb card. Adept Illusionist. Yeah, that card is great, dude. <sighs> make, a, make a card. It's just an infinite card. As long as you don't kill both of them. What's that thing that becomes another thing? Uh, self same simulacrum. He runs that thing all the time too. Uh, he doesn't anymore. Did you talk him out of it? No, he talked himself out of it. I had nothing to do with that decision. That was his and his alone. You know, I think this stream needs more of. Hmm. Uh, charcuterie boards. Huh? That was great. That's, that, that's still that was an MVP you were, play. You were actually, not not wrong about that. I. Uh, you want to get one? I'm hungry. I don't know that we can just get one. Mm -hmm. If we if we stock the fridge with. Charcuterie? Charcutes at yeah, any moment. I don't know. I feel like that's, we've gone we've gone too far. If that's just available all the time. Yeah, if there's just that's when all great cultures have failed. Meats. Yeah, available meats and cheeses and wines and mm -hmm. jams and stuff. Although there is some new new concepts around this live show that I think are going to be really cool for people. Does it involve so it drinking things? Voice. No, nothing for you guys. Bummer. You guys are having enough. You're having a crown now, Zach. Ah, uh, man. I, I'm just the peak of luxury. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I really like, for instance, today, the, I think the the pace of how the news went and stuff was really good. And I think it's good when we don't have to rush into a game. So, and it's also really good when we can do, like, a produced game. Mm. So, if we well, can start doing a produced spinning. game a week and have, like, a nice, relaxed Monday Live and maybe just pitches right into the produce game where you guys are on that's chat. cool and then really like cool. it would be its own little produce video after mm -hmm. as well yep. so there could be because four hour live stream is not not a lot of people like it you talked about the youtube subscriber counts staying the same as your reason yeah yeah we i think we maxed out the four hour live stream crew yep there's exactly 57 sometimes fifty eight thousand people but that's it that's it. There's not 59,000 people that want to see that. <laughs> we have proven that definitively. Well, mark mark me. <laughs> what are we in? We're in uh, April of 2024. Uh -huh. I bet you in a year or two, that number will be different. Well, we'll see. It hasn't yet. Yeah. It but jumped up during the pandemic and it's just eight. Justice there. says, all right, just activate a three-box sorcery sub. You will yeah, not regret yeah, it. Although I will say, well, I think that's a good decision. I, I I can't say what I was about to say. I was talking about <laughs> communication. Well, there, someone rewind the stream. I'll say it later. It'll, it'll <laughs> all be made clear in time. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it You made a good decision. There are people in the not so distant future that will wish they had done the same. Ah, uh, yes. Clock's ticking, some would say. Dysphoria says, when Zach said, you know what the stream could use more of, I had the same thought. Charcuterie board. Charcuterie board. All right. Man after my own heart. The people want it. Do you, I brought my collection if you want my Adept Illusionist. No, I think I've got a deck. It's an old Avatar he's, water he's really deck somewhere. committed to this. Yeah. Finding his own card. I get that. Well, the people it's love like the deck. It's like that Cyclops card I tried to find for so long. Mm -hmm. It's like, what I need to. What kind of use for that card? Cyclops? Mm-hmm. It doesn't, doesn't pop scarabs and albatross and stuff. Oh. <laughs> I was talking about my Cyclops Marvel Champions card. Oh, Remember, right, I couldn't right. find the hero. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was just yeah. digging forever. Yep. Or exactly. whenever you redid your Ashes collection, that's a fan favorite. That's a bottom of. Anytime you guys are about to break, I think is what that's when we the internet yeah, hits the like yourself, button. Man. After yeah. our last Champion stream, people were saying like the joy was in basically watching us do things they would never do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there is some of that. Like that's what 
a lot of like the like uh, what we were talking about with the guy that climbs the big rocks that you would just never do. Free solo. Yeah, free solo. Yeah, that's not. It's about the it's outside like and vicarious living. <laughs> yeah, I'm not built for it. And high up in the air. Yeah, I'm, heights are fine, but I'm not built for climbing. Yeah, no, I mean you have to you have to work to be built for climbing. <laughs> yeah. That's a different. That's, that's a different a, body type. Yeah, that is a that is a different <laughs> body type than I've ever had the privilege of knowing. So yeah, we got some. We got some. Basically, I think so. We got the editor position, video editor. If yeah, that's right. Got three positions that, open. Oh, there's a third one now. No, oh no, yeah, the video, off specialist, off specialist, and, and uh, developer. Yeah. So once we get that video editor trained up, then we'll be able to do crazier and crazier. It's gonna things get like crazy. So. That's the hope. That's the hope. We'll see. Because it'll be the first time we have two video editors. Because we've had a video editor that isn't me before, but I was on token production. Yeah. And so now I'll be on video editing with a video editor. Double, 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 baby. double. double. Yeah. The old double up. Okay. So we got to build this. Don't forget, this is mine. Okay. I don't think I'll forget that that's yours. <laughs> I don't own a foil Highland princess. <laughs> or do I? I'm going to test Mega Amoeba. It's, it's, yeah, you are. It's not. I feel like that's a whole deck, though. Well, it's already the deck. Any water deck should be able to run Mega Amoeba because the the Meeb. It's already doing the you things that. Snack. You want anything? Yeah. You do? Sure. Is this water or water air, Super? Water air, and this is the one that's double air. So that means you're doing gravel shot. This is my Alpha Core, my Alpha Aquamarine. That's good there. <laughs> Happy with that. Alpha Ruler of Thule. Alpha is important, right? This one's the one with all the true side crossbows in it. Oh, that's why you're trying to give your uh, ships ranged. Yeah, pirate ship with range is good. Okay, what do we need? We've got a princess. We've got two mega amoebas. We've got a Lord of Unland. We've got Ruler. We need two sea serpents. Ooh, and I'm doing the I'm doing the Grandmaster Wiz. Right. Oh, I, that's that surprises me that you're into that. I am surprised as well. <laughs> okay, as long as we're on the same page. Yeah, no, I wouldn't necessarily suggest it. Like I said, we're 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 playing some. We got a mono water player in the chat, hoping to get some tips. Oh well, find I'm, a new element. My <laughs> <laughs> you want trail mix or cranberry trail mix? My my. Uh, and if it if it reveals, you know, the gender of your child, <laughs> that would be helpful. Pink, you know, might might be one thing, and then there's this earthy tone. It could be a, no. Which flavor would you like? I don't. I just just randomly give me one. Yeah, you set it up now. Ran randomly give me one. Seriously. Randomly. Okay. Random. Lord. I took the pink one. We need two sea serpents. Whenever you had to like split stuff in your youth with your brothers, if you were in charge of that, would you give them the best or the worst? Well, it depends on which brother. Would you keep the best for yourself we, or would you give it away? We were talking about, to answer that, we were talking earlier about things that our parents did well or not. Mm -hmm. And my dad, now I know he was cheating because he had the Bible. <laughs> and he had, he had, he had, <laughs> Dude, what a setup. <laughs> He, he had King Solomon, uh, uh -huh. but chopped the baby in half. There was one time, yeah, where my brother Tim and I were arguing because um, there was a toy of mine, mm -hmm. and we were arguing over who it belonged to. And my dad walked in, and we were arguing. He's like, "Let me see it," and then he was like, "All right, here's what I'm going to do, since you guys can't agree. So I'm going to cut it in half. You can each have half the toy." And then my brother Tim was like, sounds great. And my immediate response was, oh, no, 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 Tim can just have it. And he was like, oh, okay, you. so Zach gets it. Uh, but Zach had read the Bible, so he knew the game already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, Tim never had a chance. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I What I would have done as a kid would probably be, you get a better answer from my brothers. Mm. But... Because, like, right there, did you give Stephen the one that you wanted, or did you give so, Stephen the one that you didn't want? I think we would both be fine with either of these, but I didn't know if he would be into Cranberry Trail Mix. 
I know he likes regular trail mix. Mm-hmm. So I took the riskier play and gave him the safer option. Nice. And we have this variety snack thing going on out there that yeah. you never know what you're getting into. This is oh, an adept fair. illusionist, okay? Got it. I really wish I could find that other one. You don't have one? You got a trade binder or something? <laughs> All my extra stuff's at my house. <laughs> I was told to bring a sorcerer deck, and I brought three. John, you got an adept illusionist or everything? Probably. I can really? Go, I can go grab it from my car. Oh, heck, if you, if you have one, let's yeah, I'll, be, I'll be right back. He said that forever ago. I know. Hey, Brooklyn. Brooklyn has arrived. <laughs> John, do you have a table slot? Uh, we used to. It got stolen. From a property? From a barn, yeah. yeah, early on. Early days of the pandemic, I think just people were going crazy. And the the people we owned, we bought the house from, were like not. It sounded like you were gonna say the people we owned. No, the, the people we got the house, the people who owned it before us were, I think, in the ne'er-do-well spectrum. They were meth heads. Yes, very possibly. Has and, to be, right? And so I think there was some, like there was, we were selling some people's Rolodexes for places that could be stolen from. Mm. And when the pandemic happened and we had a kid. And Didn't your mailbox get stolen once? No, no. I don't think so. I don't know if someone back at like whenever we're Oh, no, it was, it, it, it was the delivery box oh, for yeah, Amazon no, that yeah, I put yeah, out that there. That was around the same time. <laughs> they just took the whole thing. I was like, they'll never be able to break into this. And they literally just yoinked it into their <laughs> truck. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, I wasn't even really that mad. I was like, that is incredible. It's worth it as long as you gave me a story. That's right. It's worth it. All right, so I want to tell you the idea behind this deck, Zach, since we want to talk about macro strategy, right? I'm, I'm going to put three of these in, and I don't even know that I like them anymore. So here's my thinking, and this, is, this goes back to, like, um, you know, anatomy conversations with Netrunner and all this. Megamib is eventually going to get cut, but we're going to... We're gonna run I was it. like, what does that have to do with anatomy? We're going to run it for now. Basically, you say, like, okay, this faction is designed around submerged, so why don't we quit talking about how bad it is and try to make it good? Mm -hmm. So uh, the idea is make submerge good and maybe a little water bound on the way. Okay. And so sea serpents are actually in, which I like a lot. But to make submerge good, you have to be able to move stuff to you, Riptide or move your stuff to them. You have to be able to stand up and then do something. So, you know, like uh, Undyne coming up and then grapple shouting into your mm -hmm. your uh, sorcerer or whatever. That's good. Blink, you know, going over to their side and then coming up if, you flood, it, if you flood it with a thing. Whirling Blades, take two steps. One up, one over, strike everything, and then swing at the site. So the idea is... I should be able to remove all removal from your deck. It should not work. So Earthquake won't won't drown anything because I'm on water. Uh, Barry won't work. You can't use any of your fire, incinerate kind of stuff because I'm underwater. And so I should be able to always get value out of the units that I play. That's, of course, the idea. Uh, it, it won't work nearly that tidily, but it's, it is an idea nonetheless. Well, I'm playing Avatar of Earth. <clears throat> so, it is targeting a lot of the removal I won't be able to play. That's what I'm saying. That's our theory. Our theory and legends. Of course. One of the problems with the theory is to do damage to me, you have to be on my site. Yeah, but Wave Shaper floods your stuff. That's why Wave Shaper's in. <laughs> Ban a day in the TC life of playing a TCG. Zach chilling, waiting for Steven to complete an analysis. <laughs> deck and analysis. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, it's been working so far, right? Mm hmm. I feel like I had another blink somewhere. Did I just... Turns out I don't have a death illusion. All right. Hopefully I will one day. Yeah, me too, man. I feel that. I'll just get a new blink here. Let me start opening packs. Yeah, can you open until you hit an illusionist? Thanks. Blink, 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 blink. I think blink is maybe my favorite card. Also, because we don't have any card draw, um, all of our, our riptides and blinks are drawing us cards. 
So we don't want to play a lot of stuff that doesn't draw afterwards. You want card neutral. We will run out very quickly. So we can't, like if you make a trade based on playing a card, it sucks because you spent a card and then you also had to play the card and now you're not even negative or you're not even positive. But if they draw you a card afterwards and they give you a favorable trade, now you're getting somewhere. Yeah, the cost of a card being playing a card is actually very notable in sorcery. Yeah. Okay, Blink City. So let me make sure that I get the things that are mine. I'm gonna write them down, okay? So we don't cross the streams because we wouldn't want that. Sorcery, Whirling Blades, Princess, Mega list. You could literally just give me this entire deck and you wouldn't even know the difference. <laughs> One Blink. But this is why I was able to sell all my fab cards for a car. <laughs> Uh, Mega Amoeba, <laughs> nothing else there, nothing else there, nothing else there, nothing else there. And then I'm going to take some Sea Serpents from me to you, and then Illusionist. Yeah, the only thing I really need back are the Uniques. Cool. Cool, man. Okay. Princess goes there. We get another Blink. That finishes that. I'm going to go ahead and proxy an Illusionist. I really hate it. Isn't that the greatest illusion of all? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's kind of fitting. That's hilarious. Yeah. This, this is my illusionist. You can't you can't see it or tell her it is. Um, I'm just going to make an old salt anchorman into an illusionist, OK? Remember so, that. So I've obviously been joking about you accidentally slipping up and revealing gender to your kid. Real question, though, is. I mean, I will. I undoubtedly will at some point. Well, now that we're actually talking about the fact that we are going to have kids on camera, it's going to be tougher. But have there been any close calls for you guys? I think we've said it a few times on accident. Nice. Yeah, Serena uh, messed up the first day. <laughs> She's describing the ultrasound. Uh huh. And she was like, she mentioned when talking about the baby. It's like, oh yeah, she jumped around on the screen, and then she was like, <laughs> uh huh. It's like that did not last long at all. I'm just glad it wasn't me. I d I did not mess up once. Yeah, as long as it's not <clears> you, it's fine, right? Jesse from the Wayne Agenda saying, there "Go, Steve, and this water deck is, is looking sweet." Is. I'm gonna do one more shark because like, you gotta get that shark in the game. That's that's a lot of times the only way you can end the game. And then a lot of times it's also how you're losing. I do like sharks. Well, it's the most unfair card that I think water has. It is pretty crazy. And then two. Are you Atlantean Fate? Oh, yeah. That's that. like the best I'm not, water I'm not card blind. So <laughs> <laughs> you ever read that card? Yeah, I was I was going through working on my water air deck, and I was like reading cards. I read that, and I was like, as I was reading it, what? What? I, that That's really good. All right, let's keep it there. Okay. Yeah, he likes to play tier two decks, but he'll play the best cards he can in those tier two decks. <laughs> I'm gonna squeeze him. Okay, there's a pile of cards. <laughs> Jesse's got a hot take for you. Is it how I shouldn't run these cards? He said, if you consider Plague of Frogs and <laughs> Necotic Manuscript. Uh-huh, they're in the, I just took them out pile. Pile 13. I will play that Grandmaster Wizard if I had any, and I don't. Uh, okay, and then we look at our sites. This is pretty easy. Yes. Uh, yes. No, Jesse. Yes. Maybe. Absolutely yes. I like those free cities in that air deck. That was cool to watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really good if your opponent doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> David saying, do not get him started again. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to actually play today. Uh -huh. But this is part of the game, really. You know, there's a there's a ritual to it. It's like stretching before a track meet. Never did that neither. <laughs> Never did that neither. <laughs> wow. Pretty Country. Cool. Pretty cool, man. Both running track or stretching before doing so. You have any observatories? Uh, you have one sitting there on the top of that. Yeah, I'm about to. I'm about to maybe get my other one. I. Uh, I do have them at my house. <laughs> I brought three decks, and none of them have blue cards in them. You don't have like just an observatory somewhere? 
Not hiding out. In, I mean, I have an observatory at my house. <laughs> Both a real one can and you, a card. <laughs> can you tell me where the observatory is? I, I missed that part of the equation. <laughs> well, if you go to my <laughs> office in my house, you know, you were there yesterday. Go upstairs, go to my office. Uh, it's there. My pile of... In your house. Extra sorcery cards. In your house. Got it. In my house. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try one more place, and then I'm going to call it good. Palibri Bats. Do I just have like a... Yes, I do. Yeah. Palibri Bats was done by the same person that did the coin Nixie. Lindsay? Mm-hmm. Hey, what's your favorite river? Like in the game. Autumn, Cut winter, spring. Yeah, I was like, okay, we know where this is going. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Rivers? I don't know. I can name like three. <laughs> Which three? Mississippi. Definitely Mississippi, Nile River, and the Arkansas River. <laughs> Just rattling them off. Nice. I got Giant this. river that goes through Tulsa. <laughs> um... Of the ones that aren't the promo one that comes with them, I like the winter one, but it's in the promo pack, so. Uh, John, I'll, I ordered Last Ashes Red Rains from another seller, and it's still not on the way. Never again. I got your subscription. Next time I won't be waiting when I could be playing. Heck yeah. Welcome Thanks. to the party. It's on the box. Sorry to hear about that uh, experience. For what it's worth, if I think we still have the previous ones in stock, if you go to the Ashes page and scroll down, if you can cancel that other order, if you order today, it will ship tomorrow. Guarantees on the box. Unless some extenuating circumstance going on, we ship within one business day. Et cetera. Um, I might just proxy it with a watchtower. Jesse's saying winter autumn for him. Those are two different ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. What's your favorite river? I think it's winter, but apparently you can't play it. It's it's like a promo. Well, you can do whatever you want. What no, man, we got to follow the rules sorcery here. Sorcery town. This is obviously very, very serious. Yeah. Uh, okay, if I don't find it here, I'm just going to proxy it. Isn't the the Nile is the longer, longest river in the world one of the things on um, Brave New World where they have to, like, remember it? Mm, that sounds roughly familiar. Something like that. The book? There, there's a river fact that the, the babies are programmed with mm. in their... Baby programming time. <clears throat> chamber? Yeah, baby programming chamber. Okay, I'm not going to find this observatory. Is it elite? Yes. Totally it's random elite. saying Spring River. Rivers and ropes. <laughs> Spring River, here it is. The Winter River you can only, is like only in foil, so it's, you can only get it in special ways. I don't know. I, I think it was the box around. topper. It was the box okay. topper. Uh, okay, there it is. Which is crazy, that wouldn't be legal. I don't understand. Okay, this watchtower is actually not a watchtower. It's an observatory, if you can believe it. Clearly. I mean, it looks pretty close. It's an altar observatory. It's that curio. I've got to organize these cards, man. This is crazy. I don't know what from what right now. You've had a busy season. And these are all yours, so let me put these over by you before they get swallowed up in the morass. Okay. Cut the free cities. See you later, Jesse. Wow. Simon, the correct answer is Autumn River. Can you pull up the Autumn River for me? I sure can. I think Autumn is my favorite of the uh, three. Yeah, I look at it. <laughs> Would you look at it? Autumn is probably my favorite season. Yeah, that's the other thing. My son, he loves summer. All I, all what did to, you do? What? I know I tried to train him like like fall or winter, but what did he's you do wrong? So excited man? about spring and summer. You just had too much fun in the summer. He does. He loves being outside. Yeah, what's summer? what's the tower you don't have? Dark loan. I need a gothic, gothic tower. Yeah. Uh, there it is. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I bet your child's gonna love being outside. And you're gonna come in with a tan and everything. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> it takes so long for me to get a tan. <laughs> it's mostly red and burnt for a while. A long while. Okay, bun. Um, do you want to get a play mat? Do you have one? You don't just want to eyeball it? I mean, I can. We got these lines here. It's not 
That's cool. Let's just try it. I mean, we can get a playmat if you want. I'm going yeah, right. Get, I'm going right over there on the rolled up in the stuff. There are words happening. Oh, up top. Yeah. Oh, you got that Seattle one. We yeah, we do have the two Seattle ones, don't we? The only surface I I'm willing to play sorcery on. <laughs> Get this on the line. Oh, look at that! It's on that blue line, thin blue line. All right, you're going down, Wooly. Nah, man. <laughs> With the power of water. I refute that. I cannot be defeated. I haven't lost a game of sorcery in months. <laughs> the last time you played. <laughs> <laughs> been a few months. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, we played when, recently sealed. I was say, sealed. We, when did we play sealed? When was that? Remember when for some reason you decided to play water on stream all day for 12 hours? <laughs> what were you doing? I don't know. What was wrong with you? <laughs> it's because I got that mega amoeba. I was tempted by the dark. <laughs> Yeah, you can, uh, I also uh, said it as I was doing it. I was like, hey, this is the wrong choice, but I'm mm -hmm. going to do it anyway for the entertainment of the stream. So what Jesse's watching for here is how often uh, the Mega Amoeba is useful. Basically, more than zero is what we're hoping for. Okay. And we're also going to be watching for whether or not Submerge ever works well. And we're also going to be watching for how dead the cores are late game. Just to let you know the stakes. See, set it up. Even Steven? Yep. Odd, odds on. <laughs> odd. You have to go first. All right. We'll That's the it. rules of sorcery. Did you know that? I did not. <laughs> well, let me tell you some <laughs> what, more rules. Though. What myriad rules does Zach not know <laughs> this this day? To no one's surprise. <laughs> we like you. I just shuffle really well. Ooh, Aaron Payne. I did would, that good would love to see you two try the battle box formula I posted in the Discord. Took a little Netrunner asymmetry, and I think it's pretty good. It is in our Discord for those. Battle box sounds fun. Interested. Yeah. I do that in I mean. I'm so interested in all these cool formats. See, why Grandmaster Wizard would be good in this deck, aside from the text on the card, is that even if you play it, it's still not something you want to waste removal on. So that's the problem. I, I don't want to play Skirmishers, because if all my stuff is about taking removal out of you, like making it dead, and I just play Skirmishers, then you just destroy it with whatever you haven't been able to use on everything else. Yeah. So... Like a... Lightning rod. Yeah, so it's like a blasted Ow. oak skirmishers. <laughs> but Grandmaster, like, nobody wants to kill that. It's like a one. It's a zero strength unit, so it's worth playing. Our snacks got everywhere. <laughs> got cranberries on your shit? Here, cut that, would you? I already drew, I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. Look, I've already marked up the sleeve and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. They're the all marked returned. up the exact same way, though. All right. And first player doesn't draw a card? Ugh. Is that that's right? right? That's right. I've got too many game systems in my head. You can't pitch a lineage fate, right? No. Jonathan, you can't for real? You guys could be useful. A five? Uh, I mean, you put it on the bottom of the deck, though, and you never see it again. I that's know. That's a problem. It's yep. just a, it's I gotta a keep it. problem. I got to keep it. It's awful. Sometimes I would rather it's not awful. I'd rather not draw more cards by then. Oh, He's wait. got two cores in his hands, though, so it's fine. The, the number of cores in my hand is absurd. <clears throat> two cores and a landing fate. <laughs> two, <laughs> got any curves? Two cores, man. Yeah, sounds like still <laughs> Are you ready to play? Yeah. I'm going to tap my avatar. We're going to play Color Out of Space. Pass. Hmm. I'm ride a bicycle. Start of the turn, I'm going to draw a spell. <laughs> I'm looking for that princess right now. <laughs> yeah, he's digging. <laughs> uh, let's go lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Pass her back. Nice, draw a spell. 
Uh, tap my avatar. We're going to play uh, Rustic Village. You got any of those little dudes? Yeah. Is there anything I should know about Avatar of Earth? How do you play against that? Just plus one power for each nearby Earth site. I know. And you're going to like earthquake me at the right moment and then make all your stuff. I don't know if that's true. Good. Uh, pass two. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to be playing things that move sites around and break up bodies of water and all that kind of stuff. Right on. See, are these the same bronze sleeves from the pandemic? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the same sleeves I've had for it's a thousand years. You can years. watch the evolution of the bronze sleeves. Opie hate saying, uh, this has been on like 50 different decks. This is the flood something nearby thing? Mm -hmm. Got it. And then I'll pass it over to you. Um. Hmm. So you feel good. By the time he gets done with the stream, he'll have say. walls at his house. <laughs> I think so. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Way to look at that. Um. Let's go here. Stack here for one. Take it. <clears throat> Pass. Whoa! We're bad at this game. Just top heavy. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> Draw it. Scoot it. I love this That's game. That's a nice side as well, yeah? Yeah, it's everything. As long as it's next to the void. I love that card. Color of his face. Look at it. I could look at it for days. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. Let's go here. Hmm. I'll play a gothic here. Actually, let's play gothic here. And then let's do a little pirate man there. Mm -hmm. See what you get into. Did you flood anything? No, I just play in sights. No, this turn doesn't matter. Or are you? Okay. Um. Let's draw. Color out of space is good. Mm -hmm. I know. Draw sight. Okay. Just awful sounds. <laughs> Ooh, I hate these little things, you know? These little guys in the... Are they little mangoes? Little Are mangoes. they little mangoes? Yeah, little mangoes. I never... They're worthless, but they bring me joy. I mean, the taste is just... It's like they crumble in your mouth. <laughs> It's like one of those Neko wafers. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't like anything in my hand right now. I can fill up. I can fill up. Let's tap here. Yeah, Dusty, I will undertow myself soon. Actually, I'll probably do something a little bit different and better, maybe. And play. See, you can't bury the pirate ship is the thing. I see that. <laughs> um, play a unicorn, though. I think it doesn't matter. Let's go here. Let's go up to five resources. Whoa. Uh-oh. He's ramping. Steven, what do you think about that Japanese skateboard show I sent you? It was so poorly edited, it drove me crazy. It was crazy because they would start with somebody's run and then cut into somebody else's run, and you didn't even know. Why? I don't know. And we showed the guy that won. They're like, here's the full run. And it's mm -hmm. like, this guy's going to win then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is very strange. I wish they would have just shown it to me like Ninja Ninja Warrior style. Yeah, where they tell you who wins at the end. Well, they're just they like, win. yeah, here's this guy, and here's the run, and then here's this guy, and here's the run. Mm-hmm. 
That's what I was hoping for, too. Um, I want to mess you up. I want to mess you <laughs> all over. Over and over again. I guess the right call. Let's try it. I'm going to play Atlas Wanderers here. I'm going to do this. Okay. <clears throat> and then I will pass to you. Well, I'll be. <laughs> hey, Mardux. <laughs> Draw a sec. I'm going to kill that little foot soldier. Yeah, I'm sure you do. That foot soldier is um, an annoyance. A great annoyance. Hmm, okay. Nice body of water you got there. Okay. 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 And what is that for you? Once on your turn? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just don't like the foot soldiers. The foot soldiers annoy me greatly. My affectionate term for them is little idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they printed those half half size cards. <laughs> One of the greatest things. So I've got like a. I can't quite get there yet. I think we're just going to have to deal with the fact that this foot soldier is going to be annoying. Blow. Mm hmm. <laughs> just straight up, man. <laughs> oh, man. I want the foot soldier dead. Yep. You know, or... Ah. I wanna you all over. I love the Atlas Wanderers so much. Over and over again. That art is just... I've liked it since our... Remember the early test opening we opened one of those? Mm-hmm. It's crazy we still have those. They're going out with our three and legends. When we opened that, I was like, okay, I'll just have to protect these for like six months. <sighs> it's, it's just in the back of my mind all the time. It's like, do not let anything happen to that box of cards. <laughs>Jesse, uh, don't worry. It'll be on so, stream again. So you, this is here. So I can play here, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. But I can also play here. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like... Huh. Well, yeah, that is, that is kind of... Tactics or positioning. 
That's the question we got to ask ourselves over and over and over. Yep. How long is the rest of this game going to be? Tactics or position. Okay. I've already gotten rid of 5% of your health. <laughs> All right, let's play a site. Let's play a site. Sure be a shame if you made a choice for the long term and then I moved the locations anyway. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we're going to go undertow here. All right. And we're going to pull this into that body of water. Okay. Um, then I'm going to flood here mm -hmm. in the flood plane. I'm going to grapple shot here into your wanderers. All right, we got it. I'm going to swing for five. We will take five. Big play, big play. Big money, big money. And then I will pass to you. All right. Mine, let's draw from here. This is disabled, so if you hit it, it won't hit back. Ooh, really? Mm hmm For now, until my turn, and I'll flood it again if I want to. Is this, this is not water? Mm -mm. <laughs> Asking for Spend a friend. Spin a card on it if you Com want. Completely a friend. Um, just gonna play here. Let's get this here. I will get another little. A Billy? Man. <clears throat> um. Five. Hmm. Yeah, we're just gonna bury that. All right. Two floating. Uh, makes sense, really. I'm gonna swing here for one. Take. It. I'll swing here for one. Take it. And then. I'll pass you. Okay. Big reputation. Let's take a <laughs> uh, take one of these bad boys. The bad boys of. Okay. I see you. Okay. Ryan, this is water. David Foster Wallace. Ryan, also, this is not water, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure my uh, rustic village is rustic village again. Okay, so you're ultimately trying to get to like the um, get your avatar of Earth over here and start hitting my wave shaper, right? That's yeah. ultimately where you're trying to be. That is the goal. Okay. I think I can I think I can run with that a little bit. This is problematic for my body of water. Let's play a tower. Yep. Go to six. And then let's pay two to blink here. Draw a card. And then let's go. You've got a lot of little dudes. A lot of this little deck dudes. is not good at dealing with little dudes. Do we need to run Rain of Arrows suddenly? Is that what this has come down to? <laughs> suddenly. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> okay. Let's go. I'm just going to go Ruler of Thule here and then swing at you for four. For the long ball. For five. How's your. Yeah, everyone gets plus one or is it every other? This is other. Yeah, give it, swing at you for three. You um, what's up? For your awareness, I'm currently at three strength. Oh yeah, we don't want to do that. 
It's not even just one year. It's, it's forever? It's just plus one oh for every god. nearby Earth type. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Don't walk into that bear trap. Mm-hmm. Okay. Van Tan, it's amazing how well the mics pick up my fiddling with cards. <laughs> hmm. Okay, well, maybe we just have to use them in a weird way. Because we want to spend the money. Uh, let's just go here and then swing into that foot soldier. Okay. You got it. Over to yours truly? Yep. Okay. I got five money. Stress eight. Those aren't free cities. Let's play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the thing you took out. Well, they wouldn't be because they they're not observatories. But. Six. Is there even a body of water anymore anywhere? I guess this deck kind of. There's some water here. I guess this is water. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's. That's worth knowing, right there. Cards in hand? Uh, yes. <laughs> Three? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, well, well. Let's go. That's mine, that's yours. I'm gonna go. Uh, bodyguard here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm just gonna lightning bolt your royal of Thule. All right. And then I'll swing for one. Sixteen. And one. Fifteen. And pass two. Okay. Hmm. What's the next step? Uh huh. Uh huh. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. That's kind of weird. Interesting. 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 Okay. Do you want to try for a real site? This is the scenario where. I'm gonna start drawing those dumb stones. There's no stones in them. Yes, you are. That's the only way. I'm not even gonna look, but look, these are my stones. <laughs> Top three cards. All those all the stones right there. Try the turn, let's draw a card. We're, this is just all set up to talk about how bad the stones are. Tank the market price, buy them out, and then there you go. speculate. Get, boom. 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 We're gonna be upgrading from Toyota to Lexus before we know it. <laughs> It does look like a stormtrooper. You said it does look like a stormtrooper? Yeah, I looked at it when I went out there to get it. It does look like a stormtrooper. It does not. It's a stormtrooper, yeah. It's like a stormtrooper. Sorry, sorry enough. Yeah. She was really into the way it looked, and I said that. She's like, ah, immediately turned off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If she wants to see a stormtrooper, there's plenty of shelves near house for that. Yeah. Stormtroopers everywhere. Mm hmm. Every turn. It's just not the right time. It's not. But it could be. Sometimes you gotta... I mean, there's a way to do it. Oh, you could do some stuff here. I just don't know if it's the right time. It doesn't feel like the right time, you know? It feels like I need some beef on the board. Get a little beefy. We have the beef. I could just... Down the royal uh, royal bodyguard there, and then we gotta ask like what what's your what do you got there? Two how, two attack? You got so one normally, so three. It's three. But if I were I don't know here, it would be one two three four five. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Not that I will be doing that. I mean, soon. you could you could get there. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm about to be that's, smacking. That's the thing. Okay, let's try this. Um, let's do... I'm going to make that water and tap that bad boy down. Wah, 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 wah. Blood? It's in this box, right? Yeah, it is. There's a blood card in there. Flooded. And then let's play... Uh... <laughs> Steven needs some beer going to the hot dog bar. You can swing pretty heavy. Let's go Undyne here. Can I see this thing? Mm -hmm. Currently a four, or four strength. Four in the body. Four to the body. Because you made this water? Mm hmm So it's a four. And you can pop up and buy it. That's right. I see. Okay. Every. Card's in hand. Asking for a four. Three. And I can't untap this, right? That's right. It's right here. Okay. I hate that trail mix. Not a fan. Thank you, Bam. Savor the moment. Savor the moment. Oh. Let's do it. Uh, Avatar is going to move and swing here for five. Okay. I was just taking it. Yeah. I got blocked then. All right. Lose a card for them? That's crazy. There's no way. How much life do I left? Ten. <laughs> My favorite question. <laughs> Six. No one. Um, too many footies. I don't like it. It's not getting its big unit. All right. Um, or it's real good against big units. Let's press the advantage. I'll swing. Here for one. Hmm. What would you have? Like a four four attack charge or a grapple shot or something? Those are both things that I could definitely have. And then you grapple into my new undine. I'll take one. <laughs> um let's swing for one. You got it, boss. <laughs> Oh man. Alright, now you're at eight. Mm -hmm. mm. I'll pass. <laughs> cool. <laughs> mm. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Does this go away? Or it goes away until you do it again. Yeah, he but, will be able to stand up next turn yeah, if you want. We do want. Okay. Understand that. That's all very understood. Okay, what are we going to do? We're going to draw a sight or we're going to draw a card? Let's draw a sight. He's going fishing. Okay. I take that. I dig that very much. I would give you this. The wave shaper looks cool. Wave shaper does look great. Ryan Kane, my oldest son is only four, so I have a little ways to go, but they grow up so fast. It's one of the, those cliches you don't know how true it is until you're there. I, I've heard the uh, the days are long, the years are short. Mm -hmm. Someone said that earlier. Mm -hmm. 
you just get so head down to things and with kids I feel like you get so busy and it's constant like a low hum of focus that has to go on it mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they're like oh my nephew is 16 I've seen my brother go through that it's just like what happened mm-hmm. it's really weird seeing him just like get in a car and drive off I thought I was so old at 16. <laughs> I was but a wee child. Okay, this is this is making some sense. Yeah, Avatar is like beefy. <laughs> it's the beefy you Avatar. Ordin- you're not supposed to have all these ordinary sides. That's not normal. What does that mean? You're playing abnormally. What, what am I supposed really, to it's have? Messing, you, I'm, I'm built to take on the, the highest level decks, and you're playing these weenie, these what, weenie what, decks. <laughs> what do my sides have to do with it? Uh, I don't know. Are there cards that interact with that? Never. Not a single one. Not a single one. I don't understand. <laughs> Dude, so, look at the book on that. The, this is in focus right here, which is where we're at. You can see it. Mm-hmm. And it's blurry right here. Mm-hmm. Remarkable. The crazy thing is how not blurry it is back by the lamp. I thought it would be way more blown out. Oh, back there? Yeah. Man, I was on a call with Larry the other day. Mm-hmm. And you know the art that's hanging in his background? Yeah. Like in my mind, it was like poster sized. And we're talking, and then he just does this and touches them. And they're like this big. Oh, Because wow. the wall is just like right there. It, it was trippy. I thought the room was gigantic, mm-hmm. and then it was tiny. Yeah, someone thought the room here was tiny. And they came <clears throat> like our old studio? Like, yeah. It was, it's actually fairly big. Oh, man, that's a bummer. Oh, we're so close to greatness. No! Well, maybe. Oh, I know what card you're talking about now. Are David, we gonna... David tipped me off in the chat. <laughs> Would Zach refuse to play non-ordinary sites? Because he knows Steven's holding it like in bait? Never! <laughs> Oh, so non ordinary. Wow. So that's hilarious. You could. This is not ordinary. I know. I know. Just one site with the two blanks I next know, to it, and it's going. It, the thing is, is definitely is going there. But I don't. But I have to turn off my own floodplain in a stroke of genius card design. <laughs> well, I messed you up with my. <laughs> the Atlantean fate ceases to allow the floodplain to work. He flooded the floodplain. What kind of a big brain designer was on that one, Zach? What me? <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. But I still think it's the right decision. Mm. Because it literally... I see. It, so, like, all of these being ordinary specifically are a problem. Like, yes. Yes. Like the fact that you've played only ordinary sizes except for this little wiener. Out on the West Coast, uh-huh. yeah. And this unique one that I put all the way in the back. Uh-huh. I mean, it's going to flood, and that'll rob you of a, a influence you don't need, which is cool. Um, I don't know. I might have that three-threshold air stuff waiting in the wings that I can't play anymore. But I think this is it. So we go there, we drop, we roll up, and then suddenly it's like, oh, no, and you're at 15, and then you go there, and then you swing at me for like a bajillion. And then... Maybe there's an answer after that. That's the maybe answer section of the game. As the Beatles have always said, there will be an answer. (laughs) Letter B. (laughs) Letter B. That was the old Sesame Street song. Mm -hmm. We got sued for that. Okay, so I I think, yeah, because then we've got Death Store. We got sued for that. We got Death Store after that. I think so. I watched a Sesame Street documentary on an airplane one time. I can't imagine suing Sesame Street. We're going to play a site. There will be an answer. You think you'd ever play something here? No. Specifically, because, well, it depends. If this is already blank, then sure. Mm -hmm. But if Atlanta fades here, I'm not playing into that. This is where I don't know if it's better to play my site here or here. Are you going to try to take out the bodyguard? Oh, it's going. Yeah, it's going. Oh, it's not ordinary. Well, the bodyguard's gone. Okay. No doubt. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. doubt. I just don't know if there's a benefit to having something there. I don't think so. So I'm going to mirror realm here, mirror undertow. I'm going to pull this body of water in here. 
Okay. okay. And then we're going to Atlantean here and submerge everything here, which is going to be everything except, you know. Uh, before we did that, we floodplained this just kind of to give you a temporal. Kind I remember of, that. I see, I got you. I got you yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah, you remember that. Yeah. It's I, an I, important phase because I this think, blanks itself. I think there was a glitch <laughs> in the stream. People didn't see that. That puts okay. me at six in my body of water. And then I'll stand up and swing at you for six. And what does this do to all these things? It makes all non-ordinary sites only provide water threshold and blank. This one. And this one. And this one. But this is ordinary. It's not ordinary. Oh, this is your, this is your water site. Yeah. But I've... This is coming in for how many? Six. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll take six. Yeah. Jesse's got a hot tip here. What's that? Yeah, that's right. Okay. There, that, that wouldn't change anything, faux show. I don't like the fact that I'm going to be at five after this, but that's the way it goes. Because you're swinging for what? One, two, or one less now because you're swinging for four. Yeah. So that's good. Now, if you play a site here or here, you go back to five. If it's an earth site? It's a nearby? Yeah. Ugh! Well, then do this. But he's got a tap to play a site. Oh, that's right. So that makes it okay. Mine. Yeah. And then this is no longer flooded. Let's start off from here. I wanna. I wanna. You wanna. Hmm. Doing a lot of counting over there. Just looking to make it interesting. It's funny, at this stage of the game, those low cost cards are not good. If it landed and hit those ordinaries and I could just turn all your earth off like a little like a little annoying spigot. That'd be cool. If my next draw is whirling blades. Alright, we want to kill you. We we There's a number of things you could play here that'd be very bad for me. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Such ass. <laughs> mm, you love to see it. Man, that's funny. <laughs> okay, I think this is what I have to do. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at four here. I see. But I want to do that. So if I strike here, do that. I feel like this is the kind of game I'm going to be running for my life at Death's Door. I agree. <laughs> but that's all I've ever done in this game. Mm -hmm. I'm just being scared. Oh, it's a tough decision, but I think it's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to swing here for three. Take it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to lightning bolt here. Okay. Nice uh, lightning bolt, bro. Then I'm going to grapple shot into it. Okay. You did it. I'm going to pass to you. Man, I cannot hate that. That's a good good trade for you. Yeah. But I needed to get that gone. Yeah, that's quite good. All right, so now it's just Top Deck City. Hope and a prayer. Top Deck City. It's the return of the bookshop. Okay. I see that. All see that. Hmm. What is the uh, uh, 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to read the Adept Illusionist real quick for reasons that are unrelated to what's in my hand and not the proxy. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thank you. Pleasure to be here. I think it's a spellcaster, and then you can tap to search your hand, cemetery, or spell. <laughs> 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 Genius, man. Yeah. Genius. Man, nothing like drawing a two cost when you got six to spend. Well, I just had to, you know, I wanted to look at it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I could spend, you definitely didn't draw it. Maybe I could spend some money. So you'd still be at three there. Okie dokie. This tank we have four right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then is this is me and that's you, and then, you know, proud we are. Okay, let's do a... I really wanted to draw one specific thing there. I'm going to Riptide, mm -hmm. target this water site, it pulls in an above ground unit it's adjacent to, and I draw a card. Let's cycle them out. Oh, hey, look. Hmm. <laughs> Chef's kiss. Jesse? One you point. You watching that? One point for the cut the cores. <laughs> <laughs> cut them. You watching that, man? Is it my turn yet? No. <laughs> I'm going to play that Adept Illusion, so I just got to figure out where. It's like my favorite thing to do to Tim. I've done that since we were kids. Just his entire turn. My turn yet? I'm going to put this here just to remind myself yeah, like how it. beautiful it is and how much yeah. I wish it was not the card we're that I just We're here to drew. observe great art. <laughs> Okay, so next step is we need to, you know, we need to let's apply a little pressure, as they say in the business. Please do. And then we put one nearby. Well, that, that's actually, you know, that's not, that's not bad. Let's put them, uh, let's put them there, and then we can summon there, but then I'm just like set up for your dumb thing, and I really want a blocker, and I really want a blocker here. I don't want a blocker that's clearable, like super clearable. And this one just seems like, I don't know. But then my illusionist is not as good as it should be. Huh. But if I don't give you a target here, you can't grapple anything. How many of you played one of those? One. <laughs> it is also ordinary. I know. So we had know. some common sense. I could go fetch another one, you know? This is the problem. Mm -hmm. This is where like I will make a tactical error. Because I feel like I feel like if I go here. Because there's no way to get something here unless I go here. That feels it feels right and it feels so wrong because you're just making you're wasting an absolutely wasting a unit here. You swing into there. Do I even want? I do want to block that. I really do want to block that. Okay, we'll just do it. Um, let's play Illusionist here. Oh. Summon one nearby, and we're playing an Illusionist there. You can tap at the turn you play it. Can you do that? You can't do that. I don't think you can. Oh, dang it. They're way worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not you. Oh, no. That's not you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my theory. Is there anything that punishes this? Yeah, I mean, technically, yes. But, like, it also is kind of a lightning bolt. Yeah, like, I I don't know what I would have at this moment that would punish it. Okay. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just put it there. I also don't have fire. I'll put it there. Okay. Mine? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. That's a thing. No. Um, you didn't want to do anything with your waste shaper, by the way. Oh yes, I did. I'll draw a spell. There's really no reason to flood anything right now. Sight. Yeah. yeah, sight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I could draw a spell, this would be a totally different avatar. <clears throat> I wanna. <laughs> uh, I'll swing here for four. It's four now, suddenly? Oh, one, two, three, four. It counts itself because it won. Yeah, where did we... Did I do that wrong last time? You were, you were three here. Well, yeah, I that's did, right. I swung here for three, which is because there's only... 
Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. And yes, then yes, I came back I see. here. So yeah. you got four there, yeah. Yeah. That was the only way to do it because I need a lightning bolt to kill here. Mm -hmm. So I need to get off the site to hit you with lightning bolt and then come back. All right. One more turn to party. Oh. Does it count itself for the fourth one? It's a one. Plus one, two, three. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, okay. uh, well, <laughs> Old salt delusions. That's right, Jesse. This is a choice. So if I do that, go move. And then that's the whole thing. All right, let's go for it. Uh, I'm going to play. <laughs> He's reading the card for the first time. I'm going to play a Chaos Twister. <laughs> oh, man. What is that? Oh, come on, <laughs> man. <laughs> My illusionist? What do you say? Are you saying playing Sorcery Con rules? I have I, a better one. Hold on. I don't want to play anything that doesn't submerge. I think the whole deck is going to submerge. Start them off. Submerge. I'm going to submerge the world. I believe this is tall enough, don't you think? Yeah, for sure. You can just eye it. A bulk box height? You're going to... Can we get that AC back on? <laughs> All right, hold on. Well, you can't put a, you can't put a bumper. Just, it's not I'm cool. just making sure I'm high enough, you or, know? Or bowling, I guess. All right, you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you you just moved down. I, now you're no, like what? 18 <laughs> inches, maybe. 12? Is that high enough? 11? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, Aww. and so it just dies. Yeah, yeah, good job. There you go. Where's my thing that died? There it is. Sorry. Okay. What happens if it lands on your avatar? It does damage mm -hmm. to your avatar? Yeah. You were really close. Why did you get that close? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Okay, over to you. Everyone just gets excited with the chaos Buster. Well, I got <clears> a million <throat> mana. If that's. Don't you mean mana? Just amazingly <laughs> unuseful. <laughs> There's another stone. No. Got a pair of stones now. <laughs> it's just not. It's just again not good. Um. I well. Wanna. <laughs> I want. I see. I see the problem. Uh, I'm gonna rip tide that for two, to draw a card. I send it back to. Funky I send town, it back. You say. So the side salad's not on the side. I send it back. <clears throat> Okay. Fine. I mean, it's going to be second verse same as the first here. I'm not a death door yet. That's good. Yeah. That's better than if normal. If I hit you with my twister, you would be better than average. I would say. How many? Uh, how many have I? Said? I've got two. I've got one, two, three, four. You did the stupid thing. It just you, you made it all weird. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana, and I paid. T I played two of that mana. Five remain. Five mana remains. Uh, let's just bury a and you undying under here. Spook you. Bye. Just a little ghost in the water. Mine. Yep. Get that something spear out. No wait, I gotta do something with this. Uh, let's, uh, draw another thing. Oh, great. A spring river. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Wave Shaper. That is just exactly what you needed to do. <laughs> Appreciate that. <clears throat> I won. Jesse said the core is coming in handy, by the way. But, Jesse, I would have just played a site. I guess it drew me a site. The core drew me a site. A spring river. And with your spring river, you can look at your next spell. <laughs> <laughs> and that one's going to be one that I want. Clearly. You can't draw it, but you can look at it. All right. Where can you get to? Me? Yeah. Can you get Can you get somewhere? I don't know. I keep not playing things for you to grapple shot into because I'm a freaking genius. <laughs> That's one way to get around it. Uh, He's not moving his back row. I'm just going to play a Pudge Butcher here. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll pass to you. We see it. We accept it. Just they are. Pudging around. Australian friends are coming in. Good What's morning. up, Guppy? We stayed live long enough for you guys to show up. <laughs> That's right. Appreciate you showing up. Let's try this turn and let's draw a card. It's like back in the 90s if you're meeting someone at the pub. 
You only know if they're going to show up or not once you get there. <laughs> Cell phones aren't a thing. That's how I felt. But Australia showed up big. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry. On my turn, I'm going to tap to draw. Yeah. You're going to tap to draw? Okay. I guess okay. I Easy, easy, easy. <clears throat> We've got a lot of great ideas here. I mean, the, the ideas are immense. I think he's just going to win this, Zach. Steven? Yeah. The ideas are immense. That's my theory. Of, coming out of my body right now. I will not see. See. <laughs> I could be really greedy here. Oh no. Oh no. That's when I'm at you my worst. It. You see it. That's when I'm at my worst. Is when I'm so greedy for no reason. I knew he undines at five. That's good news for What's me. What's Zach's health? Is it nine? Oh, nothing. Easy. Yeah. And then I've got to decide, is Pudge is Pudge worth the trouble? Just move. Look who's in trouble. God, but I could I really could be so much greedier than that. It's just unbelievable. And you get to if you shoot a thing here, you get to choose. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I have a feeling I know what you might choose. Probably your avatar. But you can just boogie your avatar out of there. I could boogie it, but there's no reason to do that. I mean, I could move it. The only problem with that, the new projectile rules, yeah, you can shoot down down the shoot. You got no cards in hand? You have to top deck a grapple? OK. One card, one looking. One actual card. OK, I think we do just have to boogie then. Oh, no. Grapple shot sure would be a shame, though. Be like, move over one. Or... OK, I mean, what do I have, like a bajillion mana I can't spend? Thanks, Jesse. <clears throat> that stone magic. <laughs> <laughs> mana for and days. I, yeah, there's, I just got to move from the pudge. Right, yeah. Okay, we're in the blades. Up and over for five. Ooh. And then I'll swing for five. DD, baby. And then we'll move here. And the what the deck was built to do is, is accomplished. So, experiment over. Jesse, change your deck. Wearing the blades is the right answer. All right, over to me. It unsubmerged, it moved across, and it attacked. It's, it's how we drew it up on the board. As Zach would say. I don't like this. I don't like that I did it like this. Did what like this? I don't like being in the grapple. I'd prefer to stay away from death's door, right? That seems good. But oh, no, I Uh, you better run, bun. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's true. How the tides have turned. David, I think it's because then the undine would be less powerful by one. Yeah. You could do it after the undine attacks. Mm. I could tap here to tap down the pudge rather than move. I'm also thinking like I'm shutting off a lane of place that you could be to not lose the game. So there's also like there's also those kinds of things. Like I've got blinks and stuff in the deck, so like I might blink wave shape and attack if Zach tries to run places. So it's kind of offensive at the same time. In some ways it's genius. I don't know that it's genius. I in fact I don't even know I honestly don't know if it's correct whatsoever. See the hot hand Zach sitting on? Just fire. Just straight fire. My hand? Yeah. It does things. Mm hmm It might be worth tapping Pudge so that I'm just not in grapple shotty shotting range. That's true. 
accurate. But then you're playing for like a tie. How'd you, how'd you, how would you tap? It? I would just wave shaper here and tap the pudge and flood that. Mm. But then I could, flood. I could just grapple shot you. No, he would be tapped. He can still grapple shot. Oh, he could grapple shot. That's true. Pudge can still grapple shot. Yeah. So that's fair. Which, I, but if I had grapple shot, I would just grapple shot <laughs> here. Yeah, there's no way to get out of the range, basically. I at least make Undyne harder to deal with. So if you have something weird, like what is it at five right now? It would be at four. So like Chaos Twister would still definitely do the job. Like Lightning Bolt. This is what strength here? Five. Four? Four? Four now. Four. One, two. Four. Wait, one, two, three. Has it always four. been four? Five. It's five. Five, the body of water, not the surrounding water sites, right? I'm not the avatar of water. Earth water. Avatar of mud. <laughs> Van, uh, Zach's on death's door, Steven's at... I'm at one. One. Which is a big difference. Yeah. But Zach also doesn't know the quality of cards in my hand is, mis <laughs> is miserable right now. I so have a sense. I'm on top deck city. Yeah, there's just a lot of things you could draw to just kill me. Well, and so here's the... I'll, I'll explain the greedy play to you once I see what you do. Well, I think I have to get you to that store here. Mm -hmm. Strictly. Yeah, I think so. So I think... Like a weird earthquake or something? No. I mean, I can just swing here. The mm -hmm. problem is I have to protect from here, but then if you have things like Whirling Blades or Grapple Shot, I'm just dead. I also can just I can tap down at least one blocker with Wave Shaper ability. So you've got to factor that into the math okay. head, the math zone. Uh, Jesse, so it would have been playing the tower, accepting Death's Door, and playing a pirate ship. So I'd be at nine. Except Death Story here, play Pirate Ship like here, and then just be like, can you escape? That's why the game is so, like, it's like so good. It's just so good. Because I don't know what the right play was there. It's a card game, so I guess um, it depends on the cards in your hand. Not something. Oh, it hurts. It's good. I would say I've failed twice now in these little seeds. Making you hurt as a card gamer is no. probably like my greatest source of success. Maybe I have it out. Flood of sight near your body of water. Near be any of the nine spaces. Mm -hmm. All right, less feasible now. I've lost. Yes. Um, and it was all because of that core. So, what I have is a Rift Valley. Ugh, I don't even want to think about that. So That's too much to think about. If I wasn't on Death's Door, I could slide these over and get you a Pudge. Mm -hmm. If this wasn't, I can technically split these apart. Mm hmm. And Pudge can grab this, which is the line I'm looking at. Is there any other way to kill me? What do you think? Do you have anything in your hand that like kills me out of hand? No, no. Um, Just cores in there. <laughs> so I think I think this is the line. So I'm gonna play here. We're gonna slide this to play Rift Valley here. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna tap Pudge to grab this. 
and hit you for five, and you're no longer a five. Not that, I'm grabbing this. Oh, you're doing that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so then that's gone. Five. Yeah, yeah. And then... I mean, that, that takes the big threat off the board, right? As insurance... No, David, I had tons of mana for that Undyne. I think. I think I would have just played the site. I drew the Spring River instead. I guess I have to play around Lightning Bolt. Oh, Amazon Warriors here. Over here. See, this is fine. You didn't lose at all. Why do you think you lost? Well, I'm not winning. You just well, have to but, have an answer. Well, yeah. I just got to top deck the world. I thought you were holding the Dryads for some reason, Zach. Oh. <laughs> dryads, like, just looking. <laughs> I should have known you wouldn't have played that card. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. I should have known. First one in, last or first one out. Okay, so there's like you have two more turns. It's crazy. Depends on what this is. <laughs> no, I'm afraid Jesse was right about that one. That's a bummer. <laughs> I don't, I can't get a read on it. Yeah, I don't know. Did he change something he wished he hadn't changed? No, it? man, I got I got luck I got that clutch uh Mega Amoeba. I Coming in at a, a, a one power. Hmm. Gonna have to have to You were the one saying you wanted the Mega Amoeba and then he was saying it wasn't worth it. He he and I have often discussed how it's bad, but it maybe isn't bad. Hmm. But right now it's very bad, I would say, in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so you got some. You got a. You're a Lebowski. I'm a Lebowski kind of situation going on here. It's been a good. So we tap down the pudge. Mm -hmm. Amazon's at five. We threaten to tap down Amazon. You have one card in hand. One little old card. And what's uh, what's Earth swinging for? Earth can't swing. Right. Presently. Well, at a unit. Earth can't swing at a unit. Mm, mm -hmm. I've got to keep Pudge tapped down because I don't want to move my Wave Shaper and I don't want to be a Death Store. I've got seven mana easy, I think. I haven't counted, but I, it's like I, I got them, right? One, two, three, four. If you wouldn't have screwed up the freaking rows so we could play a nice orderly <laughs> game of sorcery, I hate Earth so much. I think I think that's like 10% of Earth Avatar of Earth wins is they're miscounted right. because you just shift the board. Seven. Which so makes seven sense. I'm just thematic. I'm not really looking to trade this for that. Okay, I think I know, I think I know what I must do. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, flood, you flood this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, switch that over, and then I have to decide what kind of a person I am. If you have the grapple shot, it's so bad. Can you live your whole life scared of Grapple Shot? You've got three more in the deck. You've got one in hand. I've got three more and got three more common sense in the deck, too. You've got a Chaos Twister. I mean... Could get crazy in here. The possibilities are truly endless. Lightning and I'm going to draw like some dumb... I'm going to draw that Philosopher's Stone. Mm. Right when you need it. Next turn, man. How bad... It's bad if you have it. It's so bad. Ah, it's so Is bad. Is there a play Zach. you can make that it's less bad if I have Kind it? of. Yes. Kind of. Kind of. But you, you're beefed up too. You're beefed to the max. Dude. Zach's beefy boys are back. <laughs> and gals. Okay, okay. Let's think about it. I, uh... At one of our ultrasound scans, uh, we found out that our baby was in the 90th percentile on size, mm -hmm. and I referred to the baby as beefy, and the beefy baby, and Serena did not like that. <laughs> Zach's beefy babies? Yeah, she's like, I have to deliver this. She's like, I was hoping for 20th percentile. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's, we, we have the Mega Amoeba that's going to come in at 1.0. We have the pirate ship, and here's here's okay. Here's the ideas. Uh, if you do pirate ship here and here, Mega Amoeba can block for Amazon Warrior and protect pirate ship if you swing into it. 
then you play something. If you have like Chaos Fist or whatever, it's not going to matter the placement of anything. So let's just remove that. If you have Grapple Shot here, and you Grapple Shot warriors in a pirate ship killing them, and then literally just like swing into my sight, putting me to death's door, Mega Mewa blocks, that's a two. That's a two for, and then you've got I mean, two beefs. Probably the worst thing I could do is actually grapple shot this here, because mm -hmm. then you you have to tap it, so you're stuck on this location. Because mm -hmm. you can't move one spot and then let me just get you. Yeah, and I could just move instead of tapping the pudge down. Yeah. But then I can't threaten here. Yeah. That's probably. I think. Because we can always threaten to tap this stuff down and swing in with pirate ship. I mean, grapple shot so bad. Even here, it's like grapple shot there, swing. You have to block, swing. You're at death's door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's. No, I don't know. You just that, pray to God I don't have grapple shot. I don't know that there's an out around it. I mean, so you could do like this, right? It's effectively the same thing, except I get to kill Amazon warriors on the block. Right? I mean, that's true this direction too, right? Because you just block with the pirate ship. Well, but here, Amazon Warriors grapple shot and kills oh, yeah, me, yeah, yeah. and then kills Mega. This at least soaks the grapple shot, and then if I do have to block pirate ship into Warriors, I take Warriors off the board. Mm -hmm. And this is as threatening as anything else, because the only thing that matters is one damage. That's true. Um, I don't think there's a world where like pirate ship over here matters. So let's do that. Let's stick there. Dusan asking, will you be getting Sorcery Restock? Uh, Maybe. That's, that's not clear on beta. If, it, sure. if it's going to happen, it'll be around Arthurian Legends time, so long time from now. Lots of one power, yeah. Am I good to roll? Go what would that have been in the deck list if it wasn't that, Jesse? What would that have been? What did I cut? I mean, it would have been maybe like a, what, a Sea Serpent? Would that have mattered? I, David, I can't trade with Amazons, unfortunately, because I got summoning sickness. Wait, wait, wait. And I've got no cards in hand. You got two? You just drew one? Yeah. Ugh. Oh. Can't you see? He really hit the. He really hit the Italian beef sandwich here at the end, didn't he? <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Where's all your stuff at five? So I swing. You block with a ship and we trade. I swing, block with a maybe Megan. We don't trade. And that's fine. So I think. I don't know, dog. I'm just going to swing uh, here. Mm hmm. Okay, so we can trade warriors for pirate ship. We still have I'm, a threat to kill I'm, you. I'm a, I'm attacking this guy. Okay, specifically. And if I don't block that, I don't have a credible in the game threat, which means I have to block this with a pirate ship because you, you have to have a card in hand that removes Mega Amiibo or you lose the game next turn because I can tap down any blockers you put here. And that's the only place they can exist. So, but it's just so fragile. It's just nothing. It's a one. You know, they have a lightning bolt to follow this up. I, my my game is done. The Jesse says that it was plague of frogs that you got. Oh right. So I would have had seven bodies doing nothing. Great. So good trade. Good trade for that one. I. Right? Do you agree with that reasoning? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, unfortunate. <laughs> uh, I'm going to play these guys here. Oh, man. Mm. You're about to lose. I'll uh, pass to you. <laughs> hey, look. I'll play this Amethyst Core, mm -hmm. and then I'll tap that, flood that 
tap everything, and then I'll swing it with Mega Mew. You got me. Hey, yeah. You want to see what I was rocking over here? Oh my gosh, Jesse from the winning agenda. <laughs> Taking it to the teeth with with cores of absolute worthlessness. Yeah. Next card was good. But I, I, I told you that. I told you I was going to lose. I told you. Yeah. Oh, these are good late game spookers. There was a turn. The turn I played this, I think I shouldn't have done that. In retrospect. I did it so I could play two things. But I think I should have swollen my avatar instead. Doesn't this water deck feel better though? That whirling that up whirling blades over feels very good. That was that that and then the play I had to spend two cards to remove were the the MVP plays of the game. Yeah. I'm with it. Okay. Maybe I don't even try to play on curve. When you're not drawing cards, you may as well play only fours and fives, right? And with all these cores. You may as well play two of them in the same <laughs> turn. That was a great game, man. Yeah, it was great. That was a good one. I was really happy to have won that. You uh, you played well. I felt pretty good for a minute, and then I felt very bad. <laughs> All of a sudden, the, the turn I said I was going to lose, I was like, there's so many ways this is going to go wrong. I felt trapped. I feel so good I'm going to sell this Highland Princess foil Do alpha. It. Who wants it? Send me a message on Discord. <laughs> Not marketing. Steven's personal social cells. <laughs> it was it was tough because I had I had whirling blades a couple of times, like for a couple of turns, and I just didn't have bodies, and so it was completely dead. Which is the downside of like blink, riptide. I mean, you can use them just to cycle cards, but like grapple shot and whirling blades are both worthless if you're just clearing stuff off my board. But the point is, you shouldn't be able to do that if it's all submerged and protected. Yeah, and it's nice. Like even a grapple shot, you can move up and then transport something in. Yep. Yep. This is where I asked even did one with blue. Signed, sealed, delivered. Anyway, we're working on something. We're working on something. We're workshopping it a little bit. Turns out you really don't need that much water to play water. <laughs> Zach. <laughs> it's weird. You put all the non-water cards in, and it was. It was better. It was the sites. I didn't need that many water sites because you basically made a little double river. Yeah, even breaking up your river. I the lack of Rift Valley too. Luckily, I had it when I had it, but I really would like to. If I had switched this or an earthquake, and then I could have like split it. That that's the real. You didn't see a single earthquake, did you? Mm -mm. Man, but it happens. Yeah. Earthquake's gonna eat. There's only two in the deck. So you only see so many cards. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here. It's an old fashioned stream when it's like 8 o'clock at night. Yeah, it's 5 30. Yikes. And uh, remember, if you don't have a source subscription yet, you should, because we're about to be out. You, should, you really, if you're thinking, you're watching right now and you're thinking, man, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth signing up for free for something that has no commitment. <laughs> I would suggest you do it. You can always go the other direction. <laughs> it can't get in once we're out. <laughs> Thanks, y'all, for being here. We appreciate it. And uh, cheers to all the parents out there for raising all of us. We do appreciate that, and we're about to uh, do that ourselves. That's right. So good luck to us. A whole new journey. Come to the Discord, say hi, stop by, hang out, and we'll see you there.